Chapter 226, Don't Let Your Blood Dirty My Uniform Uehara greeted them warmly. However, no one in Kirigakur dared to respond to his greeting, nor did they dare to relax. Everyone looked nervously at their figures. There were only four people in Akatsuki's organization. However, these four people acted nothing in the face of the increasing number of Kiri ninjas around them. They were not at a disadvantage in terms of momentum. The Kiri ninjas had the advantage in numbers, but they didn't dare to move in the face of this group of Akatsuki members. This was because they had heard that the other big country, Sunagakur, had been attacked by them and the entire village had turned into ruins. Every Kiri ninja couldn't help but start to restrain their breathing. Looking at the four figures in the black robes, they didn't even dare to breathe loudly. As the higher UPS of Kirigakur, Ao was the first to arrive at the scene. His eyes swept over Akatsuki's four members, and his face became more and more ugly. He recalled the information he got from Kanaha about Akatsuki. Iwagakur S class trader Diadera. Ao looked at the golden haired ninja who was the most arrogant among the four Akatsuki members, and his expression became more and more serious. Diadera participated in Akatsuki's attack on Sunagakur and personally captured 5th Kazakagegara. This person was not easy to deal with. Ao looked away from Diadera and slowly turned to look at the red haired teenager, Sunagakur S class trader, participated in Akatsuki's attack on Sunagakur and once destroy a country by himself. This guy was even harder to deal with. As Ao, who had participated in the Great War in the ninja world before, he was very clear about how many casualties a puppet master of Sasari's level could cause on the battlefield. Ao's gaze shifted from Sasari to Zabuza, and his expression turned even uglier, Zabuza, an S-class traitor of Kirigakur. The murderer who killed 4th Mizukage-sama, and the hero who ended the Blood Mist era. To be honest, Kirigakur had a good impression of Zabuza. Although Zabuza killed 4th Mizukage Yagura, it also ended Kirigakur's Bloody Mist era, and thus opened a new chapter for Kirigakur. In the end, Zabuza actually defected. Not only that, but the three ninjas of the seven ninja swordsmen that Kirigakur only had at that time all defected. Apart from Terumi, he could not find any powerful combat strength in the village. Just. It was quite surprising. Ao's gaze finally stopped on the last member of Akatsuki. He saw that the member had a hat that cover his face. This was one of the publicly recognized strongest members of Akatsuki. Anyone who wore a hat was undoubtedly the strongest. Be a cook and open. Ao's eyes suddenly changed. He opened his eyes and stared at the figure, let me see who you are. This is. Kill him. A cold voice appeared in the ears of everyone. The ninja wearing hat slowly stretched out his finger and pointed at Ao who had opened Byakugan. It was Uehara. He almost forgot that there was a hidden Byakugan ninja inside Kirigakur. If Ao could see through his concealment, wouldn't his concealment be meaningless? Uehara simply stretched out his hand and commanded the ancient dragon to launch an attack. Roar! In the next moment, the ancient dragon in the sky opened its mouth and spat out a huge fireball at Ao's area. It descended from the sky and landed directly in a group of Kiri ninjas. One by one, the Kiri ninjas panicked and wanted to avoid the huge fireball. As the fireball in the sky gradually grew larger in their field of vision, a few Jonin ninjas roared madly to make their subordinates react, everyone, immediately release water colliding wave ninjutsu above your heads. Sudden, Sui's hoha, water release, water colliding wave. Every Kiri ninja who had time to react immediately closed their palms and opened their mouths to spew out a huge stream of water into the air. Each stream of water quickly rose into the air and formed a huge waterfall in the sky. At this moment, they no longer cared about how much damage the waterfall above them would cause. They only cared about being able to block the huge fireball falling from the sky. Obviously, at this moment, the ninjutsu released by hundreds of Kiri ninjas was successful. The huge waterfall formed a barrier and blocked the fireball coming from the sky. The fireball spewed out by the ancient dragon in the air was surrounded by endless water. The fireball gradually evaporated the water and turned into steam in the air. All the Kiri ninjas finally breathed a sigh of relief. They blocked the attack of the monster that Akatsuki had organized. If that fireball were to land, the number of people who could survive would definitely be counted on one hand, and this area would definitely be reduced to ashes. Uehara watched this scene, and a meaningful smile appeared on his face under his hat. The corners of his mouth curled up slightly, hat, blocked it. Ha 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 ha. Diadera looked at the group of Kiri ninja who gradually relaxed and could not help but let out a burst of wild laughter, what a bunch of naive fellows. 
you actually think that our summoned beast can only spit out one fireball. Don't be too harsh. Uehara smiled and continued, after all, this is a remote and backward village. It is inevitable that their information will lag behind. They are just some frogs locked at the bottom of the well. Humph. Zabuza could not help but snort coldly. This was the embarrassing part of Akatsuki's organization. Every time they laughed at a village, there would be a companion next to them who was a ninja from this village. However, Zabuza did not say anything else. Because according to his understanding of Akatsuki, their organization was very cautious. The four members of the two teams were enough to pose a strong threat to a big country's ninja village. This was not something that Kirigakur could block. Roar. The ancient dragon in the air suddenly descended rapidly towards the ground. It began to glide along Kirigakur and fiery fireballs constantly spewed out from its mouth. This made all the Kiri ninjas feel despair. Those huge fireballs landed on Kirigakur, and in the blink of an eye, this village, which was famous for its water ninjutsu, turned into a sea of fire. The Kiri ninjas panicked and dodged, or released those simple water ninjutsu to resist, but the ninjutsu they released was completely useless, and simply could not block the fireballs falling from the sky. Sudden, Suairi Yudan no Jutsu, Water Release, Water Dragon Bullet Technique. A clear female voice shouted. A water dragon suddenly rose up from somewhere in Kirigakur and bit towards the ancient dragon in the air, causing the ancient dragon to subconsciously dodge and give up on attacking. That was the water ninjutsu of 5th Mizu Cage, Terumi. Even if the vitality of the ancient dragon was strong, it could not ignore the impact of the water dragon jutsu. Especially that woman, Terumi, a double bloodline limit ninja. Each of them could pose a certain threat to the ancient dragon. Acid was much stronger than those physical attacks. This was Uehara's most beloved mount. In a while, he would have to take Sanbai away. How could he let it get hurt? Uehara raised his eyebrows and looked at the Kiri ninjas and Ao who were fleeing everywhere. He whispered, Tisk, it's really troublesome. If you reveal my secret, it will be very troublesome. Is it Ao? Zabuza grinned and couldn't help but laugh, can a be a cook and make you so scared? Yes. Uehara did not deny it, but the next moment, his words made Zabuza's face change, if he leaks my identity, I can only destroy the entire Kirigakur and kill all of Kirigakur's ninjas so that they won't leak my secret. Zabuza-san, will you be willing to help me kill Ao and keep this secret? Uehara knew Zabuza very well. This guy had actually been unwilling to submit to others. Out of the four seven ninja swordsmen in Akatsuki's organization, only Zabuza refused to join Uehara's side. It was because he still had ambitions that did not match his strength. However, the strength of Akatsuki's organization was too strong now, which made Zabuza put away his thoughts of betrayal. If Akatsuki's organization was going to die, Uehara did not doubt that Zabuza would immediately betray Akatsuki's organization and return to Kirigakur to be Kirigakur's hero. I will kill him. Diodera waved his hand and threw down his giant clay bird. He was about to step on the giant bird to chase after Ao, lest that guy leaks any news. Zabuza gritted his teeth and said in a low voice, I'll go too. If Kirigakur was destroyed, how could his ambition to control Kirigakur, which he had been suppressing in his heart, be realized? Uehara watched as Zabuza pulled out the broadsword on his back. He chuckled and said, it's good if Zabuza-san has the heart. However, that guy can't escape. Uehara suddenly closed his palm and said in a low voice, in this village that is suitable for water combat, of course, we have to let the water summoned beast to come. Kukiyos. A tall figure appeared in the middle of the summoning seal beside Uehara. It was Uehara's other summoned beast Deep Sea Titan. As you wish. A huge anchor hook suddenly shot out, smashing towards Ao as if it had no limit. This attack caught Ao off guard, making it impossible for him to dodge. He only watched in surprise as his body was hooked by an anchor. The next second, Ao's body was quickly dragged back. Ao's body seemed to be out of control. There was no way he could take any measures. Even if he wanted to release a body substitution technique, it was too late. Under the pull of that huge force, his body was instantly seriously injured. This captain of Kirigakur's investigation team was hooked back by the anchor just like that. By the time Ao reacted, he had already landed at the feet of the deep sea titan. His chest and abdomen were stained with blood that had been seriously injured by the anchor. Uehara slowly squatted down and looked down at Ao beneath his feet. He smiled and said, your Biakugan discovered my identity, didn't you? 
yes. Ao's body trembled slightly. He looked at Uehara who was wearing a hat with an ugly expression and slowly nodded. Uehara gently clapped and whispered, If you reveal my identity, the entire Kirigakura will be destroyed by me. All the Kiri ninja and villagers who know about it will be killed by me. What will you do now? You. Ao's face instantly paled. Uehara pointed at the ancient dragon soaring in the air and continued with a smile, Don't think that I am lying. It is the one who destroyed the entire Sunagakur. Why don't we take a guess? Can it destroy Kirigakur? Ao's forehead was covered in sweat. There was no doubt that the ancient dragon in the air was too powerful. If it continuously spewed out huge fireballs, the entire Kirigakur might be destroyed. This guy did not lie to him. Ao clenched his teeth and asked directly, I want to know why you joined Akatsuki. If I remember correctly, your identity is also very famous in the whole ninja world. Even the five great ninja villages do not dare to ignore your existence. There are even people who call you the next ninja demigod. Now it seems that they have underestimated you. We are not talking about that thing. Uehara's voice suddenly became low. He said coldly, what you need to do now is to prove to me that you won't reveal your secret. So let me be a little more merciful and let the entire Kirigakur go. Ao fell silent again. After a long silence, he slowly raised his head and a look of determination appeared on his face, kill me. Not enough. Uehara raised a finger and shook it. He chuckled, give me your eyes and prove me how to keep a secret. I can forgive you for spying on me. Ao fell silent once again. Only the dead could keep secrets. This Akatsuki had too many requirements. Originally, he was a talkative elder in Kirigakur, but in front of Uehara, he kept silent two or three times. Diodera held his forehead and smiled. He said to Uehara, I finally understand why the leader values you so much. You are destined to be Akatsuki's leader. Even that bastard Haydn is not as cruel and bloody as you. Sigh, I am flattered. Uehara shook his head, looked down at Ao, and said, Now, tell me your choice. Let go of Ao. Just as Uehara was still forcing Ao, a tall female ninja came with a group of Kiri reinforcements. It was Kirigakura's most powerful ninja, Terumi. Obviously, she had heard everything from the Anbu beside her on the way here. At this moment, when she saw Ao beside Uehara, she immediately opened her mouth to stop him. Uehara ignored Terumi, who had rushed over to support. He just lowered his head and continued to look at Ao, before she rushes to our side, it is your last time. Make your choice. I will be soft-hearted because of your active cooperation. I understand. Ao slowly closed his palm and made a hand seal. When Diodera and Sasori wanted to kill Ao directly, Uehara stopped them, Sasori Senpai, Diodera, I believe he will make the best choice. A sacrifice for the village is glory for a ninja. Uehara was right. After making the hand seal, Ao slowly removed his eye patch, because there was a protective seal on the eye patch. After all, his Byakugan was the only one in the entire ninja world other than the Haiga clan and also the most difficult to obtain. In terms of strategic significance, it was extraordinary for the five great countries' ninja villages. Kirigakur also obtained it by chance. All the Kiri ninjas who tried to follow Terumi to rescue Ao involuntarily stopped because they saw a scene that made the entire Kirigakur grieve. The elder in their village. The nagging squad leader in their village. The highly respected senpai in their village surrendered to the enemy. Ao slowly took off his eye patch and forcefully plucked off his eyes, then handed it to the member of Akatsuki who was wearing a hat like a saint. No, to be more precise, it should be a sacrifice to the devil, right? After all, Akatsuki was so evil. Ao disregarded the blood flowing from his eyes that he had forcefully plucked off. He slowly handed the Byakugan in his hand to Uehara and softly pleaded, If I do as you say, you promise me that you will let Kirigakur go, right? Yes. Uehara stretched out his hand and took the Byakugan. He said softly, there is another thing. Help me keep my secret. He <laughs> he. Ao laughed bitterly. He slowly stood up and reached out to grab a kunao behind him. He said in a low voice, I know. I will keep the secret like this. The next moment, just as Akatsuki's members thought that Ao would be forced to commit suicide by Uehara, Ao suddenly stretched out his hand and stabbed at Uehara's heart. His movements were too fast. Even Diodera and Sasori, who were close to him, did not have time to react. I have to say that after getting Byakugan, 
Ao practiced ninjutsu related to it. This assassination almost reached the fastest speed in his life. However, Uehara was even faster. The life energy of more than 200,000 made Uehara react almost instantly. He twisted Ao's wrist and took the kunao in his hand. Whoosh! Uehara grabbed the kunao and waved it violently. After cutting Ao's throat and before his blood could spurt out, he kicked him away, this is my favorite uniform. Don't let your blood dirty it, you treacherous villain. At this moment, the villain's evil temperament was a bit too much. Chapter 227, Akatsuki's Monster Ao's corpse rolled on the ground. In the end, his corpse stopped in front of Terumi. The blood gushing out from his throat flowed on the ground and stained Terumi's shoes. Ao Senpai There was a hint of grief in Terumi's eyes. Ever since she became Kirigakura's higher UPS, Ao had always been by her side, guiding her growth like a senpai, respectfully following her orders. This was because Ao knew that a ninja like Terumi was Kirigakura's future hope. The double bloodline limit was enough for Kirigakura to have an expert comparable to a cage-level expert. Right now, Ao's corpse was right in front of Terumi, his stiff face still carrying a bit of astonishment. It was clear that he had never thought that his sneak attack would be seen through. After all, he had paid the price of his own Byakugan to assassinate a member of Akatsuki, who was wearing a hat. Ha 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 ha. Diodera could not help but cover his stomach and laugh wildly, what kind of village is this? How can there be such idiots? Who does he think he assassinated? To be honest, Diodera was still a little scared at the beginning. After all, if Uehara was really assassinated, Konan would probably go crazy, right? According to her love for Uehara, the entire country of water might be directly blown into ruins by Konan. He and Sasori might also be implicated. Now that Uehara was fine, of course, it was time to be arrogant. Diodera grinned and took out a lump of clay from his bag. The mouth in his palm swallowed the clay and chewed it slowly. Ao had broken the agreement unilaterally, so it was time to make a big fuss. He really doesn't know his own strength. Sasori's mood gradually calmed down. He looked at Uehara beside him with a little surprise. After all, even he couldn't react to Ao's outburst just now. But Uehara casually cut off Ao's throat, and there was no trace of blood on his body. It should be said that he was worthy of being someone both Pain and Konan thought highly of. Sasori Senpai, lend me a scroll. Uehara waved his hand and threw Ao's kunao to the ground. He slowly borrowed a sealed scroll from Sasori and sealed the Byakugan in his hand. This was the most important thing. In the future, he might be able to give this Byakugan to Kabuto and let him install it on White Zetsu's coat. He would definitely be able to increase Kabuto's strength once again. The Kiri ninjas looked at Uehara with a hint of fear on their faces. This monster of Akatsuki's organization did not seem to care about the assassination just now. Terumi clenched her teeth and ordered the Anbu beside her, help me collect Ao's body. I'll help him take revenge. Her voice was a little calm. However, the Anbu beside her could hear a touch of anger in her calm voice, just like the calm before the eruption of a volcano. One of the Anbu involuntarily swallowed a mouthful of saliva and recalled the horror of Terumi. He hurriedly responded in a low voice, Yes, Terumi-sama. Tap. Tap tap. The sound of high-heeled wooden clogs stepping on the floor was crisp. Terumi walked towards the members of Akatsuki step by step. One Kiri ninja after another whispered to each other and gathered around again, ready to support her at any time. Uehara put away the scroll containing the Akugan, looked at Terumi who was strolling over, and turned to look at Zabuza, Zabuza-san, has she always been so brave? Yes. Zabuza nodded with an ugly expression on his face. In that instant just now, there was a faint hope in Zabuza's heart. He hoped that Uehara would be successfully assassinated by Ao, so that he could reverse the situation on the spot and directly attack Sasori and Diodera, returning to Kirigakura as a hero undercover. Unfortunately, Ao had failed, and he had been defeated very miserably. Sasori glanced at Zabuza, and then looked at the broadsword in his hand. He frowned slightly, Zabuza. Was the killing intent coming from you just now targeting me? Zabuza broke out in a cold sweat. Uehara smiled and said to help Zabuza out, there are still enemies here. There are some things that we can deal with later. After all, the one we are going to fight now is very likely the fifth Mizu cage. Zabuza heaved a sigh of relief. He wanted to wait until the end of the battle to make a plan. If Akatsuki failed to attack Kirigakura this time, 
then he would immediately turn back to Kirigakur. Based on the information he knew about Akatsuki, he would definitely be able to hold a high position in the village. If Akatsuki successfully attacked Kirigakur this time, then he would immediately become a loyal member of Akatsuki. After all, although Akatsuki had a small number of people, their combat strength was very strong. They might really be able to rule the ninja world. Just as Zabuza relaxed a little, Uehara suddenly opened his mouth and said, Now, let Zabuza-san kill this woman Terumi and prove his loyalty. There was a hint of a smile in Uehara's voice, in this case, if he wins, then it proves that he still has value. If he loses, then his death has nothing to do with us. It means that we do not need a traitor and trash like him. Bastard. Zabuza cursed in his heart. Just how much did this bastard Uehara look down on him? After Uehara finished speaking, he looked at Zabuza and chuckled, Zabuza-san, I believe you will prove yourself, right? Humph, don't worry. Zabuza coldly snorted, picked up the broadsword in his hand, and rushed in Terumi's direction. When Terumi saw that the first to rush out from Akatsuki's organization was actually Zabuza, she couldn't help but frown. According to the information she had received from Mangetsu all these years, Zabuza was not a good person. Sasori looked at Zabuza's back and said softly, Uehara, Zabuza is a very disobedient guy. So he is dead for sure. Uehara watched as Zabuza brandished his broadsword and rushed towards Terumi. He chuckled and said, there is no place for him among Akatsuki's members. He is only temporarily occupying another person's position for a period of time. Hmm? Another person. Diodera immediately became curious, could it be that there are other people that will join our organization? Yes. Uehara nodded and said softly, after all, if Mangetsu and Zabuza were to be teammates, it would be too wrong. It just so happens that there is a little fellow who has grown up. He is also eager to get the beheaded blade and also eager to see Mangetsu. Uehara was talking about Mangetsu's younger brother, Suijitsu. Zabuza's strength had never been able to keep up with his ambition, constantly thinking of a chance to return to Kirigakur and grasp its power. During this period of time, the activity of the members of Akatsuki's organization was very high, and the threat to the ninja world increased greatly. Every ninja village was doing its best to gather information about Akatsuki. Zabuza would definitely not let go of this opportunity. Sasori's expression was somewhat subtle, then when you recruited this kind of guy to join Akatsuki, it was really a shame for Akatsuki. I thought he would change. Uehara shook his head and sighed softly, I just didn't expect that this guy's nature is still hard to change. He is not even as loyal as the previous generation of beheading sword users, Biwajozo, to his companions. Uehara looked at Zabuza, who was at a disadvantage at the beginning of the game and said softly, with Zabuza's strength, it is absolutely impossible for him to defeat that woman Terumi. Then let him be buried in his hometown. A hint of ridicule appeared on Diodera's face, and he said with a sneer, Tisk, you are really cruel. After Diodera finished speaking, he spread out his palm, and a cruel smile appeared on his face, however, this guy Zabuza actually wanted to attack Sasori when you were assassinated. This guy is really unforgivable. Even if he did not die in the hands of the enemy, I will ignore the rules of the organization and kill him. Don't worry. Uehara looked at Terumi, who was beginning to pout, and said in a low voice, This guy, is dead for sure. Sure enough. Terumi's combat experience was not as good as Zabuza's, but her bloodline limit was enough to make up for all the flaws, and even her will far surpassed Zabuza's will to fight. After all, if a person was not strong enough and still wanted to sneak in and play tricks, how could he defeat a woman like Terumi? Especially since this woman was still in a state of extreme anger. Yatun, Yokai no Jutsu, Lava Release, Melting Apparition Technique. Terumi opened her mouth and spat out a stream of acid that directly corroded Zabuza's body. This acid actually corroded a large hole in his body, and even through the hole, they could see the organs inside his body. Zabuza looked at the large hole in his chest and abdomen in disbelief. He immediately turned his head to look at Uehara, wanting to rush to Uehara's side with all his might. Because it was very clear that Uehara's medical ninjutsu was very strong. As long as the person did not die, Uehara could be saved. However, when Zabuza's eyes showed despair, the three members of Akatsuki in the distance did not seem to have any intention of rushing over to support him. Sasori even slowly stretched out a chakra line and pulled away the ninja sword in Zabuza's hand before he died, if I remember correctly, Mangetsu seems to be able to use any ninja blade. That's right. 
Uehara nodded and watched as Zabuza completely went silent. In the midst of a group of cheering Kiri ninjas, he slowly raised his palm. Clap! Clap clap! Uehara looked at the slightly panting Terumi and suddenly said, Thank you for helping us eliminate Akatsuki's traitor. After Zabuza joined Akatsuki back then, he had always wanted to collect information about Akatsuki. He planned to find an opportunity to come back and rely on his action of ending the blood mist policy and Akatsuki's information to serve as Kirigakura's fifth Mizu cage. The entire Kirigakura was in an uproar. Every Kiri ninja looked at Zabuza who was in a miserable state, and their expressions changed instantly. They subconsciously remembered his contributions. Terumi's expression did not change at all. Because she trusted Mangetsu's judgment very much. Mangetsu believed that Kisame still had a way to remedy the situation. If he had to fight in the future, Terumi could show mercy to Kisame. As for Zabuza, there was no need to hold back at all. Therefore, Terumi brazenly killed Zabuza. Tisk, actually, what I said might be true. Uehara shook his head and sighed. He slowly stopped his palm and said with a long voice, Congratulations, Your Excellency Terumi. Congratulations on killing a member of our Akatsuki. You will be rewarded by Akatsuki. What? Terumi frowned. She did not think that Akatsuki's reward was anything good. Moreover, this sentence was clearly an insult to Kirigakur. Uehara's voice suddenly changed, and there was a faint sense of oppression before it descended, the reward is to let you see the sunrise today. When Uehara finished speaking, a red sun slowly rose. The first rays of the morning sun shone down, shining on the stone slabs inside Kirigakur. This was the first time Kirigakur had seen a sunrise. This village had always been covered by fog. Basically, all they saw was the afternoon sun. If not for the strong wind blowing away all the fog in the village today, they would not have seen such scenery today. Sunrise was really beautiful. However, Terumi's expression suddenly changed. If she had not heard wrongly, now that the sun was shining down, Akatsuki and the other lunatics would definitely launch an attack on the village. Time is up. Uehara calmly said these four words. Then, he suddenly squatted down and slapped his palm on the ground. Then, he coldly shouted, Katon, Pillar of Flame. In the next moment, pillars of flames shot up into the sky from all over the ground of Kirigakur. In fact, they would only appear in a place that was dozens of meters away in a regular pattern. However, it was these pillar of flame who suddenly appeared that turned the entire Kirigakur into a sea of flames in a short moment. Some of the unlucky Kirigakur ninjas were directly burned to ashes by the flames that suddenly appeared. Just the number of pillar of flame was roughly calculated, and their numbers were even more than the number of the entire Kirigakur ninjas. Even the strongest, Terumi, now had a faint look of despair in her eyes, what kind of monsters, are inside Akatsuki. Chapter 228, Just a little more and you can hurt my finger. In an instant, Kirigakur turned into a sea of fire. The flames burned the air describing waves of air. The entire village was filled with explosions and screams. This was the first time that the Kiri ninjas had seen someone release such powerful fire ninjutsu. The range of these techniques covered the entire Kirigakur. A feeling of despair emerged in the hearts of every Kiri ninja. A Kiri ninja looked at the pillars of fire that were spewing out and blankly retreated a few steps before collapsing to the ground, is this. Akatsuki's power. Sudan, Sujinchu, Water Release water formation pillar. A huge ball of water suddenly rushed into the sky and then scattered to destroy pillar of flame. The water vapor immediately began to appear in this area. The person who put out the fire was Terumi. Unfortunately, even if she extinguished the flames here, she would not be able to extinguish the flame in the entire Kirigakur. In the entire Kirigakur, there were still tens of thousands of pillars of fire. Stand up! Terumi had recovered from his initial shock and loudly ordered, Everyone, immediately go and organize the civilians in the village to take refuge and extinguish the fire. At this moment, Terumi was like in the past, becoming the backbone of the Kiri ninjas. She waved her hand to gather the surrounding Kiri ninjas and issued orders to them, asking them to form their own teams to go to Kirigakur's various places to rescue. However, this time, the scope of Kirigakur's disaster was too large, and the Kiri ninjas who had surrounded Uehara and the others had no choice but to retreat and go to rescue. After Terumi gave her order, there was only a small team of the Anbu left beside her, and this small team was also waiting for her orders. Perhaps it was because she spoke too much, but Terumi's voice sounded a little tired, 
immediately send a carrier pigeon to deliver the order. Have the troops stationed near Sanbai leave a small team behind and the others will rush to support. Make sure they return to the village within four hours. Yes, Terumi-sama. This Anbu did not hesitate at all. He turned around and disappeared in front of Terumi and the others with a few leaps. Another Anbu finally could not hold it in and asked in a deep voice, Terumi-sama, according to the information we received, Akatsuki's target has always been Baijiu. What if they just use the excuse of attacking Kirigakur? I know, Kojuro. Terumi shook her head with an ugly expression. She looked at the distant figures who were dressed in black robes, and said in a low voice, if not for the lack of manpower in the village, I would never have thought of mobilizing the ninja forces there. We have to protect the village first before we have the chance to protect Sanbai from falling into the enemy's hands. There was one more thing that Terumi did not say. That was that she did not have the slightest confidence to repel Akatsuki's invasion. In the face of a situation that was strong enough to make people not dare to reverse, the will to fight became somewhat insignificant. Terumi did not think that Kirigakur could defeat Akatsuki's members. If the information from Kanaha was correct, then Akatsuki's goal was Sanbai. Perhaps after she transferred the help from outside the village, the Akatsuki might retreat. Sanbai was just a Baijiu. Terumi looked at the last two Anbu members beside her and continued to instruct, Kojuro, Ichiro, you should go to other places to help. Leave this place to me. Terumi-sama. Terumi-sama. The two Anbu involuntarily raised their heads and looked at Terumi in disbelief. There were thousands of ninjas stationed in the entire Kirigakur. How could they let Terumi fight alone? It doesn't matter. Terumi shook his head and said in a low voice, You won't be of much use here. If you go to other places, you might be able to save more people. But... The Kiri Anbu looked at Uehara and the others in the distance and gritted his teeth, the other side still has three people. Even if it's just a distraction, we can still hold two enemies for Terumi-sama. Yes. The other Kiri Anbu firmly said, I have been working hard to become Terumi-sama's future protector. The two Yuri Anbu refused to leave. Perhaps because they knew the threat Terumi was about to face, the two Kiri Anbu tried to refuse Terumi's order and insisted on staying to fight together. Hey. I think there seems to be some dispute between you two. Uehara looked at the scene and smiled. He suddenly interrupted Terumi and the Anbu, attracting their attention. Hidden in a hat, Uehara let out a sinister laugh. He slowly spread out his palm and said with a chuckle, Your Excellency Terumi, why don't I help you kill both of them so that you don't have to quarrel? Retreat. Terumi shouted coldly. One kick after another sent the two Kiri Anbu flying. In the next moment, a pillar of fire suddenly emerged from where the two Kiri Anbu had stood. The two Kiri Anbu had some lingering fears. If Terumi had not acted quickly, the two of them would have been burned to ashes by the flames spewing out from the ground just now. Terumi waved her hand and shouted, Now that you two have seen it, you will only be a hindrance if you stay here. Leave immediately. Yes. With no other choice, the two Kiri Anbu could only fly away. Uehara looked at Terumi who was alone and shook his head. He sighed and said, Your Excellency Terumi, you are the only one left. You look so lonely. Hee <laughs> hee. Do you think you can take me down? Terumi curled the corners of his mouth and revealed an ambiguous smile. He suddenly opened his mouth and spat out a lump of acidic fog, fudden, komo no jutsu, boil release, skilled mist technique. The fog rushed towards Uehara and the others. The buildings on the street were gradually eroded by the acid mist. Deodara and Sassari could not help but frown. This kind of boiling release was a troublesome bloodline limit. Especially for Sassari, if he were to fight with Terumi, he might not be able to gain any benefits. After all, the attack area of the boiling release was too large, and his puppet or even the puppet strings might be corroded. Tisk, a woman's mouth shouldn't be poisonous. Uehara gently waved his hand and a strong gust of wind blew past, completely blowing away the sour fog. He slowly looked up at Terumi and said, If your mouth is sweeter, I believe that many people will like you. Hee <laughs> hee, I will learn. Terumi put on a smile, her eyebrows slightly curved. At this moment, it was as if they were not fighting but chatting. As for her mood, it wasn't that good. If that Akatsuki member on the opposite side was very skilled in wind ninjutsu, then it would be equivalent to directly making her boiling release bloodline limit unable to be used. This battle was very tricky. No it could even be said that there was no chance of winning. 
Terumi had never met an enemy as powerful as Uehara. In the battle, he used the most casual attitude to show his strength. Uehara slowly stretched out his palm in the direction of Terumi and said softly, Futon, Daytapa, wind release, great breakthrough. A gust of wind instantly blew in the direction of Terumi. The buildings along the street were all destroyed by the wind, and the ground was also ploughed into a deep gully. Sudan, Sujinchu, water release, water formation pillar. Terumi gritted her teeth, and a strong stream of water gushed out of her mouth to resist the attack. Her face was extremely nervous, can ordinary sea level wind ninjutsu be able to exert such a powerful force? Futon, Kazakiri no jutsu, wind release, wind cutter technique. A blade of wind directly cut through the water wall, revealing a huge hole. You are quite a good woman. Uehara looked at Terumi who was hiding in the water wall and said something that made people not understand. In fact, what he meant was that Terumi thought that he was picking up food in the garbage dump many years ago and thought that he was very pitiful and gave him a biscuit. Who would have thought that the next moment, Terumi would suddenly laugh and lazily stretch out her waist, where do you think I'm good? Just as Uehara was sizing her up, Terumi's expression suddenly changed. She opened her mouth and spat out an orange acid that covered the sky, Yatun, Yokai no Jutsu, Lava Release, Melting Apparition Technique. This acid directly covered the heads of the three of them. If this acid fell, Sasori and Diodera would definitely not be able to escape. The two of them might even be severely injured. This woman, no wonder she was able to make Kirigakur submit to her from head to toe. It was definitely not because she was beautiful. Her strength was also very strong. At the very least, her double bloodline limit almost completely restrained them. Both Diodera and Sasori couldn't help but flash a touch of surprise on their faces. Sasori hurriedly manipulated the puppets of third and fourth Kazakage, intending to release their magnetic release defensive ninjutsu. Don't panic. Uehara comforted them and slowly raised his finger. Spirit's Refuge. A purple energy shield appeared around them and enveloped them. This was a group invincible skill. The orange acid fell under the energy shield but could not corrode it. The acid could only flow down along the light shield and gradually fell to the ground to corrode the floor. Just as Uehara removed his energy defense, Terumi, who was in the distance, rushed in their direction with a determined look on her face, Do you think you can escape? Go to hell. Akatsuki's Monsters. Katon, Hosenka no Jutsu, Fire Style, Phoenix Fire Jutsu. A volley of small fireballs actually gushed out from her mouth. This woman could actually release fire ninjutsu, and it was also Uchiha's fire ninjutsu. No. This doesn't seem to be anything to be surprised about. After all, there are many chakra attributes in Terumi's body, and one of her skills is the composition of water and fire. The small fireball did not land on Uehara and the others but on the acid surrounding them. A moment later, when the flames landed on the acid, it immediately caused a violent explosion. The entire street was affected, and the buildings on the street were instantly destroyed. That acid was actually could be exploded by fire. Terumi suddenly activated her hidden move. This was her real killing move. After all, she never expected that acid could kill Akatsuki's members. Even Terumi herself was forced back by the shockwave of the explosion. Just as Terumi was gasping for breath and looking at the quiet street after the violent explosion, she felt slightly relieved in her heart. The timing she picked was very good. The moment the strange purple energy light shield disappeared, it was definitely the time that the members of Akatsuki were unable to defend against. According to Terumi's judgment, even if Akatsuki and the others had strange ninjutsu, it was impossible for them to be unscathed in this explosion. There should be two deaths and one serious injury. If it was a little more optimistic, all three of them might have been killed by the explosion. However, when the smoke and dust of the explosion dispersed, Terumi looked at the three figures in black robes with astonishment. They did not even move at all. Hey. Diodera grinned at Terumi and said with a chuckle, This woman's methods are really sharp. I acknowledge your art. Sasori looked at the surroundings that had been destroyed by the explosion expressionlessly and whispered, Judging from the power of the explosion, it seems that this woman spat out something called nitric acid and then detonated it with fire. It is indeed amazing. Uehara looked at Terumi in the distance and praised softly, The weak in the world always find a chance to defeat the strong through various novel tactics. I have to say, your Excellency Terumi's tactics were indeed worthy of praise just now. Uehara flipped his palm and continued with a smile, it's really worthy of praise. Just a little more and you would have been able to hurt my finger. 
Chapter 229, The God Save Kirigakur Uehara was a little arrogant. Well, maybe more than a little. Sasori and Diadera couldn't help but look at Uehara. How could someone like him say that she almost hurt his finger? But to be honest, Uehara really had the qualifications to say that. Just now, when Terumi used the fire to detonate the acid, Uehara casually set up another layer of defensive light shield and blocked the explosion. This kind of battle really made people feel despair. Terumi, who was obviously launching an attack, was sent flying by the shock wave brought by the explosion. There were many injuries in her body, but Uehara and the others in the center of the explosion were not even hurt. Terumi's hair slightly trembled, and her dark green eyes flashed with horror and uneasiness. Even her surprise attack ninjutsu could not hurt them, then what should she do to stop Akatsuki's group? If even she was defeated, then no one would be able to stop them. Terumi forced himself to stand up, and nervously looked at the three people, and slowly circulate the chakra in her body. Don't show this expression, Your Excellency Terumi. Uehara couldn't help but smile, slowly walked towards Terumi, and slowly said, Ninjas can't only fight and kill, but also learn the ways of the world. In this aspect, you are much stronger than others. Uehara tilted his head and raised an example, for example, we, Akatsuki, want to capture Sanbai. Just now, I heard you mention that you took the initiative to transfer back to the ninja forces stationed near Sanbai. Isn't this very tactful? Bastard. Terumi gritted his teeth and a stream of water gushed out from his mouth. It gathered into a water whip, sudden, swibbon, water release, water whip. The water whip suddenly attacked Uehara. Uehara casually reached out and grabbed the water whip. He suddenly used the water whip to drag Terumi to his side. Uehara suddenly released the whip and pinched Terumi's chin with one hand. He gently stroked her long hair with the other hand, revealing her full appearance. Uehara chuckled and rubbed her cheek, really. I can't tell that this face is a woman in her thirties at all. Bastard. Terumi was furious. Terumi shook her head and broke free from Uehara's grip. She opened her mouth and was about to spit out a corrosive acid at Uehara. Bang. Uehara turned over and kicked Terumi on the neck. He kicked Terumi and sent her flying. The strongest ninja in Kirigakur fell into the ruins with her head up and fainted. Sasori closed his eyes, speechless. He shook his head and sighed, You are really bad. I have already shown mercy. Uehara looked at the unconscious Terumi and chuckled, Back then, this woman thought that I was astray in country of water and gave me a bag of biscuits. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let her go so easily. What else do you want? Diodera couldn't help but rub his forehead. He looked at Uehara speechlessly, your way of showing mercy is really special. I feel that your arrogant attitude just now was even crueler than killing her. All right, let's go. Uehara waved at the sky. An ancient dragon descended from the sky and landed in front of them. Uehara was the first to jump onto the head of the ancient dragon and stroke its scales, let's go, Sasori Senpai, Diodera. Let's go and see how Suzuki is doing. Sasori jumped onto the dragon's back and looked at Uehara in confusion, Eh? You won't do anything before you leave. Of course I'll do something. Uehara nodded and slowly extended his palm. The chakra within his body gathered bit by bit, futon, rongkudan, wind release, drilling air bullet. The effect of wind power was too powerful, enough for Uehara to use any wind ninjutsu. Even Ichibai's wind ninjutsu did not have any pressure in using it. Sasori was slightly surprised as he looked at the wind ball gathered in Uehara's hand, you can even use Ichibai's wind ninjutsu. Yes, I am a genius in wind ninjutsu. Uehara threw the ball of wind in his hand at the center of Kirigakur and chuckled, then let the wind destroy this place. The ball of wind suddenly fell to the ground. In the next moment, the wind that gathered in the ball instantly swept everything around it, and even expanded the sea of fire that Pillar of Flame had created earlier. It's actually even stronger than Ichibai's drilling air bullet. Sasori looked at the wind that swept out from the center of Kirigakur with a solemn gaze. He couldn't help but look at Uehara, every time you destroy a ninja village, are you spreading the horror of Akatsuki? Diodera laughed and said, last time it was Sunagakur, this time it was Kirigakur, what village is next? Idiot. Sasori couldn't help but hold his forehead and said coldly, we caught Sanbai. Yanbai Jinchuriki is in the organization's base. Which village do you think will be destroyed next? Diodera's expression changed. He suddenly looked at Uehara and muttered, 
the next one is going to face that old man Onaki. That old man is not easy to deal with. The task of capturing Gobij and Churiki might not enough with just a few of us. As a former disciple of Onaki, Diodara knew how terrifying dust release was. If he was serious Onaki might be the strongest among the five cage today. Let's talk about it when the time comes. Uehara sat on the ancient dragon and looked down at the village that was ravaged by the fierce wind and flames. He gently patted the scales of the ancient dragon, well, there is no need to look at it. Let's go. The reward for this attack on Kirigakura was already in his hands. Unfortunately, there were not many ninjas who were defeated or killed by his last move this time. There were only about three to four thousand people. Sunagakura's situation was something that could only be encountered by luck. After all, at that time, Sunagakura was still reorganizing its ninja army, so most of the ninjas were gathered in the village. Kirigakura's ninjas were divided into many batches, and many people were out on missions because the ocean in the ninja world was basically dominated by Kirigakura. Uehara looked at the profits brought by Dark Harvest, and if it really didn't work out, he would wait for the ninja world war to come again. Dark Harvest, after defeating a ninja, you will get a part of the strength from the enemy. Each time you increase your life energy by 10 points, chakra energy by 10 points, and natural energy by 10 points. Current accumulation, 189,750 points of life energy, 189,750 points of chakra energy, and 189,750 points of natural energy. This battle also increased Uehara's three-dimensional attributes by almost a quarter, directly increasing it to 250,000 points. In addition, there were several other rewards. Side mission, defeat AO, 1 slash 1, dot. Mission completed. Reward skill, heightened senses. Heightened senses, when you open your keen perception, everything from a kilometer away will appear in your vision. The skill has no cooldown time and has no consumption. This skill was still acceptable. Although Uehara could use his destiny to spy at any time, this skill did not need any chakra. It could be activated permanently. The only uncomfortable part was that he might be seeing things. Side mission, defeat Terumi, 1 slash 1, dot. Mission completed. Reward, 100 gold coins. It appeared again. Did this woman not have any black spots? No one actually wanted to defeat her? Fortunately, there was still a reward that Uehara wanted the most. Side mission, successfully destroy Kirigakura, 1 slash 1, dot. Mission completed. Reward, passive innate skill water power. Water power. Passive able to freely control water attribute chakra and use water released ninjutsu at will. This is one of the components of truth seeking ball. Well, from today on, Uehara can be said to be the strongest water style ninja. Even if Tobirama was alive, it was impossible for him to be stronger than his water style ninjutsu. Water power was the ultimate water attribute of chakra nature change. The most important thing was that as long as Uehara can find out how to obtain the yin and yang power, he should be able to condense a truth-seeking ball. Who would have thought that in the next moment, a new innate skill would appear on the system panel? Ice power, passive able to freely control ice attribute chakra formed by wind power and water power, and use ice release ninjutsu at will. Uehara began to touch his chin. If he could freely create ice release ninjutsu, he would inexplicably think of a bunch of messy moves, which seemed to be a bit interesting. Thank you for your reward, then I will use snow to put out the fire for you. Uehara snapped his fingers and rode the ancient dragon to take Diodera and Sasori to the place where Sanbai was. After they left, the temperature of Kirigakura's air quickly dropped, and the originally clear sky gradually began to have some more color. Following that, the temperature actually became lower and lower. Not long after, it began to rain, followed by snow, and finally hail. It was obvious that Uehara was not used to it. The bad weather of this rain, snow, and hail might have caused a huge loss but at this moment, it became the weather that saved Kirigakura's life. When Terumi, who was lying in the ruins, was awakened by the cold, she looked at the crackling hail in the air with some astonishment and walked back to the widest place in the village. A group of civilians was kneeling on one knee on the ground, praying for the blessing of God. It was the mighty power of God that extinguished the fire, which allowed them to be reborn in the hands of Akatsuki and the others. This was the miracle of his coming. God did not want to see Kirigakura burn into ashes, so it rained down heavy rain and heavy snow, saving their village. Even if it was raining hail in the sky, 
it did not delay these people kneeling on the ground to thank God for his gift. Of course, this was because God did not want to see the Kirigakur disappear and be destroyed. The power that was sent down in a hurry directly changed from rain to snow and then hail. What are you doing? Terumi coughed lightly and looked at the few Anbu in the surrounding. Among them was the little guy she had always thought highly of, Kojuro. Terumi-sama. Kojuro looked at Terumi in surprise and whispered, Everyone is saying that the gods in the sky are protecting our village that's why we can avoid this fire. After a long silence, Terumi did not respond to Kojuro. Instead, she dragged her injured body and left this place. Was there really a blessing from the gods? Terumi did not feel good. If the ninjas in the village could be stronger, how could it be possible for everyone to believe in the gods in this situation? Terumi slowly walked to a place to avoid the hail. She squatted down and hugged her body tightly, just like an ordinary woman, trying to make her body feel warm. At this moment, she did not have her previous image. This woman who had been supporting Kirigakura all this time felt tired today. She had worked hard enough but did not protect her village. In the end, it was the weather that saved the ninja village. After a while, Terumi suddenly turned to look at the few Anbu who surround her. She whispered, You guys go and command the reconstruction of the village. Kojuro, stay behind. I have something to tell you. Yes, Terumi sama. The Anbus jumped and left. Terumi glanced at the only Anbu left behind and lowered her head again, Kojuro, go to Kanaha right now and tell our allies about our situation. Yes. Kojuro nodded slightly and suddenly asked, Terumi sama, the troops stationed near Sanbai have returned. Do you want them to continue monitoring Sanbai? Terumi raised her head and looked at Kojuro as if she was looking at an immature child. A smile appeared on her face. However, at this moment, the smile on her face was somewhat desolate, there is no Sanbai anymore. Akatsuki attacked us just to let us know their horror. They did not hide their purpose at all. They just wanted to catch Sanbai. After Terumi finished speaking, she seemed to think of something. She slowly clenched her fist and stood up again, turning back into the dignified and solemn woman. Terumi looked at Kojuro and whispered, Also, go to the Anbu headquarter to find out the information about Rokubai Jinchuriki and invite Kanaha to ambush Akatsuki in Rokubai's hiding place. Since the purpose of Akatsuki's organization was to capture Baijuu, then there was a great possibility that Rokubai would be attacked. They might as well take this opportunity to ambush Akatsuki. By the way, tell Kanaha. Terumi recovered her powerful momentum, looked at Kojuro beside her, and ordered in a deep voice, if we ambush Akatsuki this time, we can take Omegakura's people with us. Are they not the village that knows Akatsuki best? Most importantly, Terumi really wanted to see Uehara again. Because only Uehara had a chance of contacting Mangetsu. Chapter 230, Congratulations Suzuki, you passed the exam. Uehara did not know what Terumi was thinking. Now, Uehara, Diadera, and Sasori had already arrived at the place where Sanbai was reborn. Suzuki was still fighting hard with Sanbai, and Oriana was supervising this battle. Diadera curled his lips in displeasure, looking at Suzuki whose eyes were red. Obviously, Suzuki did not dare to be careless in this battle and had already opened his Sharingan. This caused Diadera to be disgusted. After all, when Diadera joined Akatsuki, it was Itachi who used a Genjutsu to control Diadera and almost made him use a clay bomb to kill himself. Uchiha, these guys are really annoying. Diadera raised his head proudly and said loudly, Hey, Uehara, can I directly blow up that kid and Sanbai together? I have specially prepared a very special art for them. After saying that, Diadera added, Look at these Uchiha, none of them are good people. I suspect that the Uchiha brother in our organization has a conspiracy and wants to use Akatsuki to realize their ambitions. No. Uehara's face darkened and he slowly shook his head. All the members of the Akatsuki organization, which one didn't want to use Akatsuki to achieve their ambitions? Diadera was right about one thing. Uchiha was really not a good thing. They were too proud, and they always use the heart of a villain to judge the heart of a gentleman. There was also a little bit of persecution delusion. They think that there was always someone who wants to kill them. Well, they may have guessed it right. Suzuki was the chess piece that Uehara liked to use the most. As long as he was slightly induced, he could make this self-proclaimed smart person think more and use it for him. Sasori glanced at the unhappy Diadera and comforted him softly, when we return to the base, we will see Uchiha brothers kill each other. 
isn't this more interesting than killing them? But I still want to kill them and take revenge. Deodara pouted and turned away, acting like a spoiled child. As Deodara's peers, Uehara was a little embarrassed. Fortunately, the battle between Suzuki and Sanbai caused Uehara a little interest. He opened his mouth and began to explain, it seems that Suzuki has figured out Sanbai's information. Deodara glanced at Sasuke's battle and snorted disdainfully, Humph, I don't need any information to get rid of Sanbai. Sasori looked at Deodara speechlessly. When it came to Uchiha, he felt that Deodara had become a master of leverage. Dot. The battle on the lake surface became more and more intense. Suzuki finally realized a problem. Even if he knew about Sanbai, unless he used large-scale attack ninjutsu, it would be very difficult for his not-so-painful technique to completely defeat Sanbai. Fortunately, country of water's weather has always been good. Suzuki raised his head to look at the sky, and a smile appeared on his face. If I use that move, I shouldn't waste too many carrots. I probably only need one. Katon, Goryaka no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Dragon Fire Technique. A dragon-headed fireball shot towards the cloud direction. Deodara glanced at it and couldn't help but curse, Idiot, it's fine if you want to use Fire Ninjutsu to attack Sanbai but you even shot it into the sky. Isn't this a waste of your chakra? Sasori shook his head and whispered, Don't worry, keep watching. No matter how low his IQ is, it is impossible for him to use fire ninjutsu in vain. Hehe, <laughs> I guess he wants to use that move. Uehara looked at it for a while and chuckled, he still developed that move? It seems that Suzuki is really lucky. Country of Water's weather is the most suitable place to use that move. What Suzuki wanted to use was undoubtedly the Lighting Kirin. This S-class ninjutsu was the strongest move of ordinary lightning ninjutsu. The only problem was that he needed to borrow the advantage of the weather, and he had to draw natural lightning from the thunder clouds to release it. The country of water was close to the sea and was a little humid, which also caused this country to have a rainy environment. Therefore, you can see the floating clouds almost everywhere in the sky. This was very conducive to the environment of releasing the Lightning Kirin. As Sasuke's fire ninjutsu rose into the air, dark clouds gradually gathered in the sky above the battlefield. Suzuki stared at the lightning flow in the dark clouds in the sky, and slowly closed his palm. Raiden, Kirin. The lightning in the dark clouds in the sky quickly gathered, and in the blink of an eye, these lightning bolts formed a huge thunder beast. It roared and rushed towards Sanbai who was on the lake surface. Sanbai looked at the thunder beast that was rushing over in the sky and instantly wanted to condense it by Judama. However, a red light flashed in Sasuke's eye. In the next second, Sanbai felt that his body was bound by countless huge nails. It was clear that Suzuki had expected this. Whenever Sanbai tried to use Baijutama, he would use his own genjutsu to force Sanbai into a few seconds of sleep, interrupting him from condensing Baijutama. Deodara's expression changed. He gritted his teeth and said, This little brat, you really can't underestimate him. Even he felt threatened by the power of this lightning Kirin. After all, it's an Uchiha clan. Sasori shook his head and sighed. After that, he turned to look at Uehara, he couldn't have killed Sanbai with such a powerful lightning attack, right? I don't think so. Uehara shook his head and felt a little uneasy. He suddenly raised his finger and pointed at the thunder beast in the air. He said softly, forget it, just treat it as him passing the test. Sanbai can't have any accidents. Futon, Tatsumaki, wind release tornado. A small tornado rushed from Uehara's finger to the thunder beast. This tornado grew larger and larger. When the tornado and the thunder beast met, it had completely enveloped this terrifying thunder beast. As the tornado spun, this thunder beast was instantly disintegrated into countless tiny lightning bolts. In the blink of an eye, it dissipated into nothingness. The dark clouds in the air were also blown away. Wind attributed ninjutsu was extremely effective against lightning attributed ninjutsu, not to mention that Uehara's wind power was the most extreme wind chakra. Suzuki used all his strength to release S-class lightning ninjutsu, which was directly destroyed by wind ninjutsu released using Uehara's finger. You really aren't polite. Sasori looked at Uehara and couldn't help but shake his head, a little guy works so hard to study and train lightning ninjutsu, but you directly broke it with one move. It will make the little guy lose confidence. Deodara didn't care so much. Seeing Suzuki who was confused on the lake surface, he couldn't help but give Uehara a thumbs up, Uehara, well done. 
This move of Uehara's was much stronger than the lightning ninjutsu Suzuki prepare. After the lightning Kirin in the sky disappeared, Sanbai seemed to have found an opportunity and suddenly rushed towards Suzuki. Although he didn't know why someone would crack the technique who threatened him, now was the chance to kill this kid in front of him. Sasuke's consumption of chakra was a bit large. At this moment, he could only step on the lake water to avoid Sanbai's pursuit. His face was full of displeasure and confusion, as well as a trace of suppressed fear in his eyes. This guy, Uehara, wanted to use Sanbai to kill him? Just how strong was this guy? The lightning ninjutsu he used all his strength to release was easily resolved. Well done. Uehara's figure suddenly appeared next to Suzuki. He chuckled and praised, if I weren't worried that you would kill Sanbai, I wouldn't have broken your technique. I have to say, you are much stronger than before, Suzuki. Sasuke's body stiffened, and his face immediately turned cold, humph, Sanbai's defense is very shocking. It is not necessarily impossible for him to resist this move. In this case, it can be considered that I have not captured Sanbai, right? After hearing Sasuke's words, Uehara chuckled and said, All right, consider it as you passing the test. When we return, I will tell Pain-sama that you have the qualifications to become an official member of Akatsuki and challenge Itachi. Suzuki was betting on Sanbai's life. However, as the most honest Baijuyu, Sanbai did not bully the ninjas, nor did he take the initiative to find trouble. He just liked to quietly hide in a comfortable place and sleep. Unfortunately, Sanbai was the one who had died the most. More than ten years ago, it was inexplicably sealed into Nohara Rin's body and then killed together with her. A few years ago, it was inexplicably sealed into Yagura's body, and then Uehara killed Yagura. It was really nonsense to think about it. A seemingly harmless Baijuyu had been killed by the ninjas the most, and now he had to be used as a tool for the assessment of Suzuki. This was probably bullying the honest Baijuyu. Now, Sanbai was also angered by Suzuki. Now, it rushed over regardless of anything. However, when it rushed over and saw Uehara, its huge body suddenly braked. Uehara glanced at Sanbai who was rushing over, narrowed his eyes, and greeted him, Long time no see, Isabu. Sanbai looked at Uehara. The memory of the last time he met Uehara seemed to gradually appear in his mind as if he had been beaten very badly. This person was not his opponent. It's you. There was a trace of fear in Sanbai's voice, and his entire body was about to retreat by quickly sinking into the water to escape. Uehara chuckled, and his figure instantly appeared under Sanbai's head. He bent down and kicked the huge Baijuyu out of the water. Then, he kicked Sanbai in the lower abdomen, directly sending Sanbai flying to the shore. Sanbai was like a tortoise that had been flipped over, unable to turn over. The corner of Sasuke's eyes tightened when he saw this scene. Was Uehara this powerful? As someone who had personally fought with Sanbai before, Suzuki was very clear on how strong Sanbai was and how hard his defense was. He did not expect that Uehara would be able to kick this huge monster away with just two kicks. It was a little scary. No, it should be said that Uehara had always been very terrifying. All right, don't worry. Sanbai's capture is complete. Uehara patted Suzuki on the shoulder, looking very optimistic about him, after we seal Sanbai, I will give you a good lesson and teach you how to defeat Itachi. I believe you will definitely win. Seeing how Uehara captured Sanbai, Suzuki suddenly felt a little worried that he would not be able to hold on until the duel with Itachi. Uehara seemed to have seen through Sasuke's thoughts. He chuckled and said, Don't worry. I said that I will try my best to imitate Itachi's fighting style. Other than his eye technique, I can almost imitate everything else. Suzuki looked at the smile on Uehara's face. He suddenly lowered his head and said, Thank you, Uehara. It's okay. Uehara patted his shoulder narrowed his eyes, and revealed a friendly smile, work hard Suzuki on surpassing Itachi, I am looking forward to your growth. Chapter 231, How to Respond to the Meeting Invitation Organized to Attack Akatsuki After Uehara and Suzuki returned to the shore, Diodera was the first to welcome them. He happily hugged Uehara's shoulder and praised him, ha 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 ha. Uehara, as expected of you. You easily defeated Sanbai. You are much stronger than that Uchiha. Sasuke's face darkened. Uehara didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he broke free of Diodera's arm. This fellow was clearly using the opportunity to praise him to plot against Suzuki. Suzuki turned his head to look at his surroundings. Suddenly, he asked curiously, "En, 
where is Zabuza? Well, Zabuza. A meaningful smile appeared on Uehara's face, because Zabuza-san wants to betray Akatsuki's organization, we buried him in his hometown. This is also a reward for his hard work over the years. Sasuke's heart skipped a beat. These guys are really decisive. Suzuki remembered the time when he leaked the news to Kakashi in the country of grass. How would the Akatsuki organization treat him if they knew about it? No. Before he was strong enough, he absolutely could not have any connection with Kanaha. All right, all right. Let's bring Sanbai back to seal him. Uehara patted Suzuki on the shoulder and scanned his surroundings. Just as he was about to call the ancient dragon down, he saw Sasori had unknowingly moved closer to Oriana. Sasori seemed to be chatting happily. Why topic would they talk about? Was it to exchange body oil with her? Uehara looked at this scene speechlessly. He raised his finger and dismissed Oriana. This was his puppet. Sasori walked over and looked at Uehara. There seemed to be some hesitation on his face. He said softly, Uehara. Sasori senpai, let's go first. Uehara interrupted Sasori to prevent him from making any unreasonable requests. He waved his hand and summoned the ancient dragon to land beside them. Even if there was an ancient dragon, it seemed that it was not easy to leave with Sanbai. After all, this was a living by Jiyu. What if he resisted in the middle? Diodera frowned and looked at the huge Sanbai. He said, are we really going to leave with such a big guy? Why don't we find a safe place and let Pain gather people to seal it with astral projection jutsu? Forget it, we destroyed Kirigakur. Country of water is not safe for us. Uehara shook his head and looked at his skill panel. He found his illusion skill Hypnotic Bubbles. This skill was the reward for defeating Eno during the Chunin exam. He had never used it before. The Hypnotic Bubble could make people fall into a deep sleep, but it consumed 80 chakra every 3 seconds. This required Uehara to calculate carefully. Wait for me for a while. Uehara was holding a branch and writing on the ground, which made several people present a little confused. Why did this guy suddenly calculate numbers? Uehara faintly sighed. If he used the hypnosis bubble, his consumption seemed to be a little big. Just by hypnotizing Sanbai for an hour, even if you remove the two pieces of Seraph's embrace and reduce the consumption of chakras by 50%, he would still need 40 to 50,000 points of chakra. According to Uehara's current 250,000 chakras, he could only control Sanbai for more than five hours. I will first use a genjutsu to hypnotize Sanbai. Uehara suddenly kicked out, an acute bubble flew out from the tip of his foot and landed on Sanbai's body. This scene stunned several people. What was this operation? Was this also called a genjutsu? After the bubble hit Sanbai, it turned into countless cute birds and appeared around it. This huge Baijuyu slowly closed his eyes and fell into a deep sleep. Uehara patted his palm and summoned the ancient dragon to grab Sanbai. He said softly, in five hours, remind me that I need to cast it again. Okay. Sasori nodded. Fortunately, the ancient dragon was very fast. After a night, they rushed back to their base in the early morning. This time, the speed at which they captured Baijuya was very fast. At noon the day before yesterday, Uehara and the others set off for Country of Water, and Kakuzu's team also set off for Fire Temple. Yesterday morning, Uehara destroyed Kirigakur, captured Sanbai, while Kakuzu's team was still on their way to Fire Temple. This morning, Uehara and the others brought the captured Sanbai back to Akatsuki's base, and Kakuzu's team was still on their way to Fire Temple. The efficiency comparison was simply too obvious. Therefore, when Pain used Astral Projection Jutsu to gather everyone, Diodera found out that they were still on their way to Fire Temple and provoked Hayden on the spot. Garbage garbage. Fool, fool, fool. We have already captured Sanbai and returned. You haven't reached your destination yet. Bastard. Sooner or later, I will sacrifice you to Jashin Sama. Haydn was furious. After cursing for a while, he turned to look at Kakuzu, Hey, Kakuzu, we need to move faster. Can you summon your summoned beast as well? It's not easy to find the right summoned beast. Kakuzu shook his head unhurriedly and said in a deep voice, How can we be in a hurry to make money? After we seal this by Jiyu, we still need to rest for another day before continuing our operation. Ha ha ha. Diodera couldn't help but burst out laughing. Shut up. Sasori couldn't help but rub his forehead. There was really nothing he could do with his teammates, 
whether it was capturing Sanbai or destroying Kirigakur, it was all done by Uehara and Suzuke. The two of us only went on a trip. Diodera's smile immediately froze on his face. This time, he really didn't do anything. No wonder he felt very relaxed when he came back from the mission. In terms of contribution points, not only was he inferior to Suzuke, he was even inferior to Sasori. After all, Sasori had given Uehara a scroll to seal the Byakugan. In the evening, he had even reminded Uehara to cast Genjutsu on Sanbai. Ha ha ha. Haydn immediately grabbed onto his sore leg and looked at Diodera with ridicule, Seriously, I can't do that. This idiot Kakuzu is not as good as Uehara. Shut up. Kakuzu couldn't help but twitch his forehead. If possible, Kakuzu really wanted to change teammates. Unfortunately, the other members of Akatsuki's organization basically had an extremely high bounty, and they didn't have any undying bodies. Kakuzu couldn't control his desire to kill his teammates and exchange it for money, so he could only endure Haydn. All right. Tendo Pain frowned and interrupted their dispute. He said softly, this time we are going to seal the two Baijuyu and it will take a lot of time. Because in the organization base they also had Yan Baijin Churiki, it would take a lot of time for Akatsuki's organization to seal the Sanbai Isabu and Yanbai Sun Gaku. Just as the members of Akatsuki's organization sealed Baijuyu, Konan was a little leisurely and confused in Omega Kure. She vaguely felt that something was not quite right. Why does it feel like since her disciple became an official member of Akatsuki, she has integrated into Akatsuki's organization like a fish in water. On the contrary, one of the founders seems to have not carried out any missions for a long time. However, soon, Konan was no longer confused. Because she was directly confused. Ajisai appeared in Konan's office and respectfully said, Konan-sama, Kanaha and Kirigakur have sent letters respectively. Hey? Kirigakur. Konan raised her eyebrows and opened the two letters. The expression on her face became more and more confused, a little suspicious of life. These two letters were actually for Hanzo, mainly to invite him or Uehara to join Kanahagakur, Sunagakur, and Kirigakur's alliance. The main topic of the meeting was how to deal with Akatsuki, a threat to the ninja world. After all, these two letters were confidential, and to attract the attention of Hanzo, they could not reveal the real plan of Kanaha and Kirigakur to ambush Akatsuki's organization. Konan sat on her desk and fell into a long silence. Last time, when Uehara destroyed Sunagakur and brought Ichibai back, Kanahagakur and Sunagakur sent people to Omegakure to ask for help, hoping that they could help to take back Gara. This time, Uehara destroyed Kirigakur and captured Sanbai. Kanaha and Kirigakur sent people to send letters to invite them to participate in the alliance talks that targeted Akatsuki's organization. To be honest, Konan didn't quite understand these things. Am I getting old? Konan picked up the two letters on the table again and read every line of words on it. Finally, her eyes fell on a line of words on Kirigakur's letter. Please be sure to let Naraku-kun attend. Recently, I often miss Naraku-kun's face and can't sleep, and I look forward to seeing Naraku-kun again. The signature was Terumi. This woman has a problem. Konan raised her eyebrows and remembered the last time when Uehara seemed to have met Terumi when he participated in the Country of Grass Alliance talk. What happened to them at that time? Konan's gaze suddenly turned slightly hostile. She rubbed her forehead and said, I remember that this woman Terumi is already 30 years old this year, right? Naraku is only 20 years old this year. However, she definitely wouldn't be able to figure it out when she was just sitting inside a Megakure. Therefore, after the people from Akatsuki's organization sealed by Juyu, Konan used astral projection jutsu to appear in Akatsuki's base. She looked at her disciple and said, Uehara, Kirigakur and Kanahagakur have sent a letter to invite you to join the alliance talk. After sealing the two by Juyu, all the members of Akatsuki's organization felt a little weak. However, after hearing Konan's words, everyone had a hint of spirit. Was there something wrong with the ninja world? Didn't Uehara just destroy Kirigakur? Then Kirigakur invited him to participate in the alliance talks? What kind of immortal spy was this? Uehara rubbed his forehead and asked softly, Sensei, did they mention the purpose of the meeting? Yes. Konan slowly opened her mouth and said, How to deal with the threat of Akatsuki to the ninja world, which is the threat of our organization to the ninja world. Everyone in Akatsuki's organization looked at each other. Their expressions were subtle and they were even a little speechless. 
Let Uehara participate in a talk on how to respond to Akatsuki's threat to the ninja world? Deodara and Hayden burst into tears on the spot. How could they deal with this? You have already pulled the core members of Akatsuki's organization and the future leader of the organization to participate in the meeting. What else can you do? How do you want to respond? All right, I got it. Uehara turned over and stood up. He had a rather awkward aura and said softly, If the time is urgent, I will rush over right now. There's no hurry. Konan shook his head. He looked at Uehara and said, Go back to the village and look for me first. I have other things to ask you. Chapter 232 This is the perfect ninja I have carefully raised. Omega Kure. Konan sat quietly in Uehara's room. Ever since Uehara grew up and was able to independently deal with tasks and manage the village, Konan had not been troubled for a long time. Today, she was a little restless. A palm suddenly landed on Conan's shoulder and a familiar voice entered Conan's ears, Sensei, did something happen? Hey? Nariku. The irritable origami on Conan's body was taken back. She frowned and said, when did you come back? Just now. Uehara squatted down slightly and looked at the vase at the bedside table in his room. There was a new bunch of paper flowers in it. He could not help but chuckle, Sensei, have you folded a new flower? Well. Is this morning glory? Finally, there is a flower that I know. It was not easy for Uehara to recognize the paper flower that Conan folded. Because Conan liked to use white paper to fold all kinds of strange flowers, Uehara was rarely able to call out their names. Morning glory was a wild flower that was relatively easy to recognize. Conan glanced at the paper flowers in the vase and then glanced at Uehara. After hesitating for a while, her face gradually became cold and serious, yes it is the morning glory flower. Its flower language is an illusory and short love. Interesting. Uehara fiddled with the paper flowers and turned his head, Sensei asked me to come back. Is there something you want to tell me in private? Yes. Konan stared at Uehara's face. When she saw that her disciple was confused, she asked, Do you, think that Kirigakura's Terumi is beautiful? Konan was a little nervous. She was a little nervous that Uehara would directly announce what had happened between him and Terumi, so she wanted to test it out first. Yes, she is quite beautiful. Uehara nodded. This sentence could not be refuted. After all, he really saw Terumi's full appearance. Those green eyes were very moving. Uehara couldn't help but chuckle, if it's just looking at Terumi's appearance, she doesn't look like a woman in her thirties at all. Konan's face darkened. She couldn't help but think of her own age. She was already 35 years old this year. Did this disciple of her think that she was old? After Uehara finished speaking, he immediately remembered that there was a woman in her 30s beside him. He hurriedly said, Sensei also looks very young. Just like when we first met, there was no change. Konan did not continue this topic. Konan did not forget the important matter. She took advantage of the moment when Uehara said the wrong thing to apologize and immediately asked, Did something happen between you and Terumi? Did the two of you have any contact when you were in the country of grass? Uh. Uehara thought for a while and whispered, I don't think so. After all, we only talked about Akatsuki in private. I used that opportunity to make Terumi think that I am Kirigakura's friend. Is that so? Konan's frown eased a little. She took out a letter and handed it to Uehara. This is her letter. This woman seems to like you, but I think the two of you are destined to become enemies in the future. She is ten years older than you. Um. Uehara looked at the letter and nodded indifferently. He unconsciously responded, Don't worry Sensei. I won't fall in love with any woman. That's good. After letting out a sigh of relief, Konan felt that something was wrong. He hurriedly tried to persuade her, Naraku, you can't. What we hope for is for you to live a happy life in the future instead of living alone. I'm only 20 years old this year. Uehara helplessly glanced at Konan and continued to look down at Terumi's letter. After refuting him, he directly changed the topic, no wonder Konan sensei misunderstood. Terumi-san probably wants to get some information about Akatsuki from me. If Terumi urgently invites me to attend the meeting, it will make her feel that she is not very respectful to Hanzo so she deliberately said this to reduce her dislike. After that, Uehara smiled and added, even if she really likes me, I can't be with her. Yesterday, when I destroyed Kirigakur, I almost killed her. 
Conan looked at Uehara, a little speechless. After a long time, Conan asked curiously, why don't they suspect that something has happened to Hanzo? After all, so many years have passed, and Hanzo has never appeared in the ninja world. I'm not too sure either. Uehara shook his head and guessed, maybe it's because they think that ninja demigods are not so easy to be killed. And I always mention Hanzo's name from time to time, saying that he is still alive and that his strength has not declined. The ninja world had not discovered Hanzo's death for so many years, so they should really throw the blame on Uehara. In fact, it was not impossible for people to guess that Hanzo was too old to move or was already dead, but Uehara always used Hanzo to show his presence in front of the people of the ninja world. If a talented and powerful genius ninja would always show respect whenever he mentioned Hanzo, there would never be any surprises. Moreover, every time they met, he would use Hanzo's name, and from time to time, he would show his sense of existence. Who would suspect that Hanzo was already dead? Who would have thought that the murderer who killed Hanzo would always calmly express his respect for Hanzo? Time is actually still very tight. After reading Terumi's letter, Uehara knocked on his arm and said, there will be a conference in a week. The location of this conference is in Kanaha. It seems that it is necessary to participate in the conference and see if they have any conspiracy. A member of Akatsuki participated in the conference hosted by the ninja village of the great country to deal with Akatsuki and listen to what these big countries wanted to do with the organization of Akatsuki. It's really. It was ridiculous. Conan's expression was a little serious as she said, but it will be very dangerous for you. Perhaps we can give up on this meeting. Anyway, there are only five Baijuyu left. No, it will be dangerous if we don't go. Uehara shook his head and said softly, when I was advertising outside, I mentioned that Omega Kure always advocated attacking Akatsuki's organization. If we were absent, it would definitely arouse their suspicions. Naraku, I am more and more worried about you. Konan stretched out his palm and habitually helped Uehara tidy up his clothes. Her voice gradually became gentle, ever since you became an official member of Akatsuki, you have been carrying out extremely dangerous tasks in the organization. I regret agreeing to you back then. Sensei. Uehara looked down at Konan and reached out his palm to stroke her hair. He said softly, Konan sensei, Nagato-sama, and Yahiko-sama, as well as my father's dream, I cannot be absent. It's different. There's nothing different about it. Uehara grabbed Konan's neck and asked her to raise her head, but he slowly lowered his head and gently pressed his forehead against hers. Uehara smiled and said, What Konan sensei want is what I want. I am your disciple and what I inherit now is your will. We will not fail. Believe me, Sensei. Konan widened her eyes and looked at Uehara who was right in front of him. A moment later, Konan gently closed her eyes and slowly stretched out her palm to hold the back of Uehara's neck, making their foreheads even tighter. This disciple was brought up by her alone. This disciple had devoted eight years of her effort. This disciple was one of the most important people to her, and also the support of her feelings. Konan smelled the scent on Uehara, and her voice was so low that it was almost imperceptible, actually, you can like people who are older than you. Uehara looked at Konan's eye and hesitantly said, actually, the cosmetics used by our Akatsuki members are a little strong. The two of them almost spoke in unison. However, Uehara's voice was a little louder, and what he said was not pleasant to hear. It was obvious that he disliked Konan's makeup today. Konan's face gradually darkened. She slowly loosened the back of Uehara's neck, took a few steps back, and said coldly, You don't like things like nail polish, but it doesn't mean that others don't like it. Kakuzu, Itachi, Kisame, Haiden, they all like it very much. Yes, yes, yes. Uehara nodded, feeling a little tired. In fact, men like them definitely did not like it at all. They just saw that the people who joined Akatsuki in the front were all coated with nail polish. They were all qualified ninjas. They would not cause a dispute with the organization over such a small matter. All right, let's not talk about this anymore. Uehara tactfully changed the topic and whispered, I'll go look for Nagato-sama first and discuss with him. Before this meeting, we can use Kakuzu senpai to do things. Akatsuki also needs to have a unified statement to prevent me from encountering any trouble in this alliance meeting. Okay. Konan nodded hurriedly. After Uehara left, Konan breathed a sigh of relief. She slowly reached out her palm towards the morning glory flower in the vase. 
the bunch of paper flowers instantly turned into a piece of white paper and fell into Conan's hand. After frowning, Conan suddenly turned the bouquet of roses into a bunch of confetti. The bunch of confetti danced in her palm and finally turned into a bunch of dog's tail grass. Conan slowly inserted the bunch of grass into the vase. The expression on her face became cold again, and her voice was a little low, this is the most perfect ninja I raised carefully. Chapter 233, Itachi-san, We Are Lucky Amegakur's Tower Just after sealing the two by Jiyu, Nagato's face was also full of fatigue. Uehara waved his hand at him to use astral infusion which slightly restored him. Nagato frowned and whispered, Uehara, you have worked hard today. Don't waste your chakra. It's okay. Uehara sat at the table and began to talk about serious matters, I will participate in Kanaha's alliance talks. Before that, we might be able to make some special arrangements. Nagato knocked on the chair with his finger. After thinking for a while, he whispered, Uehara, do you have any ideas? Let me first talk about the information collected from the five great countries ninja village. Uehara frowned and said in a deep voice, First of all, the mastermind behind Akatsuki's organization is Obito, who is instructing Akatsuki to act. In a sense, Nagato seemed to have thought of something unhappy and whispered, It was indeed Obito who guided us to do things before. It's the same now. Uehara spread out his palm and said in a low voice, When I talk about the leader behind Akatsuki in the outside world, I always inevitably mention Obito. The eyes of the five great countries are on him. Those people probably think that as long as they kill Obito, the entire Akatsuki organization will collapse. Nagato was a little confused. There was actually such a thing? Nagato looked at Uehara. There was a faint doubt on his face, do those people trust you so much? Uehara shook his head and nodded again. He continued softly, this incident is a bit long to talk about. It dates back to eight years ago when I was assassinated by Obito. At that time, I was discovered by Kakashi when I tried to recruit Kisame, and his identity was exposed by Kakashi. Which caused the Kirigakura and Akatsuki organizations to be inseparable. This could easily arouse the enemy's suspicion. At that time, Kakashi kept asking about my information. After being helpless, I could only tell him a part of the truth. Later on, the whole truth became what it was now. Amegakura's leader, Hanzo, was lured by Obito, who had concealed his name, to recruit all the ninjas under his command to form a mercenary organization and accumulate his own strength. Later, Obito betrayed Hanzo for his own ambition and recruited the rebels in the mercenary organization to become independent. They formed an organization called Akatsuki, who participated in wars everywhere in the ninja world and even began to capture Baijiu. On the other hand, Hanzo, who had been betrayed, was very angry. After many years of hard work turned to nothing. Thus, the AIM ninjas led by Hanzo and the Akatsuki organization led by Obito were fighting everywhere. The AIM ninjas were also searching everywhere for Akatsuki's members. In their opinion, our Omegakure ninjas and the so-called Omegakure leader Hanzo should be the people who hate the Akatsuki organization the most. After Uehara finished speaking, he rubbed his forehead and said softly, I don't know why it became like this either. In short, the situation with Omegakure and Akatsuki is almost like this. I am always worried that there will be flaws. In fact, there were many things hidden in Uehara's words. For example, how many black pots did Hanzo take for the current Omegakure, and how many black pots did Obito take for Akatsuki's organization, Uehara probably couldn't even count it himself. Since he couldn't count, then there was no need to mention it. Not to mention the fact that Uehara didn't mention it, just a rough description of what happened made Nagato completely stunned. There was actually such an operation? It had to be said that this matter was extremely beneficial to both Akatsuki and Omegakure. It could allow them to act more discreetly and prevent Omegakure from being implicated. However, this sort of thing had to be handled with care. This was also thanks to Omegakure sealing off the outside world. If one day someone sneaked in and got a little bit of information about Omegakure, they would probably be dumbfounded on the spot. Nagato made a decision on the spot and said in a deep voice, In the future, Tendo Pain will stay in Omegakure and cover the entire village with Yukajize no Jutsu, Rain Tiger at will technique, for a long time to prevent anyone from sneaking in and destroying the situation that is extremely beneficial to us. Uehara couldn't help but think of the only ninja who sneaked into Omegakure. It was Jiraiya, one of Kanaha Sunan, and also Konan and Nagato's sensei. Uehara sighed in his heart. 
If Conan and Nagato killed Jiraiya again, wouldn't they regret it again? After all, the plan that Conan and Nagato were carrying out was all fake. The real Eye of the Moon plan, in fact, only Black Zetsu, Uehara, Kisame, and Kabuto knew. It seemed that he had to think of a way to save them. However, according to the current situation, Jiraiya might not sneak in. After all, Uehara could make up a copy of the information they wanted for them. Moreover, if Jiraiya sneaked in and was discovered, it would cause a dispute between Kanahagakure and Omegakure, and it will be detrimental to the overall situation of the ninja world to fight Akatsuki together. As for Akatsuki, this is more troublesome. Nagato frowned and thought of the group of people who were not disciplined, well, how about this? If you want the members of the organization to cooperate with you, use astral projection jutsu to order them directly, or tell me, and I will give the order. Okay. Uehara tapped his finger and said in a low voice, I'll go change into a normal ninja uniform and prepare to participate in the Alliance talk. As for what we need to cooperate with, I can directly tell Kakuzu Senpai. Our relationship is not bad. Okay. Nagato smiled and nodded. Uehara continued to add, By the way, the last thing, for the Gobijin Churiki, waits for me to come back before catching him. In case we reveal any flaws. After all, to capture Gobijin Churiki they needed to attack Uegakur, and Uehara needed to use the excuse of capturing Gobijin Churiki to destroy Uegakur to obtain the Earth power. Okay. Nagato continued to nod. After he finished speaking, Uehara left the tall tower. Nagato looked at Uehara's back thoughtfully. A moment later, he summoned Tendo Pain and talked to his puppet, actually, we can already give Omegakure and Akatsuki to him, right? Even Uehara's treatment was just a drop in the bucket. After all, the one who extracted his strength behind his back was a colossus like Gedo Mazo. Nagato was very clear that it was impossible for his lifespan to last for too long. Even if the chakra Uehara instilled into him was enormous, it was only a delay in the end. Even if he could delay, how many years could he delay? According to Nagato's judgment, it could be considered very lucky for him to be able to delay until Uehara was 30 years old. Is this pair of eyes, Sage's eyes, or Sage's curse? Nagato subconsciously stroked his eyes and slowly lowered his head, at least let Uehara enjoy the peaceful world created by these eyes. Uehara stood outside the door. His palm, which wanted to push the door open, stopped. He actually had one more thing to say, but now he didn't want to go in. Forget it. Anyway, he had already arranged it for Nagato. The current Nagato was still thinking about how to feel touched. After Uehara packed up his things and slowly left Omegakure. This meeting might be his last time going to Kanaha. If there was a next chance, it meant that he might have mixed into the ninja alliance of the fourth ninja war. Tisk, would there be a chance? When Uehara entered Country of Fire. Something big happened in the Country of Fire that alarmed Kanaha. The entire fire temple turned into ruins. The monk Chiriko who presided over the fire temple was killed by two guys from Akatsuki's organization, and his body was taken away. Yes, Kakuzu and Haydn made their move. After sealing Sanbai and Yanbai, Kakuzu could not hold back his desire for money. Relying on his undying body, he dragged Haydn to fire temple to kill Chiriku. Even if Chiriku thought that he was strong, he could not defeat Haydn who had opened the evil god ritual and was killed on the spot. In Kanaha village. After Tsunade received the news, she announced on the spot that she wanted to capture the two members of Akatsuki's organization and sent out a total of 20 ninja teams. If they could capture these two members of Akatsuki's organization, then they would be able to gain more political advantages in the upcoming alliance talks against Akatsuki. This was the fifth Hokage consideration. Unfortunately, Tsunade did not expect that the members of Akatsuki's organization that were active in Country of Fire were not only Kakuzu and Haydn. Country of Fire, the bounty station near Fire Temple. This bounty station was located in a toilet. Kakuzu was still carefully counting the money inside. After all, money was not a small matter. He had to clearly count it. Haydn could not bear the stench and cursed out. Kakuzu thought that Haydn had no fate with money. But this time, Kakuzu guessed wrong. Haydn and money were still fated. Just as Haydn was waiting for Kakuzu outside the bounty station, a Kanaha Jonin named Asuma appeared in front of him with his team. Asuma happened to be one of the ninjas on Kakuzu's kill list and was also five million more than the corpse of Chiriku. It could be said to be a large sum of money in the world. Asuma did not know his own crisis. 
he appeared in front of Haydn with two chakra blades in his hands and coldly said, Shikamaru, Izumo, Katetsu, it seems that our luck is good, we directly found the murderer of Chiriku. No, Asuma-sensei. Shikamaru shook his head and turned to look at the other figure. He said with an ugly expression, our luck doesn't seem to be very good. In the direction Shikamaru was looking at, four figures wearing black robes came out. According to Kanaha's intelligence, apart from attacking five great country ninja village, Akatsuki usually sent two people in a group. The information they received was the same. After all, the monk from Fire Temple had only seen Kakuzu and Haydn. Originally, Shikamaru thought that the four of them had surrounded a member of Akatsuki. When they first dealt with one before ambushing the other, four members of Akatsuki's organization appeared and surrounded them. The leader, Kisame, grinned and said with a chuckle, Itachi-san, it seems that our luck is good. We can directly help Kakuzu-senpai catch the big fish he wants. Chapter 234, Uchiha Itachi, this is the last time you would appear in the country of fire. Hey, why are you here at this time? Haydn looked at Kisame and the others unhappily. He grabbed his scythe and turned to look at Asuma and the others. He said coldly, Humph, I just wanted to kill them and sacrifice them to Jashin-sama. Go ahead. Kisame politely extended his palm and chuckled, We won't interfere with your battle. We just need to ensure that Kakuza Senpai's 35 million bounties won't escape. They were chatting very happily here. While the Kanaha ninjas were sweating profusely, especially the young man, Shikamaru. He met Akatsuki members as soon as he left for the mission. Even though this was the most dangerous time, Shikamaru didn't forget to carefully survey the people present, Uchiha Itachi, the murderer who destroyed Uchiha's clan, Kanaha's S-class traitor, Hashigaki Kisame, Hojiki Mangetsu, Aimei Ringo, this woman also betrayed Kirigakur? The three former seven ninja swordsmen of Kirigakur. To be honest, he was really a little scared. Asuma's expression was also very ugly, because he had fought with Itachi and Kisame, and with the support of Kakashi, Kurane, and Gai, he barely forced Itachi and Kisame back. Even so, at that time, Kakashi paid a heavy price. Looking at the surroundings now, Asuma's face had a faint sense of despair. He even felt that he could not breathe. He did not have the three Jonin ninja friends from before. Now, he only had three Chunin ninja teammates by his side. What about the other side? Kisame, Itachi, Ringo, Mangetsu, Haydn, and Kakuzu, who had just walked out of the bounty station with the money box. Six members of the Akatsuki organization. This team was enough to attack a great country ninja village, and the only ninja village in the country of fire was Kanaha. Was the goal of this team to attack Kanaha? Asuma looked at the surrounding environment, looked at his disciple Shikamaru, and gritted his teeth, No, we have to send the information out so that the people in the village will be alert. There are six members of Akatsuki who are active in Country of Fire. The biggest problem now was how to send the information out. Six Akatsuki members, even an information bird would not give them a chance to fly. Kakuzu looked at his companions, stretched out his finger, and pointed at Asuma, and said, Who wants to do it? Hurry up and deal with this group of guys. Just let me take that guy's corpse to exchange for money. Of course it's me. Haydn shouted in dissatisfaction, drawing a strange symbol on his own, holding his church instrument in his hand, and shouted, Can't you see that I'm conducting a church ritual? This is a sacrifice to Jashin-sama. We can't be careless. A group of people just stood there, watching Haydn draw circles and preparing to curse people. The members of Akatsuki's organization were too lazy to move, and the ninjas of Kanaha did not dare to move. This formed a strange balance. However, Asuma saw this opportunity and said in a deep voice, Shikamaru, Izumo, Katetsu, I will cover you to leave this place. You must send the information to the village. Kanaha might face the attack of Akatsuki. No, Asuma-sensei. Shikamaru quickly shook his head and whispered, The probability of me escaping is very low. You are the strongest, we will cover you. That's right. The other two Kanaha ninjas also agree. The two of them were already prepared to sacrifice themselves. The two of them had always been Chunin ninja of the village. Basically, apart from guarding the entrance of the village, it was impossible for them to play a big role. Whether it was Asuma or Shikamaru, they would be able to play a bigger role for Kanaha in the future. T was a fluke that one of them escaped, and the one with the highest chance of escaping was undoubtedly Asuma. Your strength is not enough. 
you can't hold on for too long. Asuma shook his head and persuaded in a low voice, they want my body now. So they will definitely not let me go. But. There aren't so many buts. Asuma whispered to Nara Shikamaru, Shikamaru, I already have a child. My road is here, but your future is promising. This. A hint of surprise appeared on Shikamaru's face. Why hadn't he heard of this? Why hadn't he seen Asuma's child? In the next moment, Shikamaru immediately reacted and whispered, It seems that we have never noticed it. Is Kurane-sensei pregnant? He works fast. And the secrecy was also too good. As Asuma students, they actually never knew about this news. Asuma's eyes revealed a hint of relief. He calmly nodded and after entrusting his unborn child to his student, he no longer had any worries and could risk his life. Asuma clenched the chakra blade in his hand, and two sharp blades composed of wind chakra appeared on the blade, fiercely attacking towards Kisame who was closest to him. His goal was only to open a gap for Shikamaru. Go! Asuma shouted. Shikamaru, Izumo, and Kitetsu gritted their teeth and escaped towards the gap that Asuma had opened. However, the strange thing was that this group of Akatsuki members did not choose to pursue them. Instead, they were leisurely watching Asuma's desperate actions. As for the member who fought with Asuma, it just so happened that he was Asuma's former opponent, Kisame. After Shikamaru escaped, he looked back and found that the members of Akatsuki's organization did not chase after him. A glimmer of hope suddenly flashed in his eyes. Obviously, he also hoped that his sensei would be able to escape. Indeed. Asuma also flashed a glimmer of hope. His girlfriend, Kurane, was already pregnant. Of course, he also wanted to break through the encirclement and return to the village. Unfortunately, Kisame's words dispelled Asuma's impulse. Kisame's fierce face revealed an evil smile. He calmly waved his same hat and said with a smile, If you dare to escape, we will capture those people who escaped and kill them in front of you. At this moment, Kisame was like a demon. This was probably the after-effect of Kisame becoming Uehara's subordinates. He always liked to use this kind of feeling to force the ninjas to surrender or die. However, this kind of threat was very effective. At least until Shikamaru and the others were sure to escape to a safe zone, Asuma absolutely did not dare to escape. This time would take at least five minutes. If the other members of Akatsuki also stood where they were and did not attack, Asuma only needed to ensure that he could last for five minutes and ensure that he would not suffer too many injuries. This did not seem to be a problem for him. Unfortunately, the development of things was often not as good as people wished. After Haydn drew a circle for the sacrifice, he saw Kisame and Asuma fighting together. He instantly became angry, Hey, Kisame, didn't you say that this guy was for me to deal with? Stop or I will kill you too. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't worry, I won't let your ceremony go to waste. Kisame suddenly waved the same hata in his hand and slashed at Asuma's shoulder. The sharp thorns on the same hata instantly expanded, and the sharp thorns instantly pierced Asuma's shoulder. Kisame swung his hand and threw the blood on the same hata onto Haydn's body. He chuckled and said, Then, I will leave the rest to you. After doing all this, Kisame looked at Asuma and said with a smile, All right, you can escape now. We won't kill you. Please believe in our Akatsuki's reputation. What's going on? Asuma's face became more and more solemn. He still didn't understand what was going on, but in order to be cautious, he decided to stay here and observe for a while. After all, five minutes was not a particularly long time. Moreover, he could escape at any time in his current position. Run, run as much as you want. Haydn stroked Asuma's blood, and a terrifying smile appeared on his face. A white line appeared from his face and body that turned black. He looked at the somewhat bewildered Asuma and said, The ceremony is ready. Are you ready? This is. Asuma looked at Haydn in bewilderment. To be honest, other than the fact that Haydn's body was a little scary, there was nothing special about him. Was he also a member of Akatsuki's organization? He did not quite understand what was going on. However, Asuma quickly understood. Because Haydn suddenly pulled out a retractable spear and stabbed it into his shoulder. At the same time, a stream of blood immediately spurted out from Asuma's shoulder. When he is injured, my body will also be injured. Asuma's expression changed greatly. He looked at the wound on his shoulder in disbelief, and then looked at Haydn, who had an evil smile on his face. He seemed to want to confirm it. Sure enough. The next moment, 
Haydn stabbed his thigh. Asuma's leg was also wounded. This was the horror of the sacrificial ritual. As long as one drew the enemy's blood, they could harm the enemy in a fixed position. Coincidentally, Haydn was a Jashin believer who would not die no matter how many injuries he suffered, but the others did not have his terrifying physique. Asuma painfully covered his wound and looked at Haydn who was happily pulling out his retractable spear, no wonder Kisame was not worried that I would escape. It turned out that I could not escape. Is that guy not afraid of pain? He 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 he. Of course, I am not afraid of pain. Just as a group of people watching Haydn doing a sacrificial ritual, Ringo, who had the most violent temper, was a little impatient. She pulled out her ninja blade and stabbed it into Haydn's chest, he's so worn out and doesn't look like a man at all. Haydn immediately fell to the ground and cursed Ringo, you bastard woman, your ninja knife is very painful. Even though Haydn was injured to death, he was still fine. Asuma was different. He slowly covered his chest and fell on his back. Kakuzu nodded with satisfaction. He took Asuma's body and went into exchange for a reward of 35 million. Kisame glanced at the bounty station in front of him and whispered, Go and steal the corpses of Chiriku and Asuma. This sentence was said to Obito. No one knew that there was another person who had been hiding underground. Obito, who was hiding underground, revealed a hint of resentment on his face. However, his body still obediently entered the bounty exchange room. After finding the corpses of Asuma and Chiriku, he quietly put them away. On the other side, Uehara, who had just stepped into Country of Fire, was asked to wait at the border for the time being. In a while, they would send someone to escort Uehara to Kanaha. Uehara could not help but look at the border sentries and shake his head. He had just received the news of Asuma's death from Obito's consciousness. These guys are too fast. Uehara shook his head and sighed. He quietly controlled Obito and transmitted his orders to him, tell Kisame to tell Itachi that this is the last time he would appear in Country of Fire before the duel between him and Suzuki. Make sure he sees Naruto. You must monitor Itachi's every move. Only in this way would he be able to draw out Kota Amatsukami's Mangekyo Sharingan, which was hidden by Itachi, and completely eliminate the threat. Chapter 235, We Won't Be Defeated As Long As We Have Hanzo-sama the country of fire's situation was very tense. Uehara waited at the border for a long time. He did not have any anxiety. After all, the current situation was caused by him. One by one, carrier pigeons flew around, and the frequency of communication was very frequent. Finally, someone came to the border to welcome Uehara. It was still an old acquaintance of his. Yes, it was still Team 7 of Kanaha. Team 7, who was led by Kakashi, was ordered to go and assist in the encirclement of the Akatsuki organization. However, they learned from Shikamaru that the Akatsuki organization had sent six members. In order to avoid innocent losses, Tsunade had to shrink her defense, and all the teams were withdrawn to the surroundings of Kanaha to avoid being attacked by Akatsuki. Team 7 was inevitably a little worried. When Kakashi learned that Uehara had rushed to the border of Country of Fire, he went along the way to meet Uehara and returned to Kanaha with Uehara. After all, with Uehara as strong support, it was a powerful force for them. They could support each other to return to Kanaha. Uehara, you came too coincidentally. Kakashi's face did not look good. He looked at the surrounding sentries and whispered, Country of Fire has been infiltrated by six of Akatsuki's members. Asuma was killed in battle, and even his body was stolen. Kakashi still trusted Uehara. No, in the case of Akatsuki, Kakashi still trusted Omega Kure very much. After all, Uehara was the first ninja to target Akatsuki. Omega Kure was also the first village to start a war with Akatsuki. Six members. Uehara was very worthy of Kakashi's trust. His face suddenly changed, and his eyes widened. He suppressed his voice and said, Kakashi, do you know what it means for Akatsuki to send out six members? You still dare to show up here with Naruto. I understand. Kakashi nodded and looked at Uehara but it is not safe for us to retreat alone, so I came to welcome you and let you accompany us to Kanaha. I don't think this is a suitable move. Uehara shook his head and said with an extremely ugly expression, Akatsuki's organization is usually a two-person team, so as to reduce the rebels' dissatisfaction and internal fighting. They dispatched six members, which is equivalent to three groups. This means that there must be a powerful person among them who can make all members acknowledge his orders and give up the indifference between them. After all, 
the persona that Uehara portrait was a Megakure ninja who knew Akatsuki's organization very well and had a grudge against Akatsuki's organization. He did not mind saying some useless words. I understand. Kakashi pulled at his mask and said in a low voice, however, we have already received information from those six Akatsuki. There is no guy in a hat we saw last time. The most troublesome person might be Itachi. Should I praise you? Uehara glared at Kakashi, then looked at Sai, Naruto and Sakura who were following behind them. He whispered, if there are no members wearing a hat, I suspect that the person who will command them this time is very likely to be Obito. Kakashi, who wanted to pull the mask, stopped. His face became even uglier than before, can this information be confirmed? Of course not. Uehara looked at Kakashi as if he was looking at an idiot and said, I am just a little ninja of Omega Kure. How can I guess the thoughts of Akatsuki and those monsters? Kakashi looked at Uehara speechlessly. When this guy attacked, the people of Akatsuki's organization attached great importance to him, and he still had the nerve to say that he was a little ninja. Uehara rubbed his temples and explained softly, when Akatsuki fights with us, Omega Kure, he usually sends at least four members. Perhaps they are worried about being killed by Hanzo-sama. I remember that when Akatsuki's organization took the initiative to fight against Hanzo-sama, they would usually dispatch more than six members. Akatsuki's leader would usually command them from behind the scenes, and even when necessary, he might personally come out to fight. After Uehara finished speaking, a disdainful smile appeared on his face, he he, those naive fellows actually think that they can fight against Hanzo-sama just because they have the advantage of numbers. Who do they think they are? When Uehara said this, a hint of fanaticism appeared on his face, Akatsuki and those guys are just a few S-rank rebels yet they want to challenge the undefeated myth of the ninja demigod. Kakashi could not help but turn to look at Uehara's expression. He sighed faintly and said, if only the person who Omega Kure sent here to participate in the alliance talk is not you, but rather the ninja demigod Hanzo-sama. This was Kakashi's heartfelt words. It should be said that Omegakura's leader was worthy of being called the legendary ninja demigod. He was only below the ninja god Hashirama. Facing the six members of Akatsuki and Obito's attack, he could actually fight without any pressure. Moreover, among the six members of Akatsuki's organization, three of them were the former seven ninja swordsmen of Kiri who was skilled in water ninjutsu and kenjutsu. To be honest, these people could be easily defeated by Hanzo. This was because Hanzo was also very good at water ninjutsu and kenjutsu. His strength was definitely enough to crush a few seven ninja swordsmen. You don't have to dislike me so much. Uehara looked at Kakashi, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. He shook his head and explained softly, besides, with the enmity between Omega Kure and Akatsuki, if the news of him leaving the village was known, the village would definitely be attacked by Akatsuki. I know. Kakashi nodded and sighed, in fact, if we gather all the people who can fight with Akatsuki and have a suitable opportunity, we will definitely be able to destroy Akatsuki. Uehara looked at Kakashi speechlessly. What the hell do you know? Of course, Uehara would not agree to this kind of thing. After all, Hanzo's bones had already been melted. Where could he find a salamander and a Hanzo? Even impure world reincarnation was not reliable. After all, over the years, Uehara had boasted too much about the power of Hanzo. In the face of Akatsuki's group of S-class ninjas, Hanzo easily fought four, one against six, one against seven, looking like a ninja god who was invincible. If Tsunade and Jiraiya found out that this old man was not as strong as them, wouldn't it reveal a flaw? Don't think too much. Uehara patted Kakashi on the shoulder and sighed softly, Hanzo-sama has been cautious all his life and is deeply troubled by the war in the ninja world. He can ignore the past and send me to give you information and support. You should thank him for his generosity. Kakashi. This seemed to make sense. However, Kanaha doesn't want to cooperate with you. Otherwise, just based on the fact that Uehara tried to assassinate Third Hokage, how could Kanaha let him go so easily? Even if they let Uehara go at that time, they would secretly assassinate him. Unfortunately, Kanaha had let go of this thought. Now, facing the threat of Akatsuki's organization was the most important thing in the world. While Uehara and Kakashi have a good chat. He turned to look at Naruto, Naruto, how have you been? Um. Naruto nodded enthusiastically. Holding his arm, he answered seriously, Uehara, I just developed a very, very powerful jutsu recently. I won't hold you back in the next battle. Yes, 
Naruto felt that his strength was insufficient. Therefore, after coming back from Sunagakur, Naruto worked hard for training and finally developed Futon, Rasen Shuriken, Wind Release, Rasen Shuriken. Unfortunately, this jutsu was not perfect now, and it would also hurt his own body. Pa! Uehara suddenly stretched out his palm and grabbed Naruto's arm, which made Sai and Sakura, who was next to him, immediately become vigilant. Uehara looked at Sai and Sakura speechlessly and pointed to the bandage on Naruto's arm, I was just looking at Naruto's injury. I... I'm sorry, Uehara-senpai. Sakura hurriedly lowered her head and apologized. Kakashi also looked at the bandage on Naruto's hand. He pulled his ninja forward protector and said, Do you have any ways? Tisk, the old way. The life energy in Uehara's body entered Naruto's body. He said softly, According to my observation, there are even signs of necrosis on the surface of the skin. The cells inside should have been directly destroyed. I can only provide him with life energy to try it out. Who caused this injury? It is a bit too ruthless. Uh. Naruto was stunned for a moment. After a moment, he replied awkwardly, This was caused by my jutsu. Ha 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 ha, because that jutsu has not been perfected yet. Then you have to be careful. Uehara shook his head and sighed, If you get injured again, sooner or later, your cells will be destroyed, and you might not even be able to extract chakra one day. Sakura nodded in a hurry and said with a face full of expectation, Tsunade sama also judged Naruto's injury. Does Uehara senpai have any good ways? There is no good way. I can only prevent the injuries. Uehara shook his head and sighed softly, I can temporarily use my unique medical ninjutsu to inject life energy into him. This way, I can increase the strength and lifespan of his cells. So his cells can split multiple times, but what about after I leave Kanaha? Naruto shook his head and said in a deep voice, I'm sorry, Uehara. I can't stop because Suzuki is still waiting for me to bring him back. The others couldn't help but lower their heads. Uehara looked at the determined Naruto and whispered, I admire your thoughts, but I have to remind you that Suzuki may have changed. He has now joined the evil Akatsuki. I will bring him back. Naruto was still determined and unmoved. He even revealed a smile, moreover, Suzuki is not a cruel guy. I believe he will definitely come back. Uehara frowned, in order to bring him back, aren't you worried that you won't be able to continue being a ninja and never have the chance to become Hokage again? If I can't bring my companions back to the village. Naruto clenched his fists and shouted, then, what's the point of becoming Hokage? Good luck. Uehara patted Naruto on the shoulder. Ah, don't dream, Suzuki will not come back. He, Uehara, the mastermind behind the scenes, has arranged a new road for Suzuki. Suzuki will only hate Kanaha more. Moreover, he would only continue to hate it. Chapter 236, Eliminating Akatsuki is my purpose in coming to Kanaha. When Uehara followed Team 7 into Kanaha, the village was surrounded by scouts, patrolling the surrounding area of several kilometers. This was because, in recent times, Akatsuki's organization had destroyed two big country great ninja villages in succession, causing the atmosphere in Kanaha to suddenly become tense. They were afraid that Akatsuki would directly break into the surroundings of Kanaha, and even Uehara saw the anti-air weapons set up on the walls of Kanaha. Kirigakura and Tsunagakura were taught a deep lesson by the ancient dragon's surprise attack, and Kanaha was prepared in advance to avoid being caught unprepared. Uehara looked at the strange defensive weapons and could not help but praise, Kanaha's defense against Akatsuki's invasion is perfect. After all, Akatsuki has already destroyed two big country great ninja village. Kakashi followed his gaze and sighed softly, right now, barrier team is on duty 24 hours a day in the village. Any fluctuation that enters the village will be transmitted to Hokage building within 10 seconds. Truly amazing. Uehara nodded, not stinting to his praise, just in this aspect, Kanaha is much stronger than us, Omega Kure. As expected of the strongest ninja village in the world. Um, this information will be sent back later. As a member of an evil organization that would attack Kanaha in the future, it was amazing that they could openly watch the defensive measures of Kanaha. In addition to these defense and vigilance policies, Kanaha did not relax their vigilance in the high-level combat power. Jiraiya, who had been out looking for the Son of Fate, was summoned by Tsunade and rushed back. Guy, Lee, and others who were out on missions were also summoned back to the village, waiting to meet or encircle the Akatsuki organization. 
everyone thought that the decisive battle between Kanaha and Akatsuki was about to begin. The six members of Akatsuki were active in Country of Fire's territory. They can't just kill Chiriku and Asuma in exchange for the reward, right? Inside Hokage building. When Uehara came in, he found that the people who should have come had already arrived. Even the furthest Terumi had arrived early in Kanaha. Moreover, Terumi was wearing a hat that symbolized Mizukich's position. After Akatsuki's organization attacked, this woman inexplicably rose to this position. Because after Kirigakura was attacked, the hearts of the people scattered. The higher UPS in Kirigakura finally gave the position of 5th Mizukage to Terumi. This was also to ensure Terumi's position in this conference. After all, this conference was a real three-cage summit. Sunagakura 5th Kaze Kahe, Gara. Kirigakura 5th Mizukage, Terumi Mei. Kanahagakura 5th Hokage, Senja Tsunade. When Uehara walked in, he was still a little uncomfortable because only he didn't seem to have a position. If he wanted these three cage to shock them directly. He could just put on Akatsuki uniform, put on his own little ring, and reveal his identity as a member of Akatsuki. Now, it felt like he was the subordinate of these three cage. Sure enough, as soon as Uehara entered, Tsunade, who was sitting at the head of the table, frowned and said unhappily, why is it you again? I thought that Hanzo would accept this invitation. Hanzo-sama still has to guard against Akatsuki's attack. Uehara shook his head and casually pulled a chair over to sit down, if you don't welcome me, I can leave now. No, I don't mean that at all. Tsunade shook her head and sighed, I just think that a ninja demigod can play a greater role in our next plan. Actually, Narakudano can do it too. Terumi turned to look at Uehara and winked at him. I'm very happy to see Narakudano at this meeting. Well, I am the same. Gara replied in a neither light nor heavy tone. It was a little awkward for Gara to put on an enthusiastic attitude. After all, Uehara always bullied him in the past, but it was still awkward for Gara to put on an indifferent attitude. After all, Uehara had saved him some time ago. Well, since everyone is here, let me talk about the current situation first. Tsunade leaned against her chair and whispered, Mizukich Dano suggested that we should launch an ambush against Akatsuki and capture more than one or more members of Akatsuki to obtain more information about them. But now, it seems that we have a more suitable opportunity. After Tsunade finished speaking, she turned to look at the Nara father and son standing at the door. She said in a deep voice, more than six Akatsuki members have appeared in Country of Fire. This is something that our village's Chunin ninja Nara Shikamaru saw with his own eyes. He is an outstanding intelligent ninja. Let him introduce the information of those people to you. Yes, Hokage-sama. Shikamaru nodded and stood beside Tsunade with a calm face, about three days ago, two members of Akatsuki's organization, who should be called Kakuzu and Haiden, attacked the Fire Temple and killed Chiriku-sama, the leader of the Fire Temple. After we got the news, we immediately went to capture these two members of Akatsuki, hoping to obtain information about Akatsuki after capturing them. However, when we found their traces, we found that there were not only two people who infiltrated Country of Fire, but six members. When Shikamaru said this, he paused for a bit and continued softly, our team Captain Asuma stay behind in order to cover us. Maybe was tortured then killed. Because the information we received after Kanaha attacked the bounty station confirmed that Captain Asuma's body had been exchanged for a bounty by an Akatsuki member named Kakuzu. The person in charge of the bounty station said that there were many wounds on Asuma's body. Only his face could be recognized. It was done so that it was convenient to confirm the identity of the body to receive the bounty, but we did not find the bodies of Captain Asuma and Chiriku-sama. Shikamaru's fingers trembled a little. He suppressed his emotions and continued, after many times of confirmation, the people who attacked the Fire Temple and killed Captain Asuma were all members of Akatsuki, at least six people. Firstly, Uchiha Itachi, Kanahagakura's S-class trader. Second, Kakuzu, Takigakura's S-class trader. Third, Haiden, Yugakura's murdering demon. Fourth, Hashigaki Kisame, Kirigakura's S-class trader. Fifth, Hojiki Mangetsu, Kirigakura's S-class trader. And six, Aimei Arai Ringo, one of Kirigakura's seven ninja swordsmen. The above report has been completed. After Shikamaru finished speaking, he took a step back, indicating that his mission had been completed, and the next thing to do was for the higher UPS to discuss. Terumi glanced at Uehara but saw that Uehara was also watching. 
Her heart subconsciously jumped, and she took the initiative to explain, Kisame and Mangetsu have defected for a long time. As for Ringo, she was kidnapped or recruited by Mangetsu. I will issue a wanted order about Ringo when I go back. This matter must be clarified first. After the meeting ended, Terumi planned to talk to Uehara again. What exactly happened to Meng Etsu? Did that guy really defect? Well. Tsunade pinched her chin, nodded, and continued softly, this time, the six members of Akatsuki are active in Country of Fire. We guessed that this time, the enemy is likely to attack Kanaha and seize the Kyuubai Jinchuriki. This is the only reason. Gara nodded calmly. Akatsuki's ambition for Baijuya was very clear. The Ichibai in his body was stripped away. If not for Cho, Gara would have been buried in the soil. Uehara nodded and continued, Tsunade, do you want us to stay in Kanaha to guard against Akatsuki's surprise attack? No, that's not the case. Tsunade slowly held her palm and shouted, We plan to use this opportunity when Akatsuki's members sneak into Country of Fire and send a large group of people to attack. Everyone looked up at Tsunade in surprise. Obviously, they didn't think that Tsunade could succeed. Now it was difficult to even defend Kanaha, and she wanted to take the initiative to attack? Was she crazy? Gara shook his head and retorted, Tsunade Dano, I might need to remind you that when Akatsuki's people appear to attack a ninja village, they will ride a terrifying summoned beast and fly in the air. That's right. Terumi's face was also ugly. She looked at Tsunade and said seriously, Tsunade Dano, what Kazekage Dano said makes sense. Akatsuki came and went without a trace. It is very difficult even to catch them. Tsunade's face suddenly fell. After all, what she wanted was to fight the enemy outside the village. If she fought with Akatsuki in Kanaha, the losses would definitely be incalculable. However, if she could fight with Akatsuki in the wilderness, she would be able to play the advantage of numbers to divide Akatsuki's members and let the strong ninjas fight. Now that Terumi and Gara refused to support her decision, Tsunade couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. However, she had already decided on this plan. The reason why she mentioned it was to get the support of the two cage and Uehara. Uehara rubbed his forehead and whispered, In fact, Tsunade's plan is not impossible. If there is no mistake in Kanaha's information, it seems that the six members in the Country of Fire are not difficult to deal with, right? This was true. After all, the three seven ninja swordmen, the immortal duo, and the half-blind and half-sick Itachi. If you plan well, the chances of winning were very high. Uehara tapped the table with his finger and continued softly, if we move fast enough, there is a high chance of success. If we can catch one or two members or even more, it will be a great help to us. Uehara sighed and whispered, however, I need to remind you that other than these six people, there may also be the appearance of Obito. Generally, these configurations are Akatsuki's action plan. If Kanaha is determined to carry out the plan, I suggest considering other factors, such as the always invisible Obito. We will remember Narakusama's suggestion. Tsunade finally revealed a smile. She did not hide her gratitude towards Uehara and said softly, Thank you very much. For our next move, I want to ask, can everyone present participate in this operation? After all, Gara, Terumi, and Uehara were very strong. At least a few members of Akatsuki could be captured. Especially Uehara and Gara, these two guys could fly. Before Gara and Terumi could speak, Uehara nodded first and agreed, I am very interested in this. How to eliminate Akatsuki who endangers the ninja world is also the purpose of my coming to Kanaha. Chapter 237, Omegakure want Kakuzu for Hanzo to live longer. Tsunade's will was very firm. The current situation was a crisis for Kanaha, and it was also a huge opportunity. Once they could successfully destroy the Akatsuki organization, Kanaha's position would definitely be higher than the destroyed Tsunagakur and Kirigakur. Tsunade was a qualified political figure and compared to her political wisdom, Gara was too young. Even if Kirigakur could think of this, there was nothing they could do about it, because working together to encircle the Akatsuki organization was a political right in the world. Of course, Tsunade this woman also had some skills. If they want their allies to follow the will of Kanaha, in addition to these righteousness points, there were also some generous rewards. Kanaha's interests must not be sold out, so the interests of another country can only be sold out. Some time ago, we proposed to third Tsuchikaj Onaki, asking him to hand over the information about Akatsuki. Unfortunately, 
this matter has not been implemented. Tsunade clenched her fists and said in a deep voice, especially after Akatsuki's organization destroyed Tsunagakur and Kirigakur, it will be even more difficult for us to launch a sanction on Uegakur. After all, if Akatsuki is really the black hand that Uegakur secretly stirred up the ninja world war outside, we must cut off Uegakur's claws. These words were a little domineering. After saying some righteous words, Tsunade naturally had to say something that everyone liked to hear, after we destroy Akatsuki, we will find conclusive evidence and use this as an excuse to attack Uegakur. We must ask Uegakur to compensate the countries. This might lead to a war. Uehara subconsciously frowned, if we want to do this, I must report to Hanzo-sama first. Hanzo-sama has always been dedicated to the peace of the world. Tsunade turned to look at Gara and Terumi and said in a deep voice, peace is not achieved by fighting for it. Only when you have a strong enough attitude and enough strength can you embrace peace. Hmm. Gara hesitated for a moment before gently changing the topic, right now, the most important thing for us to do is to surround and capture Akatsuki's members inside Country of Fire, right? Let's talk about our battle plan first. Okay. Tsunade waved her hand and called Shikaku over. She softly introduced, this is Arkanaha's Jonin Nara Shikaku. This operation will be explained to everyone by him. Yes, Hokage-sama. Shikaku stood in Shikamaru's previous position and took out a map of Country of Fire and spread it out on the table. Because Akatsuki has very few members, but was very powerful. So we plan to surround Akatsuki. The ordinary team mainly bears the task of collecting information and establishing a blockade. The main combat force will be the Jonin Ninja team and Anbu in the village. First, complete encirclement. According to the last information we got, the members of Akatsuki's organization are currently in this area. Therefore, a large number of sensory ninja teams will start a carpet search from this area. The main battle team will follow closely to support the encirclement of Akatsuki's members at any time. Second, Split Operations According to our battle with Akatsuki over the years, the teamwork between the members of Akatsuki's organization is very high. This is the result of their many years of fighting experience. But there seems to be something different between them, that is, everyone is very proud, so we gradually disrupt Akatsuki's cooperation, and then cut and surround Akatsuki's six members. Third, Fight Less and Encircle More According to our intelligence, Although the strength of these members who invaded Country of Fire may be slightly inferior, they are still very powerful. Therefore, if we want to surround them, we need powerful ninjas to suppress them. Therefore, we will launch an attack with Hokage-sama and Jiraiya-sama as the main battle team, killing one or two members of Akatsuki. Send out the Jonin Ninja Squad and Anbu to surround and entangle the other members, and hunt them one by one. The members of the encircled team and the main battle team have been listed. They can maximize the advantages of each team, but it is inevitable that there will be accidents on the battlefield, so it is necessary to make a decision on the battlefield. That all. Shikaku spoke slowly. There was no sense of urgency from the war, but his strategy made people feel numb. Even Uehara couldn't help but feel a little surprised. Fortunately, he came to Kanaha this time. Otherwise, just Kakuzu and the other three might be wiped here because of Shikaku's plan. He really didn't expect that the intelligence of this future ninja army commander would be so high that he can't underestimate him. Not to mention Kakuzu and the other, as long as Kanaha ninjas listened to his long-range command and fought in the wild, even six paths of pain might be defeated one by one. Looking at how this guy, Shikaku, was smiling and talking about his strategy like a good person. This guy was actually quite vicious. Clap clap clap. Uehara gently raised his palm and could not help but praise. I have never seen such a wonderful strategy. Ha 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 ha. Shikaku rubbed his forehead in embarrassment. He had used a lot of energy in this strategy. After all, it was a little hard for him to take out a strategic plan to adapt in such a short time. Tsunade looked at the people present and whispered, Then do you have any different opinions? If you don't have any objections, we can consider starting the plan. Kirigakur has no objection. Tsunagakur has no objection. Omega Kure has no objection. Everyone present nodded. After taking out this strategy, Kanaha did not seem to need their help, just to add an extra layer of insurance. Anyway, they were all allies. Terumi nodded and asked, After this operation is over, we hope to let us deal with the three seven ninja swordsmen of our village can be handed over to us. Of course. Tsunade nodded calmly. Uehara also said directly, 
then after the operation is over, we, Omega Kure, hope to let us deal with Kakuzu. Tsunade frowned, but she did not immediately agree, we must consider this matter. After all, Kakuzu is a traitor of Takigakur. Kanaha has also collected information about Kakuzu. The leader of Takigakur gave Kanaha a piece of information about Kakuzu. At that time, even Tsunade was frightened by this information. Kakuzu had become a jonin of Takigakur decades ago. After killing all the higher UPS of village, he took away Takigakur's treasure and escaped. What kind of concept was this? How long had Kakuzu lived? That won't do. Uehara shook his head with a smile and said softly, Kakuzu stole a treasure from our Omega Kure. Hanzo-sama told me to capture him. Hat. Tsunade couldn't help but laugh. She looked at Uehara and smiled. Is that really your Omega Kure's treasure, or he stole it from Takigakur? Uehara's expression changed. He slowly stood up, leaned on the table, and looked straight at Tsunade. He whispered, it seems that you already know Kakuzu's secret. Kanaha should know the reason why W want Kakuzu. Hanzo-sama. Uehara. Tsunade directly interrupted Uehara and flew over to hold Uehara's arm and left the office with him. Tsunade hugged Uehara's arm as she waved at Gara and Terumi, I have something to talk to this little brat. Please do as you please. Uh. Terumi and Gara looked at each other. A moment later, the two of them began to wonder why Kakuzu would cause a dispute between Kanaha and Omega Kure. What kind of secret was that guy hiding? In the corridor of Hokage building. Uehara looked at Tsunade who was walking out with a smile on her face. Feeling the softness and warmth from his arm, he inexplicably thought of Conan. If he remembered correctly, he seemed to have heard that some time ago when he was chatting with Conan Sensei. Conan Sensei did not seem to care about Uehara finding a woman older than him to marry. At that time, Uehara thought that Conan was agreeing to the matter between him and Terumi. That was originally a lie, so Uehara did not care about it. Now, it seemed. Sometimes, he should listen to Sensei more. Tsunade smiled and entered a small dark room while holding Uehara's arm. She suddenly closed the door and pressed Uehara against the wall. Hey, kid. The smile on Tsunade's face disappeared without a trace. At this moment, her face was full of hostility, that guy, Hanzo, wants Kakuzu's body to live a long life, right? Uehara looked down at Tsunade in her chest. After a moment of silence, Uehara lowered his head again. Because he didn't know how to answer, he could only lower his head to express his acquiescence. Tsunade looked at Uehara's expression and sneered, if this operation is successful, Kanaha will never give Kakuzu to Omega Kure. Let that old man give up. Fortunately, Uehara still remembered his duty. He immediately raised his head and glared at Tsunade. He coldly said, this is our bottom line. You are just worried that Hanzo-sama will continue to live. Omega Kure will become stronger under his leadership. Almost there. Tsunade shook her head with contempt and stretched out a finger to stroke Uehara's face. She coldly said, if it were just strength, I might admire him. After all, Hanzo defeated dozens of elite teams by himself. Only Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and I survived. However, when it comes to his leadership ability, that old man has been leading Omega Kure for so many years. Do you think that Omega Kure has become stronger? Even you, a little brat, have done more than Hanzo. This sentence was a bit provocative. Uehara nodded subconsciously. Of course, he felt that he had done more for Omega Kure than Hanzo. Country of Rain's land had expanded nearly twice. Wasn't it all his credit? Uehara lowered his head, and his breathing gradually became a little rapid. After experiencing a struggle, he said in a low voice, There is no need to say so much, Hokage Dano. When the time comes for the operation, we will each use our own means. Whoever can kill Kakuzu, then Kakuzu will belong to them. Okay, then let's take a gamble. Tsunade curled the corners of her mouth and stretched out her palm, make a bet. If you can kill Kakuzu, then I will give Kakuzu to your Omega Kure. There seemed to be something wrong. After thinking for a while, Uehara slowly stretched out his hand and grasped Tsunade's small palm. It seemed that he was going to lose to Tsunade again. Although it was a bet that he would lose, he still had to make a bet, mainly to worry about attracting Tsunade's suspicion. He couldn't possibly kill Kakuzu just for a bet, right? Kakuzu was a person who worked hard to earn money for Akatsuki. 
he was a ninja that even Uehara admired. Come here. Tsunade grabbed Uehara's clothes, pulled Uehara and involuntarily lowered his head. She breathed in his ear and said, Ha, little brat, you have never won the bet between us. After thinking for a while, Uehara clenched his fist and put his lips close to Tsunade's ear, Don't worry, for Hanzo-sama, I will definitely win this time. Chapter 238, One Big Show to Open Soon After Tsunade and Uehara left the small black room, they went back to Hokage's office to chat for a while. Since the alliance plan was confirmed, the next step was to implement the plan. Uehara, Gara, and Terumi would move together with Tsunade. This was also a strong main battle team. As for the other main battle team, Jiraiya personally led the team and directly led the previous generation of Inoshikacho. This kind of configuration. It was a little scary. Just the strength of these two main battle teams alone was enough to defeat Kakuzu, Kisame, and the other members of Akatsuki. Even the combat strength of the surrounding teams could not be underestimated. Among them, there was Team 3 led by Gai, and Team 7 led by Kakashi. Their two extraordinary teams also served in the encirclement missions. The six members of Akatsuki's organization were really not enough. After the meeting, Kanaha's ninjas began to prepare in advance. Hundreds of sensory ninjas had already set out for the active area of Akatsuki's organization. Uehara began to think about how to arrange it. The cards in Kanaha's hands were too good. Even if they had a spy, this lineup was not something that Kisame, Kakuzu, and the other members could deal with. To be honest. If he wasn't here, it would be enough to wipe out the entire Akatsuki organization. In addition to Jiraiya and Tsunade, they also sent Gai, and Naruto who could use Baijuu's power and Rasen Shuriken, which made Uehara bald. Uehara really had no choice but to call someone. Uehara quietly used his own will to control the body of impure world reincarnation, with who he had not talked for a long time. It was fourth Hokage, who was with Kabuto. At a base thousands of miles away. While Kabuto was still diligently doing his experiments, he saw a coffin quietly open. Fourth Hokage Minato suddenly walked out and Uehara's voice came from his mouth. There is one thing I need you to do. Uehara muttered to himself for a while, then said softly, It's not convenient for me right now, so I need someone to help Obito to attract the attention of the two strong teams. It's very simple. Kabuto thought for a while and pushed his glasses with a smile. He whispered, Narakusama told me, who are the two teams? I will send the appropriate impure world reincarnation body, and fourth Hokage can take him there with the flying thunder god. Uehara nodded and said, First team, Jiraiya, Narashikaku, Yamanaka Inoichi, and Akamichi Choza. I understand. Kabuto nodded and whispered, Jiraiya, one of Kanaha's sonin, as well as the Inoshikacho? It seems that we can directly let fourth Hokage go by himself. He and those people are old friends. That makes sense. Uehara frowned and continued softly, I am just worried that he will leak the information, but if we destroy fourth's will, will he be sealed because of the disadvantage in the battle? Narakusama can send one more person. Kabuto chuckled and provided his suggestion, there is probably no one more suitable than third Hokage. This is wonderful. We can help them choose their opponents. Uehara could not help but want to praise Kabuto. This guy always liked to fight with those who had fetters. So the final result. It was that Kabuto mastered the realization of a dream. Uehara slowly raised his finger and chuckled, then I will let second Hokage fight Tsunade and our team. Let third and fourth Hokage fight against Jiraiya's team. Yes. Kabuto nodded, and his face gradually became more serious, I will also follow fourth Hokage, so as to avoid any mistakes in Narakusama's plan. Yes, you can. Uehara nodded. After arranging his opponents and teammates, Uehara contacted Obito urgently and asked him to send information to Kisame and give his orders. I have already solved the two most troublesome teams for you. Let Kakuzu, Haiden, Ringo, and Mangetsu retreat now, leaving only you and Itachi to cover the rear. In a while, contact Pain and create the shape-shifting technique puppet of Diodera and Kimimaro to cover your retreat, lest any accidents happen in the middle. After saying that, Uehara was a little worried and added, If Guy is too troublesome, I will let Obito take action when necessary. Remember, you must ensure the battle between Itachi and Naruto. The shape-shifting technique puppet was one of the abilities of the Rinnegan. It could use an ordinary ninja as a sacrifice to let a ninja thousands of miles away control this sacrifice. At the same time, 
the sacrifice had 30 control of the chakra, but it could use their equipment and bloodline limit. However, after the chakra was exhausted, the puppet would die. In this big play, it could be said that Uehara had spent a lot of effort to make him use many of his connections. Kisame conveyed the information sent by Uehara and immediately let Kakuzu, Haiden, Ringo, and Mangetsu retreat, and let him and Itachi cover the rear. Haiden was still a little unhappy, holding the instruments of his church and complaining, it's rare that I want to kill a few more people to offer enough sacrifices to Jashin-sama. Kisame coldly sized up Haiden and said in a deep voice, leader has ordered us to listen to Uehara's command. The enemy is very strong, and if we are not careful, we will die. Haydn curled his lips and muttered in dissatisfaction, then tell the leader that I don't want to follow his orders. This opportunity. Kaka. Haydn's head was directly cut off. Ringo slowly bit a lollipop and put away her ninja knife without care. She squatted down and grabbed Haydn's hair. Then she turned around and left. Ringo was straightforward and direct. Haydn stared blankly at his body falling to the ground and cursed, Are you crazy? How dare you cut off my head? It hurts, it hurts, don't grab my hair. Hey, Kakuzu, bring my body with you. Idiot. Kakuzu glanced at Haydn and bent over to carry him and caught up with Ringo. Mangetsu couldn't help but laugh and also followed their team. After watching them leave, Kisame chuckled and looked at Itachi, because our team is the strongest, so we are the ones to depend on the rear Itachi-san, you don't have any objections, right? No. Itachi shook his head. After a while, Itachi said softly, this is also the last time I see an old friend. Haven't you already arranged my fate? After returning, Itachi would fight Suzuki. As for the result of the duel, Itachi and Kisame were very clear in their hearts that they had long since picked out this matter. You still have a chance to change. Kisame looked at Itachi and persuaded, if you still want to change your fate, you better tell me in advance. Otherwise, it will be very troublesome to disrupt the boss plan. My fate has already been decided. Itachi stretched out his palm and watched the sunshine through the leaves on his body, leaving a shadow. Yes, his fate had already been decided. But. Sasuke's fate could still be changed. Whether Suzuki would return to Kanaha in the future or be protected by Kisame and his people behind the scenes, would depend on his fight with Kanaha's ninjas. Unfortunately, Itachi did not know that someone had specially arranged this fight for him. In Kanaha. In a hidden corner, Uehara quietly released impure world reincarnation of second and third Hokage. He looked at their state with great satisfaction. What a pity. If not for the fact that I was worried that you would leak the information, I would really want you to see an old friend. Evil kid. Tobirama suddenly mobilized the chakra in his body, trying to get rid of Uehara's control, but his strength was simply not enough. Hiruzen looked at Uehara and sighed sadly, Uehara. Are you finally going to attack Kanaha? A villain hiding in the dark will never be able to defeat a righteous man under the sun. Uehara looked at Hiruzen speechlessly, shook his head, and said, Hey, third, don't you know how bad your reputation is in the ninja world? Forget it, let Asuma tell you when I resurrected him one day. Asuma. Hiruzen's expression changed, and he gradually calmed down, so Asuma also get a bad hand? That kid. Let's stop here. Uehara made a few hand seals, and after briefly destroying their will, he chuckled and said, We don't have much time. After doing all of this, Tobirama stretched out his palm and placed it on Hiruzen's body. He then left Kanaha with the Flying Thunder God technique. Country of Rain. The base of Akatsuki's organization. After Pain received the information and requirements from Uehara, he immediately used the shape-shifting technique to create the shape-shifting technique puppets of Kimimaro, Suzuki, Bai, Sasori, and Diadera. The members of Akatsuki's organization were more important. It didn't matter even if these puppets were killed. Diadera was sitting cross-legged in the base. He was still a little unhappy when controlling his shape-shifting technique puppet, even if I transfer all my chakra, I can only use 30% of my chakra. Isn't the efficiency too low? Why don't I directly use a super explosion? Payne shook his head and said, you can do whatever you want as long as you can cover Kisame and Itachi. Of course, we have to cover that bastard. Suzuki clenched his fists and said in a low voice, if he doesn't come back, how can I kill him? Now, everyone was ready. Uehara looked at the progress of the main storyline that had increased by a few percentage points with satisfaction and then looked at the contrast between the two camps. 
On Kanaha's side, Jiraiya, the previous generation of Inoshikacho team, Tsunade, Terumi, Gara, and Uehara, Spice, Guy and his team 3, Kakashi and his team 7 and a group Ordinary Ninja team and Anbu, as well as a group of Sensory Ninjas. Akatsuki, Itachi, Kisame, Sasori, Shapeshifting Technique Puppet, Diadera, Shapeshifting Technique Puppet, Haku, Shapeshifting Technique Puppet, Kimimaro, Shapeshifting Technique Puppet, and Suzuki, Shapeshifting Technique Puppet. The members of the Hidden Party, Kabuto, Obito, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Hokage. Who would have thought that the big play that Uehara arranged so meticulously was actually just to lure out a Kota Amatsukami crow that Itachi raised? Chapter 239, First Encounter There was a hint of tension in the air. Team after team of Kanaha ninjas left the village. Tsunade and Jiraiya also set out from one direction and headed to the active area of Akatsuki. On the way, there were sensory ninjas or scouting ninjas, messenger pigeons and reports on the positions of each team. Tsunade just listened to them casually. Uehara also casually leaked the information to Kabuto, Kisame and Impure World Reincarnation Hokage and arranged for them to move to their positions at any time. Jiraiya's team has already rushed to the northwest direction. They are expected to arrive at the point where they are moving. Before that, 3rd and 4th Hokage will immediately intercept them. Kabuto, you are responsible for monitoring the battle between them. Understood. Tsunade and my team are rushing to the northeast direction. They are expected to arrive at the place where we are moving. Second Hokage will immediately come to intercept us. Kabuto, do you have any suitable people on your side? I am afraid that I will be too heavy-handed. Understood. Kabuto hurriedly summoned a coffin and whispered, Second Hokage and Second Mizu Cage are ninjas who are good at water ninjutsu. If Naraku-sama wanted to hide his strength, they should be able to fight against Tsunade-sama's team. Well done. Uehara really had to admire Kabuto's imagination. The combination of Second Hokage and Second Mizu Cage, both of them were very good at water ninjutsu, and they could definitely fight against Tsunade, Terumi, and Gara. After dealing with the two main teams, Uehara immediately began to send information to Kisame and Itachi about the other teams, Guy and Kakashi's team did not separate. They are rushing in your direction. I got it. Kisame grinned and nodded with a smile. Uehara was a little worried. He said in a low voice, I remember that Diadera and Sasori's shape-shifting technique puppets are nearby. Let them attract the attention of other Kanaha ninjas. Kisame, Itachi, Haku, Kimimaro, Suzuki, prepare to fight Kakashi and Guy. Uehara was really busy. He needed to worry about the situation of several battlefields. The feeling of playing chess with myself was really bad. Fortunately, the only interesting thing was that he could control the situation of the battlefield and could add a chess piece at any time and also remove a chess piece at any time. Moreover, scaring Tsunade was very fun. For example, after Kanaha's sensory ninjas found the figures of Sasori and Diadera, they immediately reported to Tsunade. On the battlefield, there were two more members of Akatsuki's organization that were not in the range of encirclement, so would this encirclement battle plan still be followed? Stick to the plan. Tsunade gritted her teeth and said coldly, Jiraiya and I, the two teams responsible for the battle, can be divided into four teams at any time. It doesn't matter if there are two more people. Yes, Hokage-sama. The sensory ninja left in a hurry. Tsunade glanced at her team members. Terumi and Gara looked a little anxious. Uehara seemed to be more anxious than them. Was this kid afraid? Just as Tsunade turned her head, a kunao suddenly shot towards her from the jungle, shocking everyone. Uehara loudly reminded, be careful. Don't make such a fuss. Tsunade tilted her head lightly, avoiding the incoming kunao. Just as she was about to say something, she saw a familiar clan emblem in the corner of her eyes. This was the mark of the Senju clan. This kunao was owned by a Senju clan ninja. The next second, Tsunade suddenly remembered that not many ninjas like to leave their mark on kunao because it was too easy to lose. Apart from 2nd and 4th Hokage, the two Flying Thunder Gods users, no one else seemed to have the habit of leaving a mark on Kunao. Even her grandfather Hashirama. Su. A ninja wearing leather armor appeared out of thin air. He grabbed the Kunao with the mark and swung at Tsunade's neck. This attack came so suddenly that no one present could imagine it. Tsunade waved her arm to block the incoming Kunao. Her eyes stared at the ninja who suddenly appeared and murmured, Is it? Second Grandpa. 
Even Tsunade never expected that Tobirama would appear here. If she remembered correctly, they should be surrounding Akatsuki. Why did it feel like they were surrounding Orochimaru? Tobirama appeared here. It was really fucking strange. Unfortunately, this second Hokage did not have his own will at all. He only attacked freely and spat out a bunch of water needles, sudden, tenki, water release, heavenly weeping. These water needles were too fast, and before Tsunade could dodge or defend, they directly hit Tsunade's arm and shoulder. Ah! Tsunade angrily waved her fist and punched Tobirama, but what greeted her was a kick. Tsunade was kicked away. Even if one's will was destroyed, those familiar combat experiences could still crush Tsunade. Back then, Tobirama, who had come out in the Chunin exam, could suppress Hiruzen, let alone now that he was close to the peak using white zetsus as sacrifice. Fortunately, at this time, Terumi, Gara, and Uehara reacted. They quickly stepped forward to stop Tobirama's attack and save Tsunade who had been attacked. What the hell is going on? Terumi looked at Tobirama, who was standing opposite them, and her face was extremely ugly, Hokage Dono, why is your country's second Hokage here? Didn't you say that we were going to surround Akatsuki? Tsunade nestled in Uehara's arms, allowing Uehara to pull out the water needle and treat her wound. Tsunade's face was so gloomy that it seemed like it could drip out. She thought of her old friend, maybe Orochimaru did not die and became a member of Akatsuki again. All right. Uehara's palm was glowing with a green light. After stroking Tsunade's arm and healing her wound, he said softly, what should we do now that second Hokage appeared here? It's not just second Hokage. A voice suddenly interrupted Uehara. Terumi saw another figure appear beside second Hokage Tobirama. Her face also became a little gloomy, Arkirigakura's second Mizu cage is also here. Everyone suddenly fell silent. Uehara slowly lowered his head and said in a deep voice, Tsunade, our team is unlikely to participate in the battle against Akatsuki. We have to find out what happened on the battlefield. Yes. Tsunade slowly nodded and stood up. We encountered second grandfather and second Mizu cage. Will Jiraiya meet first grandfather? If Jiraiya's team met first Hokage, they would definitely not be a match for first Hokage. They could even be hung up and beaten with one hand. However, Tsunade was worrying about nothing. Jiraiya indeed did not meet first Hokage. However, if he let Jiraiya choose, maybe he would think that first Hokage was not bad. Anyway, he did not want to face the two enemies that appeared around his team. Third Hokage-sama. There was a bit of cold sweat on Shikaku's face. He looked at the short old man who suddenly appeared and ambushed them, and he began to worry. After all, his strategy was based on the level of intelligence. Now that this main force was actually entangled, who would be responsible for the battle? If it were only third Hokage Hiruzen, it would be fine, but a golden-haired man wearing a royal robe stood beside Hiruzen. Chosa narrowed his eyes and sighed faintly, it's been a long time. Minato. Tisk, how troublesome. Jiraiya touched his chin and looked impatiently at third and fourth Hokage, these two guys are here to stop us from attacking Akatsuki. That should be it. Shikaku nodded and said in a deep voice, if the information is right, only one of Kanaha Sunan, Orochimaru, can use impure world reincarnation in the whole world. Ah, that's about it. Jiraiya stretched, slowly clenched his fist, and said a messy tongue twister, it's really interesting. My friend controlled my sensei and my student to attack me. This sentence was a little playful. Everyone present could hear the sorrow in Jiraiya's optimistic attitude. Perhaps this was already the most painful thing in life? Orochimaru was Jiraiya's friend, Hiruzen was Jiraiya's sensei, Minato was Jiraiya's student, and now they were all standing on the opposite side of Jiraiya. Well, let's talk about tactics. Jiraiya's face gradually became serious. He looked at the people around him, and said in a low voice, you are also very clear about the ninjutsu of the old man and Minato. So we have to find a way to separate them from each other. Otherwise, under the flying thunder god technique of Minato, I am not sure that we can block the old man's ninjutsu. Yes. After Shikaku nodded for a long time, he suddenly said, Jiraiya-sama, if we meet third and fourth here, then it is very likely that Tsunade-sama's team will also be attacked. The enemies they meet might be the first and second Hokage. We can't rule out this possibility. Jiraiya nodded and looked at Hiruzen and Minato in the distance. He rubbed his wrist and said, There is no other way. We have to get rid of them as soon as possible and support Tsunade. 
we have to protect the living. Chapter 240, The Surrendered Minato and the Unrelenting Jiraiya After losing his will, the combat strength of impure world reincarnation's body could be said to be fluctuating between high and low, it was purely relying on his own instinct to fight. However, without a doubt, after the old and weak Hiruzen obtained impure world reincarnation's body, his combat strength increased a lot. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique Hiruzen threw out a huge shuriken in his hand, closed his fingers, and quickly made a series of hand seals. The shuriken in his hand instantly split into a pile of shadow clones, shooting in the direction of Jiraiya and others. Dotan, Dori Jiki, Earth Release, Earth Style Rampart Jiraiya made a hand seal at the same time, releasing an Earth Style Rampart in front of the giant shuriken. But the thick wall was cut open by the giant shuriken. Jiraiya could not help but frown and say with lingering fear, this old man is really ruthless. However, just as Jiraiya let out a sigh of relief, Minato's clear voice appeared in his ears, Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique. This made Jiraiya almost forget. Minato was the same as Hiruzen. Both of them were actually skilled in Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique. It was just that their direction was different. After Minato threw a Shuriken in the air, his hands quickly joined together to form a seal. His speed was faster than Hiruzen by more than a fraction. In the next second, the small shuriken suddenly split into countless clones. Just like those dense twinkling stars in the dark night sky, these stars fell from the sky. Those dense and innumerable meteors were the masterpieces of Minato releasing the shuriken shadow clone technique. Every ninjutsu in the hands of Minato would have extremely powerful power researched by him. Katon, Kari and Dan, Fire Release, Fire Dragon Flame Bullet Jiraiya quickly closed his palm, opened his mouth, and spat out a powerful flame towards the falling shuriken, burning the densely packed shuriken in the air. The shuriken in the sky turned into smoke under the attack of the flame and dissipated. Even the shadow clone shuriken was still a shadow clone in the end. As long as it encountered a sufficiently powerful attack, it would disappear. Phew, it's finally solved. Choza stood up, shook his head, and looked at Minato in the distance, he whispered, Minato is still so terrible. After all, he is the most perfect ninja. Shikaku slowly closed his palm and said in a low voice, let's try to control them first, cage main no jutsu, shadow imitation technique. A shadow quickly extended from under his feet and spread towards fourth Hokage. Although it was only a tentative move, Shikaku would do his best. After all, once Minato ran rampant on the battlefield, it would be a huge problem for them. Obviously, this was completely useless. Minato's speed was definitely not something that the shadow could catch up to. However, Shikaku did not stop. He only watched as Minato dodged the shadow and whispered to his teammates, Stop him, Choza. Understood. Byubun Baika no Jutsu, Partial Multi-Size Technique Choza's fist suddenly became huge, and he suddenly punched towards Minato's area, forcing Minato to disappear in an instant. However, no one expected that Minato would jump onto Choza's hand, leaving a mark of the Flying Thunder God on his body. Is it over? This was the first thought that came to Choza's mind. Once Minato left behind the mark of the Flying Thunder God, it was almost impossible to escape his pursuit. No, just in time. Shikaku chuckled. He glanced at Inoichi who was beside him and whispered, Then I will leave the rest to you, Inoichi. Hmm. Inoichi reached out his palm and landed on Shikaku. He used his mind-body switch technique to control Shikaku's body and sense where Minato was. He's here. Inoichi found Minato in his perception. He said in a low voice, but I can't tell when he will appear next to Choza. Right now. The shadow of Shikaku instantly expanded, wrapping around all the surrounding areas, and coincidentally wrapping around Minato who had just landed. In the next second, just when they thought that they could control Minato, a trace of golden chakra gradually emerged from Minato's body and converged on his body into a golden chakra coat. Kyubai mode. Minato instantly broke away from the control of shadow imitation technique, and swept out a kick, sending the three people of Shikaku, Inoichi, and Choza flying. Jiraiya's jaw was almost scared off. He stared at Minato, who was bathed in golden light and murmured, This is... Kyubai's chakra. What the hell? Letting Shikaku and the other two deal with an ordinary Minato was difficult enough, but Minato still had Kyubai's chakra. No, not only that, he could even perfectly use Kyubai's chakra. 
just the current aura of Minato was clearly more than one level stronger than when Naruto revealed his eight tails during the Chunin exam. What the hell was this? However, it was not a bad thing for Minato to use this to erupt Kyuubai's chakra. Because his will has been restored. Although he still can't get rid of Uehara's control, he could at least report a lot of information to Jiraiya. A trace of relief flashed across Minato's face. He turned to look at Jiraiya, and he seemed to have survived a disaster, long time no see Jiraiya-sensei. Minato. Jiraiya's look was still on his golden chakra coat. He asked in a low voice, what exactly is going on? This matter. Fourth Hokage-sama. Just as Minato was about to open his mouth to explain, he suddenly felt Uehara's will once again descend into his mind. In his spiritual world. Minato stood in a lake. Uehara's face appeared above him like a god. He said in a gloomy voice, Fourth Hokage-sama, there are some things you shouldn't say. Originally, the task I gave you was just to hold them back. If you say too much, then I can only let you kill them. Minato raised his head and looked at the huge face above his spiritual world. His face was ugly as he asked, at least, you have to tell me what your purpose is. Don't ask too much. Uehara looked gloomily at the golden little man in the spiritual world and whispered, I thought it would be second Hokage who regained his senses first. I didn't expect it to be you. But it doesn't matter. As long as you dare to leak information, I will control your body and kill them. After Uehara finished speaking, he added, let me give you a friendly reminder. The current fifth Hokage Tsunade is right next to me. I can kill her at any time and clean up all the higher UPS in Kanaha. Uehara felt that it was not safe, and continued to add, since you used Kyuubai's chakra, then you can sense the location of your son. Obito is near him, so I can kill Naruto and Kakashi at any time. This person, was a little vicious. It was not easy for Minato to regain his consciousness, so he wanted to use this opportunity to report some information to Jiraiya. He did not expect that Uehara would immediately use Jiraiya's life to threaten him. It had to be said that this kind of threat was very effective. Because Minato was very clear that with his current ability to use Kyuubai's power, Jiraiya, Shikaku, and the others were definitely not his match. If Jiraiya got the information, and the entire upper echelons of Kanaha were wiped out, then what was the point of getting the information? No, it seemed that he could use other methods. For example, a code word? Don't think about using code words or gestures to leak the information. Uehara said coldly. He directly wrote the ending for Minato, I never look at the process. I only look at the result. Maybe if I feel that something is wrong, I will get rid of them immediately. So you better think clearly where you should stand. Uehara looked at the silent Minato and said coldly, Don't think that you are the only chess piece. You and I are just a messenger that can be replaced at any time. If you want to do more things with this body in the future, you better follow my orders. Uehara's huge face in the spiritual world added, If all the higher UPS in Kanaha are killed, you should know what will happen to Kanaha, right? I understand. Minato slowly lowered his head. This kind of threat was very simple and crude, but also very effective. Compared to those seals, Uehara used his feelings and fetters, which were undoubtedly more effective. He could even exchange for Minato's submission. After all, Minato wanted to reveal the information for the safety of Kanaha. If Kanaha was gone, what was the point of him revealing the information? But if he did not reveal the information, it should be a slow death of Kanaha, right? Minato felt that he had to think of a perfect plan. Uehara slowly looked at Minato under the spiritual world, and suddenly revealed a sinister smile, just in case, I have to warn you in advance. In addition to what I threatened you before, I should add something else. In the spiritual world, Uehara's huge smiling face was like a devil's smile in Minato's eyes. He gently opened his mouth and said, If Jiraiya and the others know my true identity, I will revive Uzumaki Kushina and control her to fight with your son Naruto. In order to avoid this tragedy, you will definitely listen to me, right? Minato could not help but grit his teeth. To actually let Naruto, who had never seen his mother, and Kushina, who had never seen his son, duel with each other, was this still a sane person could do? This demon took almost every aspect of him into consideration. Sensei, wife, son, student, companions. Almost every threat was fatal to Minato. This was the first time in Minato's world that he had seen such an evil guy. This kind of demon. In particular, his strength was also very strong. 
Minato gritted his teeth and raised his head to look at Uehara's face. He asked, I have to know why you did this, right? You will know sooner or later. Uehara's voice gradually became ethereal, don't worry, what I have done is not a bad thing for Kanaha. I have to hide in order to deal with a hidden mastermind. Then. Minato looked up and said coldly, I will cooperate with you for the time being, but I don't want to hurt Jiraiya-sensei. Yes, it's okay. I don't want to hurt him either. In the spiritual world, Uehara slowly nodded and whispered, I'll leave that battlefield to you. Just help me stall Jiraiya and the others. Uehara's will projection dissipated from Minato's spiritual world, leaving behind only one sentence, I am also a kind person. I will not do something as cruel as forcing a student to kill him. After Uehara's will dissipate. Minato returned to reality and his face was slightly ugly. He carefully checked his body and he was still under Uehara's control. The only thing he could be free of was his mouth. Thinking of Uehara's threat, Minato slowly clenched his fist. He looked at Jiraiya and said in a deep voice, I'm sorry, Jiraiya-sensei, I must stop what you want to do now. This is the choice I have to make. Ha 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 ha. Jiraiya was not angry. Instead, he laughed heartily. He slowly closed his fingers and formed a challenge seal, Minato, if I remember correctly, you really wanted to challenge me, right? That's right. Minato also slowly formed a challenge seal, and the golden chakra cloak in his body gradually faded away, and he once again returned to his normal state. Minato looked straight at the gradually becoming solemn expression of Jiraiya, and a trace of seriousness appeared on his face, then. Sensei, please advise me. You guys go and fight the old man. Jiraiya ordered Shikaku and the others to attack Third Hokage. He slowly closed his palm and continued to chat, Do you need to make any rules? No rules. Minato shook his head and said in a low voice, Even Jiraiya-sensei can kill me because I won't die in impure world reincarnation state. Can I use a sealing technique? Jiraiya looked at Minato and continued to ask, I am very good at using a sealing technique. I wonder if I can seal you up now. Minato's face immediately revealed a bit of embarrassment, this might be possible, but I am also very good at sealing techniques. Even if Sensei used up his life to use the dead demon consuming seal, it would still be useless, because I was. Minato's voice suddenly stopped. He could not reveal any information about Uehara, he had almost leaked it just now. Then, can I use sage techniques? A meaningful smile appeared on Jiraiya's face. He slowly wiped the toad oil paint and formed a summoning hand seal. He shouted, Kukiyos. Sensei, is still the same. Minato shook his head helplessly and said softly, Sensei has been chatting with me all this time just to prepare enough time for the two sage Fukasaku and Shima to enter sage mode, right? A burst of summoning smoke sounded. At this moment, Jiraiya's image had changed greatly. His face was painted with oil, and two small toads appeared on his shoulders. However, his aura had become much stronger. Jiraiya waved his hand proudly and laughed heartily, ha 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 ha. You little brat guessed right. Who is the enemy this time? Shima looked around and suddenly looked at Minato in disbelief, wait, little Jiraiya, isn't this little Minato? Minato nodded in a friendly manner and whispered, it's been a long time. Sage Shima, Sage Fukasaku. In short, Minato has been resurrected and controlled by someone. Jiraiya said in a concise and comprehensive way about the current situation. He said in a low voice, we have to defeat him now. We have to rush over to support Naruto and Kakashi. Maybe they are surrounded by Akatsuki. I see. Fukasaku nodded with a dignified face. He said in a low voice, this is not easy. If I remember correctly. Minato seems to have learned sage mode, right? That's right, sage mode, activate. After Minato calmly nodded, his eyes suddenly flashed with the oil color of sage mode, because I have the help of Kyuubai in my body, it can help me extract natural energy so that I can enter sage mode at any time. Jiraiya. Fukasaku. Shima. I'm sorry, Jiraiya-sensei. Minato shook his head, a trace of apology flashing across his face. He seriously declared, I can only tell you that I must block your passage. Then come. Jiraiya closed his palm, his face also becoming solemn, Minato, don't feel sorry. I once told you that in the world of ninjas, no disciple must always obey his sensei. Moreover, you are just being controlled. After that, Jiraiya said in a deep voice, 
what we have to do is not to defeat Minato, but to break through his defense and rush to the position of Naruto and Kakashi. Chapter 241, Uchiha Brothers and Kanaha Team 7 Well fought, 4th. After praising Minato in his heart, Uehara began to concentrate on the battlefield on his side. With Tsunade, Terumi, Gara, and him the undercover agent, it was really difficult to defeat the combination of 2nd Hokage and 2nd Mizu Cage. What Uehara wanted to do was very simple, that was when 2nd Hokage or 2nd Mizu Cage released water ninjutsu, he would use the same water ninjutsu to offset it. With his action. It made Tsunade and the others relax a lot. Everyone present was well aware of the power of 2nd Hokage and 2nd Mizukage's water ninjutsu. It could be said that Uehara was working hard. But on Uehara's side, since his puppet could paddle, why should he work too hard? Uehara's mind immediately flew to Obito. After all, that place was the core area of the entire battlefield, and it was also the center stage of this big show. Sasori and Diodera's shapeshift puppet faced off against the other surrounding teams, reducing the pressure between Kisame and the others. Kakashi's Team 7 and Guy's Team 3 finally bumped into members of Akatsuki's organization. They also met their opponents Itachi, Kisame, Suzuki, Shapeshift Puppet, Bai, Shapeshift Puppet, Kimimaro, Shapeshift Puppet. Leave that Kanaha Gree beast to me. Kisame grinned, picked up his own same hata, and rushed over. He coldly ordered, as for the little brat under his command, I'll leave them to you, Kimimaro. Yes, Kisame Senpai. Kimimaro nodded, and countless bone spikes shot out from his body, charging towards Lee, Niji, and the others. I'll cover you. Haku stood at the back of the team and looked at the incoming Kanaha ninjas. He closed his palm and said in a low voice, Haitan, Mangehi, ice release, 10,000 ice petals. Countless ice needles flew over. Tenten pulled open a scroll, closed her fingers, and said in a deep voice, Cave no jutsu, unsealing technique. A square stone was removed from the seal and she erected it to block the countless ice needles. This confrontation also opened the battle between Team 3 and their fated opponent. As for Kakashi and Team 7, Itachi and Suzuki stared at them. Suzuki looked contemptuously at Team 7 who was rushing over. He did not look at his elder brother and said coldly, Leave this to me. Itachi was silent for a while, then he opened his mouth and reminded, This body of yours only has 30% of your original body's chakra. 30%. Suzuki slowly pulled out his ninja blade, and looked at Kakashi and Team 7 with a face full of disdain, 30% of chakra is enough to deal with them. Suzuki directly rushed toward Team 7. After Naruto and Sakura saw Suzuki, they were surprised. They didn't expect to see Suzuki here. But after they saw Sasuke's movements, both of them couldn't be happy. Kakashi looked around and whispered, if I remember correctly, there should be four more members of Akatsuki who are nowhere to be seen. Be careful. Kakashi-sensei. Naruto clenched his fist and said in a deep voice, You guys prepare to meet other enemies here. I will go and bring Suzuki back. After saying that, Naruto did not wait for Kakashi to object and flew towards Suzuki. Sakura looked nervously at the confrontation between her two teammates in the past. She looked at Kakashi hesitantly and said, Kakashi-sensei, can't you stop them? Itachi has not moved out yet. Kakashi shook his head and looked at Itachi, who was watching everything from a distance. He turned to Sai and said, Sai, you are the fastest here. Go and see what is going on. Why haven't Jiraiya-sama and Tsunade-sama come yet? Yes. Sai was very optimistic. He paid more attention to the task and immediately drew a bird and flew into the air towards the predetermined route of the main battle team. Only Kakashi was left to watch Itachi who had yet to make any moves. Sakura was also staring at Naruto and Suzuki who were fighting each other. Still so weak, Naruto. Sasuke's Kenjutsu was very fast. After so many years, the ninja sword in his hand was so fast that it was almost difficult for Naruto to keep up with his movements. Not long after the fight, Suzuki easily broke through Naruto's defense and cut a few wounds on Naruto's body. Come back with me, Suzuki. Naruto gritted his teeth and clenched the kunao in his hand. He stared straight at his old friend with a gloomy face and said in a deep voice, Suzuki, I don't want to kill you. After so many years, your mouth is still so sharp. Suzuki slowly turned his ninja blade and pointed at Itachi in the distance. He smiled and said, See? My enemy is there. I will kill him soon. When Itachi returned to Country of Rain, 
there would be a life and death duel between them. Suzuki could challenge Itachi openly. Suzuki grinned, and a crazy smile appeared on his face, I have worked hard for so many years, and I am about to realize my dream. Are you still preaching to me? Naruto, do you only know how to talk? After a moment of silence, Naruto shook his head calmly, Suzuki, I don't want to preach. I understand everything about you. I know what you want to do. But no matter what, you shouldn't join Akatsuki. They are a group of monsters that are destroying peace. No, you don't understand. Suzuki raised his ninja blade again and curled the corners of his mouth, joining Akatsuki is what I want. I have had enough with you weak guys. Beasts will not walk the same path as sheep. The three Tomo Sharingan gradually appeared in Sasuke's eyes. He slowly opened his mouth and said, Naruto, Akatsuki is not a monster. A real monster, isn't it a guy with a monster in their body like you? Sakura looked at Suzuki in disbelief. She almost couldn't believe what he said, Suzuki-kun, what are you talking about? Naruto is our friend. I have no friends. Suzuki frowned and looked at Sakura and Naruto with murderous intent, you are just my stumbling blocks on the road of growth. Now I just want to use you guys as stepping stones. So that's what you always thought. Naruto clenched his fist, and the chakra in his body gradually became violent. The next moment, he rushed to Suzuki like a lion, but I don't care so much. No matter what you say, I will bring you back this time. If he let Suzuki go this time, he didn't know when he would be able to bring Suzuki back next time. Tsunade and Kakashi had once said that Akatsuki was dangerous. Who knew if Suzuki would cause a disaster in the future? Suzuki frowned and looked at Naruto who was rushing over. He kicked him in the chest and cursed softly, idiot. However, he never expected that Naruto would hold his foot tightly and not let go. He threw him to the ground. Idiot. After cursing again, Suzuki released lightning from his body, directly knocking Naruto to the ground, and then he knelt down on one knee. Suzuki checked the chakra of his puppet body and frowned, I can't casually use ninjutsu. Otherwise, if I don't have enough chakra, this puppet body will soon be unable to hold on. Even if it were a body puppet with 30% chakras, Suzuki didn't want to lose to Naruto. This was his inherent pride. The problem was. His opponent was Naruto, who had abundant chakra since he was young. Cage Bunchin no Kutsu, Shadow Clone Technique Naruto immediately split out hundreds of shadow clones, and these hundreds of shadow clones rushed towards Suzuki, Suzuki, I am completely different from the past. Humph, there is no difference. Suzuki swung his ninja blade and said disdainfully, no matter how many sheep there are, it is impossible to bite a tiger. Suzuki was very confident. Even if he only relied on his kenjutsu, he believed that he could kill Naruto's shadow clone completely. However, just as Suzuki rushed towards those shadow clones, a Naruto suddenly appeared behind him. He held a raised nan and smashed it on his waist. With just one strike, Suzuki was knocked to the ground. Sasuke's face was so ugly as he looked at the countless clones of Naruto pressing down on him. He began to think about when Naruto, who had attacked him behind his back, had set up this. Just after you used the lightning ninjutsu, I secretly created a shadow clone and hid in the form of grass. There was a hint of pride in Naruto's voice, I already said that I am different from the past. I have become stronger than you can imagine. An idiot will always be an idiot. Suzuki, who was on the ground, could not help but curse when he heard Naruto's smug voice. He was waiting for Rasengan's chakra disorder effect to end. But what was Naruto waiting for? Was he waiting for him to surrender? Suzuki, who was under a group of shadow clones, suddenly turned into a shadow clone of Naruto. He used Naruto's clone to release a substitute jutsu, and his body was instantly out of the predicament. In the next moment, Suzuki raised the ninja blade in his hand without hesitation, Chidori Senban. Countless bolts of lightning shot through Naruto's shadow clone, killing all of his shadow clones, leaving only Naruto's original body standing alone. Suzuki casually raised his ninja blade at Naruto again, Chidori S, Chidori Sharp Spear. A long bolt of lightning pierced through Naruto's arm. Just as Naruto was covering his arm, Sasuke's figure suddenly appeared beside Naruto. He raised his ninja blade and stabbed it into Naruto's shoulder, nailing him to the ground. Chidori-kun, Chidori Light Sword. Suzuki didn't care about Naruto who was frowning after being attacked by lightning ninjutsu. He just whispered, if not for because of Akatsuki's restriction, 
I would take your life right now. A kunao suddenly fell on Sasuke's neck. Sakura clenched the kunao and said with a trembling voice, Suzuke, let go of Naruto. Do you also want to be my enemy? Suzuke looked up at Sakura and suddenly pulled out his ninja blade. He said coldly, Sakura, you have become very bold. Sakura bit her lips and said with a cold face, if it is to save Naruto's life, I don't care to attack any rebel of the village. Humph, time's up. Suzuke hooked his lips and suddenly kicked Sakura in the lower abdomen, sending her flying, consider yourselves lucky this time. Next time, you won't have such good luck. After saying that, Sasuke's appearance gradually dissipated. Because the lightning ninjutsu that Suzuke used was basically not low in chakra consumption, so it exhausted the chakra of this puppet so quickly. A strange corpse fell to the ground. After Sasuke's body disappeared, Itachi's figure immediately moved. Instead of appearing beside Kakashi, he landed beside Naruto instead. Just as Kakashi was about to fly over to help, a blazing black flame suddenly rose beside Itachi and Naruto, surrounding the two of them. It was precisely Amaterasu from his Mangekyo Sharingan. Kakashi looked at this scene in astonishment. He could only watch the black flames surround them. Itachi reached out and grabbed Naruto's neck. He seemed to have released some kind of genjutsu because Naruto's eyes almost immediately became lifeless. Amaterasu's black flames quickly burned, blocking Kakashi's line of sight. Kakashi was burning with anxiety, and could only use his Kamui to extract Amaterasu's black flames, trying to open a passage. Inside the Kamui dimension. Obito hid inside. He was ordered to monitor the actions of Itachi and Naruto in the outside world. Suddenly, he felt a burning sensation in the Kamui space. At some unknown time, a space-time vortex had suddenly appeared in the Kamui space, and black flames were falling. His face couldn't help but darken. Why was everything being sent into the Kamui space? Kakashi this bastard, before you fucking use your Sharingan to attack, can you first consider if there was anyone living in the Kamui space? Bastard. Obito clenched his fist and clenched his teeth, Kakashi, wait for me to find out Itachi's secret, sooner or later, sooner or later, just you wait for me. Chapter 242, Uehara, this is the Kabuto, a newcomer who would join our Eye of the Moon plan. Inside the encirclement of Amaterasu. Itachi could only choose this place to meet Naruto because this was the only way that no one would notice what he had done. This was the backup plan he had left for Suzuki. Originally, when Itachi saw Suzuki treat his old friend, he had already decided to give up on Suzuki to return to Kanaha, but Naruto's actions made Itachi think that there was still hope for Sasuke's future. As long as Sasuke's friend was willing to accept Suzuki, Itachi thought that it was better for Suzuki to return to his hometown. Since Naruto was so determined to let Suzuki go back, Itachi wanted to put this layer of insurance on Naruto. Unfortunately, just as Itachi circled Naruto with Amaterasu, Naruto suddenly split out two shadow clones and quickly condensed the ninjutsu he had just learned. Fiton, Rasen Shuriken, Wind Release, Rasen Shuriken. Itachi's expression changed. Wasn't the difference in treatment too much? Was there such a big difference in treatment between a brother and a younger brother? When Naruto saw Suzuki, he only used a shadow clone and raised Nan. When he saw Itachi, he immediately shot a Rasen Shuriken. Itachi's face was a bit ugly. He stared at the Rasen Shuriken in Naruto's hand and pretended to be calm as he praised, a very terrifying wind ninjutsu. Even if I were hit, it would be very dangerous. This is something I worked hard to come up with. A confident smile appeared on Naruto's face as he said seriously, a ninjutsu specially prepared for you Akatsuki. What a pity. Itachi shook his head, and a red light flashed in his eyes, then why didn't you use this ninjutsu to attack Suzuki just now? Earlier he wanted to kill you. I treat Suzuki as my own brother. Naruto's face suddenly became solemn, and he said in a low voice, I am different from a guy like you. No matter what, I will never hurt Suzuki. Then let's find another place to talk. Itachi's complexion also became solemn. The three Tomo Sharingan in his eyes had already turned into a Mangekyo Sharingan and activated. Itachi's voice gradually became somewhat low, Tsukuyomi. In the next second, Naruto felt that the surrounding environment suddenly changed. He unexpectedly mysteriously appeared in a blood-red world. This was Itachi's Tsukuyomi space. I already know that you want to take Suzuki back to Kanaha. Itachi's figure floated in the air and slowly asked, Naruto, 
you saw just now that Suzuki wanted to kill you. If he and Akatsuki attacked Kanaha in the future, what would you choose? Itachi's voice seemed to be full of enchantment, and his voice was a little ethereal, between Kanaha and Suzuki, what would you choose? To protect Kanaha or choose to kill Suzuki? As a ninja, sometimes you have to make some cruel choices in the face of certain situations. Ha, huh, this kind of choice? I won't choose it. Naruto coldly looked at Itachi, clenched his fist, and said, I will protect Kanaha, and I won't kill Suzuki. Itachi slowly lowered his eyes and sighed, Hmm? What a naive. Hey. Naruto suddenly interrupted Itachi and grinned. He fiddled with his ninja and said loudly, Actually, I have always hated people like you. But last time, I felt that the guy called Sasori was right. Naruto stared at him and said word by word, How can a ninja kill his companions for the village? Then this is not about forgetting the existence of the village, but it is actually to protect your companions. Naruto suddenly raised his fist. He said, so I will protect Kanaha, and I will definitely save Suzuki from Akatsuki. If you have something to say, just say it. This is my ninja way. Itachi looked at Naruto in shock. At this moment, Itachi could not help but want to believe him. This little brat called Naruto was really not simple. Suzuki was really lucky to meet such a friend. In the sky of Tsukuyomi space, countless crows began to fly. Itachi's voice gradually became more and more hollow it was as if everywhere. I will give you my power as a guarantee that you will not kill each other one day. I hope this power will never be used. In the next moment, Naruto's eyes narrowed because a crow had entered his mouth out of thin air and was even swallowed into his stomach. What the hell was this thing? Unfortunately, in the Tsukuyomi space, Naruto was unable to resist at all and could only let Itachi put the crow into his mouth. After doing all of this, a faint smile appeared on Itachi's face. The blood in the sky gradually began to dissipate, and the Tsukuyomi space collapsed in the blink of an eye. After the Tsukuyomi ended, Naruto involuntarily knelt on the ground, wanting to spit out the crow that had been swallowed into his stomach, what the hell is going on? Hey, Naruto, are you alright? Kakashi used his Kamui and finally absorbed all of Amaterasu's flame into his Kamui space, and somewhat worriedly rushed over. Kakashi lowered his head and stroked Naruto's forehead, then said in a low voice, Itachi, did you use your own Mangekyo Sharingan on Naruto? Well, that's it. Itachi slowly closed his eyes, as if he did not care about Kakashi at all. His whole body turned into countless crows flying in the air. At the same time, Kisame also saw this scene. He pulled out of the battlefield and shouted, Itachi-san, let's retreat now. Okay. Itachi nodded. After ensuring that the news of the retreat was spread to Uehara, Kisame stroked his ring and whispered, Painsama, Kakuzu and the others have already retreated to the safe zone, right? Can our cover forces retreat as well? Pain had yet to answer. Instead, Diadera, who was controlling the shapeshift puppet, responded, All of you, retreat. Leave the follow-up pursuit of Kanaha ninjas to me. I want to show you what true art is. Sure. Pain nodded and ordered in a low voice, Then the two of you can withdraw. The rest of the task of blocking and chasing will be left to Diadera and Sasori to solve. The battle has ended. After spending a lot of strength, the six members finally retreated to Country of Rain's territory. It seemed that everyone had their own goal in this battle. After the explosion of Diadera's shapeshift puppet, it directly blocked Kanaha the possibility of chasing Akatsuki, and Kaimimuro's shapeshift puppet was defeated by the joint attack of Lee and Niji, and the Haku shapeshift puppet dissipated because of the exhaustion of Chakra. On the other battlefield, Kakashi and Guy looked at the strange corpses, and their faces were a bit ugly. They seemed to have been played by Akatsuki. Captain Kakashi. Coincidentally, at this time, Sai came to deliver an urgent message. He hurriedly said, Jiraiya-sama and the others were intercepted, so they were unable to rush to the battlefield. Intercept. Yes. Sai jumped off the bird and said with a nervous expression, 3rd and 4th Hokage blocked Jiraiya-sama's team. 2nd Hokage and 2nd Mizu Cage blocked 5th Hokage-sama's team. Impure World Reincarnation. Kakashi immediately reacted. Sai nodded and said in a deep voice, Yes, maybe it is Orochimaru's doing. Jiraiya-sama is still holding on, but Tsunade-sama's team. They are almost on the verge of collapse. Sai's report was not wrong. Jiraiya and Inoshikacho could still hold on. 
it was purely because 4th Hokage Minato had simply used Sage Arts. Otherwise, Minato, who had activated Kyuubai mode, was not someone they could easily contend with. Everyone knew. Minato's battle had never been delayed. After all, he was the fastest man in the world. As for Tsunade, Terumi, Gara, and Uehara's team, they really couldn't hold on. It was because Uehara personally controlled 2nd Hokage to fight. This was very awkward for their battle situation. Especially in the current situation, 2nd Hokage almost played with their team by himself. 2nd Mizukage only put a few water cannons on the side to support. Gara stood on the sand cushion and crazily circulated the chakra in his body. He controlled the ground to turn into yellow sand and swept towards 2nd Hokage, Risa Bakuri, quicksand waterfall flow. However, what greeted Gara was the ninjutsu released by 2nd Hokage Tobirama. Sudden, the Kyuzui Shha, water release, exploding water colliding wave. In the blink of an eye, countless yellow suna were dispersed by the water wave. If Uehara had not released a water formation wall to block the attack, the four of them would have been swept away by the waves. While Uehara was enjoying himself, he received news from other places. After Obito confirmed that Itachi had used Tsukuyomi on Naruto and Naruto seemed to be in a good state. Perhaps Itachi had handed over Kota Amitsukami's crow? After thinking for a while, Uehara raised his finger and asked the ninjas under his control to retreat and end this big show. As for what happened next, it was to test Itachi. Several of Impure World Reincarnation's Hokage retreated one after another. Tsunade and Jiraiya finally gathered together and also got the losses in this battle. Because they inexplicably encountered the interception of Impure World Reincarnation, the biggest credit for the Kanaha ninjas was actually Gai and Kakashi 2 team. Their biggest achievement was actually killing several puppets of Akatsuki organization. Since they could not capture the members of Akatsuki, Uehara, Terumi, and Gara did not stay and quickly left the country of fire. Tsunade was about to explode from anger. This time, she lost a lot of face in the alliance. Find out where Orochimaru is. After Tsunade returned to Kanaha, she shouted at the Anbu, If he is alive, I want to see him in person. If he is a dead, I want to see his corpse. What if we find him? Jiraiya rubbed his forehead and asked, Orochimaru has more than five cage level characters in his hands. Do we have the ability to kill him? Besides, why did he help Akatsuki? At the very least, we need to find out his information first. Tsunade clenched her fists and said coldly, whether it is Orochimaru or Akatsuki, we must gather all the information as soon as possible. All right. Jiraiya sighed and said, seeing Minato this time is not all bad news. I also found a new idea to train Naruto. I must let Naruto learn Sage Mode and let him slowly try to communicate with Kyuubai. Minato had been using Sage Mode in the battle, but he said that he had to remove Kyuubai Mode because the power of Kyuubai Mode was too strong. This made Jiraiya have a new idea. Naruto might become the new hope of Kanaha. Yes. Tsunade looked at Jiraiya and whispered, If we want to destroy Akatsuki, our strength is a bit lacking. In addition to training the younger generation in the village, we might need to find a way to pull some other helpers. What helpers? Hands so. Tsunade closed her palm and said in a deep voice, If we meet with Akatsuki again, we must gather all the forces we can gather to have a chance to catch them all in one fell swoop. Originally, I didn't want to borrow that old man's strength. That fellow, Hanzo. Jiraiya recalled that they had almost lost their lives when they met Hanzo when they were young, and he couldn't help but sigh, that fellow is indeed very strong. If he can join forces with us and participate in a siege against Akatsuki, eliminating Akatsuki will indeed be possible. The problem is that Hanzo is unwilling to come out. Tsunade pressed her forehead with a headache and explained softly, before that little brat Uehara left. I asked him to make this request to Hanzo. That little brat only said that he would report to Hanzo, but the result is not certain. Then there is no other way. Jiraiya waved his hand and smiled, rather than believing in that guy, it's better to believe that Naruto will create a miracle. I'll send Naruto to Mount Mayaboka first. Kanaha's side was a little depressed. Akatsuki's side was rather lively. Uehara felt that since Kabuto had already stepped forward to help, it would be better to take this opportunity to show up and accept Black Zetsu's recruitment to join Akatsuki's organization and Eye of the Moon Plan's small team. Therefore, when Uehara returned to Akatsuki's organization base, Black Zetsu eagerly introduced Kabuto to Uehara, this is Kabuto, a newcomer who has joined our Eye of the Moon Plan. You should know Uehara, right? 
We have met before. Uehara stretched out his palm towards Kabuto, looked at him coldly and said, I didn't expect to see you here one day. Orochimaru's lackey. At this moment, he seemed to have a deep hatred for Kabuto. Just when Black Zetsu wanted to open his mouth to persuade him, Uehara looked at Kabuto and continued to warn him, Kabuto, since Senpai invited you to join Eye of the Moon Plan, I hope you can live up to Senpai's expectations. I just want to see how interesting Eye of the Moon Plan will be. Kabuto curled the corners of his mouth and slowly pushed his glasses, staring at Uehara like a snake. He he he, it will definitely be very interesting. This Eye of the Moon plan can bring peace to the whole world and your arrival has made our strength stronger. After a few sinister laughs, Black Zetsu was satisfied to see Uehara's performance just now. He whispered, in the future, Kabuto, you will listen to Uehara's will in Akatsuki. He is now the person in charge of our Eye of the Moon plan. Yes. Kabuto nodded humbly. As for Kabuto, he began to think about how Black Zetsu was formed. There was something wrong with the intelligence of this creature. It was similar to White Zetsu, right? There were a total of three people left in the Eye of the Moon plan. Other than Black Zetsu, there were also Uehara and Kisame who was Uehara's undercover agent. The newly joined Kabuto. He was also Uehara's undercover agent. This Eye of the Moon plan had already become an absolute leaking sieve. Regardless of whether it progress or not, every segment had been completely controlled by Uehara. How could a thing like Black Zetsu laugh happily? F asterisking retard. Black Zetsu did not know that Kabuto was questioning its IQ. Black Zetsu was really happy. It was indeed sincerely eager for Kabuto to join, so it could ask Kabuto about the progress of reviving Madara. It was a pity that Kabuto was an old spy. Faced with Black Zetsu's indirect criticism, Kabuto directly responded with the professionalism of a scientist, according to my judgment, Madara's resurrection is far from his heyday. It is a bit too wasteful to resurrect him now. Okay. Black Zetsu nodded and said in a low voice, If you need any help, you can come to me directly if you need any materials. Okay. The corners of Kabuto's mouth curved up. After Black Zetsu left, Kabuto lowered his head at Uehara and said respectfully, Narakusama, Madara's resurrection is ready. Wait for my notice. Uehara raised his eyebrows and led Kabuto to Akatsuki's base. He asked, Do you know where Suijitsu is? Bring him here. Yes. Kabuto nodded. Uehara looked at the wooden Torii gate at the entrance of Akatsuki's base and narrowed his eyes, then let Mangetsu and Suijitsu fight with each other before the fight between Uchiha's brother. Chapter 243, Akatsuki organized a group to eat melon seed. Akatsuki's base. Everyone was celebrating. Akatsuki's members had also eaten melon seeds for several years and watched Itachi and his brother's family drama for several years. Now, they finally saw the big ending between the two brothers. Diodera was undoubtedly the happiest one among them. As one of Itachi's victims, Diodera really wished he could immediately release a pile of clay bombs to celebrate the great ending of Itachi and Suzuki. I really want to start soon. Diodera held his little face and looked at Itachi and Suzuki. His eyes slowly filled with longing, I must detonate a Garu, a to celebrate the loss of another Uchiha in this world. Sasori looked at his companion speechlessly. He could not help but reach out and knock his head, Diodera, be rational. Their duel has not been arranged yet. It should be in a few days. Kakuzu shook his head and muttered a few words in a low voice. In fact, Kakuzu really didn't like the Uchiha brother very much. The two Uchiha in the organization were very good at spending money. Especially for this duel, Itachi went to the Granny Cat Ninja shop in Kanaha and spent 4 million Ryo for the duel. 4 million tails, just to let the organization watch a play? Damn, it's a bit of a waste. Can't you watch a free play? Tendo Pain stood on Gedo Mazo's finger and asked, Itachi, when do you plan to deal with the matter between you and Suzuki? You can fight freely with Suzuki. I will guarantee that no one will interfere with your duel. Thank you very much. Itachi slowly closed his eyes. After thinking for a while, he said softly, then let's arrange the time for the duel the day after tomorrow. The location is in a hideout of our Uchiha clan. Okay. Suzuki grinned and revealed a crazy smile, then the day after tomorrow, when I kill you, I will be there to pay homage to our dead people. Really, don't be too impatient. A figure suddenly appeared beside Suzuki and patted him on the shoulder. It was Uehara. Uehara looked up at the people present and chuckled, 
in order to ease the atmosphere between Itachi-san and Suzuki, why don't we first take a look at the battle between the other brothers and help them warm up the place? Two figures slowly walked in. One of them was wearing a hat, and it was Kabuto. The other person looked a little scrawled and looked a little familiar. It was Mainjutsu's younger brother, Suijutsu. When Diodera saw Suijutsu appear, his eyes lit up, oh, the other big brother drama is about to start. Suijutsu muttered, hey, didn't you say that I could kill that bastard Mangetsu if you brought me here? Where is he now? Bang! Suijutsu, who was still talking, was kicked in the face by someone, causing a large splash of water in an instant. It was the hydrification technique that could defend against physical attacks. Suijutsu's face gradually returned to its original state. He grabbed the leg that had attacked him with one hand and looked at the man who had attacked him. He chuckled, Hey, big brother, you are not the only one who can use our clan's hydrification. Isn't it too irrational for you to attack me so rashly? You haven't grown up yet, Suijutsu. Mangetsu sighed and slowly shook his head, Don't you know what it means to appear here alone? Kukiyos Kaiba. In the next moment, Ringo's thunder blade appeared in Mangetsu's hand and directly struck Suijutsu. A string of lightning surrounded Suijutsu. In the next second, Suijutsu lay on the ground in a sorry state. In just a short moment, the battle between the brothers had ended. It was still the result of his brother beating up his younger brother. There was really no other way. The hydrification was countered by the lightning ninjutsu. This is too unfair. Uehara looked at Ringo who had taken out her ninja blade, then looked at Suijutsu who had been knocked to the ground with sympathy. He chuckled and said, Suijutsu is a new member of our organization. Sasori Senpai, give me that ninja blade. Okay. Sasori nodded and took out the Kyobikarib he had taken from Bulet and Jean before. He threw it to Uehara. This is too dangerous. Uehara reached out and took the ninja blade. He walked to Suijutsu's side and squatted down then inserted the Kyobikarib in front of him, what I promised you will definitely come true. But you little brat, don't let me down too much. After putting down the Kyobikarib, Uehara looked at Mangetsu and said, since the battle between Itachi and his brother will be settled the day after tomorrow, how about it? This. Mangetsu hesitated. Since Mangetsu brought Ringo back to Akatsuki's organization, it had been a long time since he saw Suijutsu. However, Mangetsu knew that his younger brother had always been protected in the ninja world. It was obviously Uehara's arrangement. In the moment of the fight just now, Mangetsu found that his younger brother did not seem to have made much progress, which made Mangetsu feel a little uncomfortable. Uehara patted Mangetsu on the shoulder and chuckled, You have to fight seriously, lest you accidentally kill your younger brother and teach him a lesson. Yes. Mangetsu nodded and agreed. The next day. All members of Akatsuki's organization were watching the battle between the Hojiki brother. Uehara had originally thought that Mangetsu would go easy on him. After fighting with all his might and losing to his younger brother, he planned to save him at any time. Unexpectedly, Mangetsu didn't hold back at all and beat his younger brother Suijutsu very badly. Even though Suijutsu was holding Kyobikaribj, he was easily defeated by Mangetsu holding Hiramekarei. It was originally a scene of brother's revenge, but it was played by Mangetsu and his younger brother into a funny comedy scene. Uehara looked confused. Why didn't Mangetsu go easy on him? That seemed to be right. There was no need for Mangetsu to go easy on him. There was no serious illness on his body. Is this his younger brother? Didn't Mangetsu sacrifice a lot for his younger brother? What the hell is going on? Why is he so ruthless to his younger brother? Is this Mangetsu lying to us? The members of Akatsuki's organization were also at a loss. When Mangetsu joined Akatsuki's organization, he had mentioned that he was trying to temper his younger brother. He hoped that everyone would be generous when they saw his younger brother. Ringo was also a member who knew the truth. He explained, maybe Suijutsu's strength is too weak. He can't satisfy brother Mangetsu. Kisame grinned and said, it seems that the first battle between brothers in our organization was won by the elder brother. After Kisame finished speaking, he glanced at Itachi meaningfully and continued with a chuckle, will the second match still be like this? It should be like this, right? The members of Akatsuki had long recognized Itachi's strength. They all believed that Itachi would win in a life and death duel. After all, Mangetsu, the elder brother who loved his younger brother very much, had beaten his younger brother very badly. Would Itachi, 
the guy who used his younger brother as a training target for Genjutsu all day long, directly chops Suzuki into seven or eight pieces. After thinking for a while, Kakuzu suddenly suggested, I will open a bet tomorrow. I will be the dealer. Is there anyone who wants to bet? Kakuzu wanted to take the opportunity to earn some money. Unfortunately, Akatsuki's organization prohibited gambling. The immediate result after the battle of the Hojiki brother was that Uehara had received an invitation from Suzuki. This little bastard was really a little unconfident. Suzuki knocked on Uehara's door, Hey, Uehara, didn't you say last time that you would fight with me and test my strength? Yes. Uehara nodded. Who doesn't like to cut leeks? Now that Suzuki had grown a bunch of leeks, it was just enough to cut one. Suzuki clenched his fists and said in a deep voice, then let's go this afternoon. Let's find a place to avoid being discovered by others. Okay. Uehara agreed very readily. In order not to delay the duel between Suzuki and Itachi, Uehara even said that he would provide medical service to ensure that the duel between them would not be delayed. After agreeing with Suzuki, Uehara immediately told Kisame about this matter and let Kisame secretly tell Itachi. In the lake outside of Akatsuki's organization base. In addition to the two contestants, Uehara and Suzuki, there were also Kisame and Itachi who secretly watched. Uehara stood by the lake and slowly sat down. A water chair appeared under his body, holding him back. The attainments of this water ninjutsu were indeed astonishing. Suzuki looked at this scene with some surprise on his face. Uehara leaned his head against the chair and said softly, Apart from the Mangekyo Sharingan, I can simulate any other ninjutsu, teijutsu, and genjutsu. I will try my best to simulate them. Okay. Suzuki nodded and said in a low voice, Anyway, I have already thought of a way to crack that guy, Tsukuyomi. Then let me test it out. Uehara slowly raised his head and looked at Suzuki. The two blue-colored chakras in his hand flew towards Suzuki like threads, and under the astonished gaze of Suzuki, it entered his brain. Uehara slowly moved his fingers, controlling those two blue-colored chakras. His voice gradually became somewhat illusory, Suzuki, this genjutsu will let people experience the most terrifying nightmare in their life in two seconds. Can you really crack it? Ah! Suzuki screamed in pain. In the next moment, Suzuki knelt down on one knee. The boundless blood stained his mind and the nightmare that he would never forget in his life once again hit his brain. Suzuki had never expected that he would be hit by Uehara's genjutsu right after the battle had just begun. The scene was still the same night of the Uchiha genocide. What kind of hell was this? Who would use their ultimate move the moment they came up? Two seconds later. Suzuki panted and glared at Uehara. The anger in his eyes almost overflowed, Uehara, what genjutsu is this? Worldless fear, it is just an insignificant genjutsu. It is countless times weaker than Itachi's Tsukuyomi. Uehara leaned on the water chair and slowly waved his fingers. He released his chakra and looked at Suzuki with cold eyes. He smiled and said, Now, do you really think you can crack Tsukuyomi? There is one thing you are right about. Suzuki slowly stood up and pulled out his ninja blade again, Your genjutsu is indeed a lot weaker than Tsukuyomi's, but I am no longer the same me from the past. I have long been used to this level of genjutsu attack. Sasuke's eyes gradually turned into a pair of scarlet red eyes. He stared at Uehara and said, don't use this little trick anymore. Let's do something else. The fear of that night, I dream about it almost every day. Very good. Uehara patted his palm and praised softly, it's this kind of unyielding fighting spirit. Suzuki, I'm starting to like you a little. Chapter 244, Even a Dying Person Was Calculated Uehara waved his hand, and the countless water droplets in the lake transformed into the appearance of shuriken, slowly floating in the air. Water shuriken. In the next moment, these shuriken rapidly shot towards Suzuki. Suzuki was awe-inspiring and fearless. His Sharingan could clearly see all the traces of shuriken, and Suzuki couldn't help but smile, hee hee, do you want to compete with an Uchiha in the shuriken throwing technique? Countless shuriken flew out from Sasuke's hands. In the blink of an eye, Suzuki had destroyed all of the water shuriken that Uehara had created. After all the water shuriken had been defeated, Sasuke's figure suddenly charged towards Uehara. The ninja blade in his hand drew an arc. However, Uehara's figure flashed and suddenly collided with Suzuki. He grabbed his wrist and kicked his abdomen, sending him flying. Uehara closed his palm and began to form seals. 
This scene could not help but make Suzuki smile. He threw out a huge shuriken and laughed wildly, the speed of your hand seals is so slow that it is comparable to that fellow Itachi. N. Uehara could only give up the hand seal. After he turned around to avoid shuriken, he suddenly raised his eyebrows and said, is Itachi's hand seal also very slow? Humph, about the same. Suzuki nodded. A thread suddenly appeared in his hand and pulled shuriken towards Uehara, over the years. I have carefully observed that his hand seals are not very fast. It is good enough that he can make two hand seals in a second. Uehara allowed the mechanism Shuriken to shoot at his thigh. He forcefully pulled out Shuriken and waved his hand to heal his wound. To be honest, he was a little curious. Itachi was too arrogant. He hadn't been discovered by Suzuki for such a long time. Didn't Kakashi tell Suzuki that his brother could actually make six hand seals in a second? Suzuki grinned contemptuously. He looked at himself with satisfaction as he interrupted Uehara's ninjutsu. A ball of lightning appeared on his fingertips and he said, Akatsuki member hand seals are very slow. I am a little grateful for Kakashi. Because I have seen his battle before, I know that the speed of the ninja seals can be as fast as his. Uehara didn't know what to say. Actually, it was understandable that the speed of Kisame's hand seals was slow. After all, the power of the ninjutsu released by Kisame was very strong and he needed to mobilize the chakra in his body. This guy Itachi, was really good at acting. On the other side, Kisame, who was peeping, looked at Itachi and asked in a low voice, Itachi-san, how long have Sasuke's symptoms been going on? Didn't he notice that your hand seals are very fast? Itachi looked at Kisame speechlessly. He calmly shook his head and said, don't you already know? If my hand seals are too fast, Suzuki won't be able to use his Sharingan to copy the ninjutsu I want to teach him. After he finished speaking, Itachi added, If my hand seals are too fast or too slow, it will be easy for Suzuki to notice the flaws. As expected of you, Itachi-san. Kisame looked at Itachi with a face full of admiration. He gently shook his head and sighed, One or two hand seals in a second, even I can't even do this kind of thing. Cough cough. Itachi coughed a few times and changed the topic. Uehara's hand seals are not fast. Is he also hiding his strength? Hehe, <laughs> that's not hiding. Dot. Kisame looked at Uehara's hand seals and could not help but twitch his eyes, that guy's hand seals are very slow, so he is not very good at using ninjutsu. After Kisame finished speaking, he grinned and said, forget it, let's not talk about him. In fact, that guy was just lucky and got the favor of Pain and Conan. As long as he can form the hand seals of the summoning technique, it is enough. Is he only good at the summoning technique? Itachi secretly nodded his head, it doesn't feel like it. His water ninjutsu should be very strong. Tomorrow was actually the day of his death. Itachi didn't care too much, at least he could confirm that Uehara was no threat to Suzuki. In the lake. The battle between Uehara and Suzuki had reached its climax. Suzuki opened his mouth and spat out a fireball, which swept towards Uehara, Katon. Gaki no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Fireball Technique. Fire Release, Pyroclasm. Uehara closed his palm and released a flame, but this Fire Ninjutsu was obviously not a match for Sasuke's Fireball and was about to be defeated. In a hurry, Uehara could only close his hand again and shout in a low voice, Sudden, Suairi Dan no Jutsu, Water Release, Water Dragon Bullet Technique. A water dragon attacked from the lake extinguished Sasuke's flame. This environment is too advantageous for you to fight. Seeing this scene, Suzuki couldn't help but shake his head and sigh, but your water ninjutsu doesn't seem to be very powerful. Is that so? Uehara suddenly closed his palm. He looked at Suzuki and said in a low voice, This is my strongest water ninjutsu, but it will take a long time to prepare. I think you will give me time, right? Of course. Suzuki smiled and said, We are just practicing. If we really fight, you won't have the chance to use it. Of course, if it's really a life and death battle, I don't have the confidence to defeat you. After all, this guy, Uehara, broke his lightning Kirin with one finger. Suzuki knew that Uehara was helping him practice, so he quietly watched Uehara begin to form seals. But the time to form seals. It's a little long. Sasuke's face became darker and darker, because Uehara had already made 40 to 50 hand seals and the time he took to make hand seals was almost one minute. What kind of fucking ninjutsu was this? 
Just when Suzuki was finally impatient, Uehara finally finished 56 handprints and shouted in a low voice, Water release, the giant god of water. In the next moment, countless waves surged out from the ground. Streams of water snaked around Uehara's feet, slowly wrapping him up and dragging him into the air. The water in the lake continued to flow. These streams of water gradually began to flow in a strange direction in the air, as if there was a fixed pipe in the air that made them flow. It made people look extremely strange. However, Suzuki soon saw the full appearance of the water flow. The water flow actually formed a human shape in the air. In a daze, it was about to gather into a huge monster. This water flow actually formed a water giant that was even bigger than the hydrification of the Hojiki clan. When it was even more amazing, this water giant was vivid and lifelike. It was also covered in layers of scales and armor pieces. In its hand was a thick sword. Just by looking at it, it was quite powerful. After obtaining the water power, Uehara was very relaxed in controlling the water. This was only the application of the water power. Kisame, who was watching from afar, revealed a touch of surprise on his face. He could not help but say, this little brat Uehara actually has this kind of ninjutsu. Itachi calmly nodded his head and said, this is very normal. Just now, Uehara's manipulation of water can be seen that he is actually very good at water ninjutsu. However, his attainments are indeed shocking. Itachi-san seems not surprised. Kisame shook his head and said in a low voice, even I didn't know that Uehara had actually mastered water techniques to such an extent. It's easy to see through some minor details. Itachi also shook his head and sighed softly, however, this move requires the advantage of the terrain. Moreover, the speed of Uehara's casting is not fast enough. In a real battle, others will attack before his technique is finished. It is even possible that before he can finish forming his hand seals, the enemy will directly attack him. Everything was within Itachi's expectations. As expected, Itachi had guessed correctly. Uehara was indeed very good at water ninjutsu. Yet. Kisame faintly sighed, this technique actually has more than 50 hand seals, which have exceeded the record of the water dragon bullet, right? Well. Itachi nodded and continued softly, but it is also very normal. After all, this is a technique that can change the battlefield. Although this water giant had yet to display much strength, just its size alone was already more powerful than the Suzanu. It was just that there were a lot of flaws. Itachi had already come up with a bunch of messy ways to break the water giant. There were simply too many ways to break this technique. If Uehara stood in front of him, Itachi could guarantee that it was impossible for Uehara to successfully cast the technique. Below the ground. Obito was hiding in the Kamui space. Obito was constantly transmitting the conversation between Itachi and Kisame to Uehara, which was why Uehara had adjusted his fighting style just now. Now, he touched his chin and was thinking about a question. Why did Uehara act for Itachi to see? Tomorrow, after the battle between Itachi and Suzuki ended, Itachi should die on the spot, right? After Itachi died, Uehara should be able to resurrect and control Itachi with impure world reincarnation, right? Why did Uehara treat Itachi like this? Although he felt that there was something that didn't make sense, it was a pity that Obito couldn't figure it out. Forget it, if you can't figure it out, then don't think about it. Obito shook his head. He looked at Uehara who was fighting with Suzuki in the distance, what a shameless guy. He even schemed against a person who was going to die. Chapter 245, A Group of People Who Watch the Excitement Itachi had already learned from Kisame that after he joined Akatsuki's organization, someone had started to plot against him and Sasuke's lives. Itachi had never thought that someone would continue to plot against Sasuke's life after his death. Some people even wanted to resurrect a tragic dead person for their own use. It was a little inappropriate to be a human. It seems that this battle is about to end. Itachi looked at the water giant summoned by Uehara whose joints had been burned by Sasuke's fire technique and directly cracked this powerful technique. Kisame also nodded and smiled, Uehara's technique has always relied on the terrain. It seems that in the future if we want to deal with this kid, we need to find a suitable place to fight. That's right. Itachi slowly nodded. Perhaps it was because there was no powerful bloodline in their body, some ninjas would try their best to strengthen the power of their ninjutsu. Ninjas. In order to survive, you must do whatever you can. On the lake. In order to get rid of Uehara's water giant, Suzuki almost exhausted his chakra. 
he could only helplessly watch Uehara rush over and punch him down. Uehara looked at the defeated Suzuki and then looked at the reward brought by defeating Suzuki again. His face revealed a surprised expression. Side mission, defeat Uchiha Suzuki, Akatsuki, 1 slash 1, dot. Mission completed. Reward, perseverance, passive, dot. Perseverance, passive life energy recovery rate increased by 100%, dot. This reward was a bit strange. And it shouldn't be in this kind of reward, right? What does Suzuki have in this period? There didn't seem to be any shortcomings, but of course, he didn't have any merits. No, there was still some. He had absolute confidence. So the system rewarded these things? Uehara helplessly shook his head and slapped Sasuke's body. A majestic life energy and chakra energy poured into Sasuke's body. This chakra instantly restored Suzuki to his peak strength. This kind of healing ability. A trace of surprise flashed across Sasuke's face. In the past, he had also received treatment, but it was just an ordinary healing. He did not expect that Uehara could directly let him enter his peak state. This was also normal. With the healing effect brought by astral infusion, Uehara could directly restore more than 20,000 life energy and chakra energy. Except for Nagato who constantly consumes his life energy. With such a medical ninja, what opponent could not win? Moreover, Uehara also had summoned beast-like ancient dragon. As Suzuki thought about it, he suddenly felt a little unconfident. Damn, who doesn't want such a teammate? Why did he not become his teammate? To be honest, Suzuki was really a little greedy. This kind of teammate was too helpful for Suzuki, who was more concerned about benefits now. Uehara did not expect Suzuki to be greedy for him. He just patted Suzuki on the shoulder like a senpai and said, Well, take a rest and prepare for the final battle tomorrow. I believe you will definitely defeat Itachi. Well. Suzuki nodded thoughtfully. After their battle ended, Kisame and Itachi, who was secretly watching from afar, naturally withdrew from this area and returned to Akatsuki's base. After a night. Itachi and Suzuki woke up in the early morning. The two brothers tacitly put on their clothes, packed up their ninja tools, and walked out of Akatsuki's base. Obviously, they planned to leave early before the members of Akatsuki's organization woke up, so as not to be surrounded by a group of people like yesterday's brother Hojiki's duel. And according to the time of their journey, they will set off at this time, and they will arrive at Uchiha hideout at noon. Unfortunately, all the members of the Akatsuki organization woke up early. Because today was the day of the duel between Uchiha brother, Nagato would be stationed at the base of Akatsuki and Omega Kure. He only sent Tendo Pain to preside over it and watch it. Even Konan came to be an audience. The duel between Uchiha brother was already a big event of Akatsuki's organization. It seemed to be much more important than capturing Baijuu. What's going on? Itachi frowned and looked at the group waiting for them at the entrance of the organization base. His forehead could not help but twitch. Is there a mission today? These people should not be here to watch their brothers fight, right? No way, right? How could there be people like to watch brothers fight each other? There is no special mission. Uehara spread out his fingers, looked around the people present, and said softly, Everyone volunteered to help you, help you expel any ninjas near the combat area, so as not to be disturbed. Naraku is right. Konan stood next to Uehara and helped her disciple hold an umbrella. This woman seemed to dote on her disciple more and more. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Diodera smiled so much that his eyes narrowed. Those who did not know would really think that this bastard was willing to help others. Kakuzu hugged his arm and snorted in boredom, Humph, I have nothing to do anyway. That's right. Haydn nodded. He reached out and grabbed the strange religious decoration on his chest. He slowly closed his eyes and said piously, I will pray to Jashin Sama for you. I wish you, brothers, to perish together. Haydn was really a ruthless person. There was actually such a magical prayer. Sasori sized up Itachi and then looked at Suzuki. He said softly, if you two are interested, you can sign a voluntary donation agreement with me in advance. After one of you is killed, I can help you make a puppet and let you obtain eternal life. It could be seen that Sasori was also a ruthless person. Kabuto, who had just joined Akatsuki's organization two days ago, was more normal. He just pushed his glasses and whispered, Orochimaru-sama never forgot about Uchiha before he died. 
I came here to send his old friend from Kanaha to his hometown on his behalf. Why did Orochimaru never forget Uchiha? Who didn't know about it? This guy, Kabuto, should often lie through his teeth. Haku's answer was a little tactful. He just looked at Suzuki and Itachi and said, everyone occasionally drinks iced juice together. In fact, I feel very sad for every companion who may die. I am with Haku. Kimimaro said concisely. A smile appeared on half of Zetsu's face. He whispered, no one would want to miss the battle of Mangekyo Sharingan, right? The other half of Zetsu's face revealed a touch of sinister color, he lightly smiled and said, after all, I might be able to see a technique at the level of Amaterasu. Suijitsu grinned, looked at Suzuki, and said, Hey, that guy called Suzuki, I bet you will win. You must kill your own brother. Itachi. Mangetsu looked at Itachi meaningfully and whispered, Don't lose face for us as brothers. Kill your own brother without mercy. Tisk. Ringo shook her head and no longer spoke. Kisame grinned, revealing a mouthful of shark teeth, If Itachi-san lives, then I will help you clean up your brother's body. If Itachi-san dies in battle, I will help you take care of your body. Itachi. Suzuki. The two brothers looked at each other. At this moment, the two of them suddenly didn't want to fight. They really wanted to kill this group of people who wanted to see the world in chaos. This group of people in Akatsuki was indeed very curious. After Suzuki joined Akatsuki's organization, they began to look forward to today's events. They had been waiting for the duel between Itachi and Suzuki. Now, it was finally here. This was simply a fucking lifetime series. It was a pity for Zabuza. He had waited for so many years in vain. Before this big play was about to end, he died on the mission of capturing Sanbai. All right. Payne finally stood up and spoke in a fair tone. He looked at Itachi and Suzuki, he said, Itachi, Suzuki, other than helping you expel the enemies nearby, we also want to send the loser off. After all, we are also companions in name. A companion in name was also a companion. Uehara nodded and closed his palm. He said softly, with so many of us, it seems like we have to summon the ancient dragon as a mount. This way, it won't delay your duel time. Sure, sure. Diodera nodded quickly. Itachi and Suzuki looked at each other. It seemed that they had no way to refuse this group of people spying. The two brothers actually felt a little sympathy for each other before the final battle of life and death. An ancient dragon fell from the sky against the torrential rain. All of Akatsuki's members lined up and climbed onto the ancient dragon one by one. They sat on the back of the ancient dragon, and no one disturbed the formation. The best seats were naturally reserved for today's main characters. Itachi and Suzuki sat in the middle of Akatsuki's group, and a group of people was spying on them from the side, making them feel a little prickly on their backs. Uehara flew to Konan's side and knocked on the ancient dragon's scales. He chuckled and said, All right, let's go. Roar. The ancient dragon roared towards the sky. In the next moment, the ancient dragon spread its wings and leaped into the air. Its wings flapped slowly as it flew towards the location of the duel with more than ten members of Akatsuki. Chapter 246, Uchiha Suzuki, Fortunately, you haven't changed. The ancient dragon was very fast. And they arrived at their destination. Uehara looked down at the barren land. He looked at Itachi and Suzuki and said, Itachi-san, Suzuki, do you need our help to turn this place into a flat ground? It will be fair. There's no need. Itachi shook his head and stood up from the ancient dragon. His voice was somewhat depressed as he said, This used to be a hideout built by our Uchiha clan. Now, let it witness the final fate of our clan. Then, shall we help reinforce it? To prevent you from destroying it. After Uehara finished speaking, he turned around and looked at everyone present. He loudly said, which senpai here is good at earth ninjutsu? No need. Itachi hurriedly interrupted Uehara. He felt that there was something wrong with Uehara's brain. Why did he have to interfere in everything? Itachi sighed in his heart. Looking at Uehara's puzzled gaze, he softly explained, Today, Suzuki and I are destined to have one person die here. Then let this stronghold be his burial place. Yes. Suzuki hurriedly nodded. Uehara waved his hand and controlled the ancient dragon to descend. He softly called out to Akatsuki and the audience, then let's go in and find a suitable location. Itachi. Suzuki. Under the speechless gazes of the Uchiha brothers, 
this group of Akatsuki's members entered Uchiha's hideout, each choosing a suitable spot to watch. Pain sat on the stone chair of Uchiha's hideout. After watching Itachi and Suzuki enter, he remembered his responsibility as the host. Tap. 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 Pain gently tapped his finger on the stone chair and watched as Itachi and Suzuki stopped in their tracks. His voice suddenly became cold. We can start now. Before Pain could finish speaking, Suzuki had already pulled out his ninja blade and slashed at Itachi who was beside him. With just one slash, he cut open Itachi's chest. The corners of Sasuke's mouth curled up as he stared at Itachi who was lying on the ground. Just as he was about to say something, a cry of surprise interrupted his thoughts. Wow! Diodera was shocked by this slash. He never concealed himself. The others immediately looked at Diodera with great dissatisfaction, thinking that this guy really destroyed the murderous atmosphere on the scene. But there was another person who destroyed the atmosphere even more. Clap clap clap! Uehara slowly stretched out his hands to clap. Under the speechless gazes of the crowd, he raised his palm and praised, whether it is Sasuke's sharp blade or Itachi-san's crow substitute, they are all worthy of us applauding for them, right? Everyone present looked at each other for a while. It seemed that what Uehara said was a little reasonable. Just that one slash from Suzuki was enough to be called one of the few Kenjutsu experts in the ninja world. The tide-like applause resounded throughout the entire Uchiha hideout. Sasuke's face darkened. Akatsuki really dared to clap when others were fighting to the death. Itachi, who was on the ground, turned into a crow and disappeared. He condensed the appearance of Itachi on the other side. His face was very calm. Obviously, Itachi had a good psychological quality. No matter how embarrassed he was, he would not show it. In the next moment, Itachi closed his fingers. Suzuki did not care about the awkwardness, he threw out a huge shuriken and covered it with Chidori to break Itachi's hand seal. Unexpectedly, the Sharingan in Itachi's eyes crazily rotated. Tsukuyomi. In the next second, Tsukuyomi hit Suzuki, and the will of the Uchiha brothers entered Tsukuyomi's space at the same time. The outcome of the Genjutsu competition was not something that the people present could see. Everyone immediately began to discuss word by word. Unfortunately, the people present were basically not very good at playing with illusion techniques. They did not even understand the principle of Tsukuyomi. Unexpectedly, in the next moment, Suzuki fell to one knee on the ground. Obviously, this illusion technique competition in Tsukuyomi's space had already ended. Uehara hooked the corner of his mouth. In Tsukuyomi's space, the information about the Mangekyo Sharingan that Itachi wanted to reveal had already been leaked to his younger brother, right? Suzuki, you have really grown up. On the other side, Itachi fell to the ground, tightly stroking his eyes, you can actually crack my Tsukuyomi. Originally, I found a way to crack Tsukuyomi, but this time Tsukuyomi is too rough, right? Suzuki waved his ninja blade and stood up. He pointed at the group of people and said, Itachi, your illusion technique is indeed so realistic that it is difficult to distinguish, but you forgot, that group of guys created in Tsukuyomi's space is too quiet. Whether it is the story of Obito, the legendary Madara, or our clan with the cursed Mangekyo Sharingan, how can those guys in Tsukuyomi's space still sit there as if nothing happened? So it was their existence that revealed a flaw. Itachi nodded slowly. He stood up and said softly, I didn't expect that the illusion would reveal a flaw because there were too many spectators today. There is nothing I can do. However, thank you for telling me. Suzuki stretched out his ninja blade and waved it at Itachi, I will accept your pair of eyes. A bolt of lightning suddenly wrapped around Sasuke's ninja blade. It was his proud ninjutsu, Chidori-kun, Chidori light sword. Itachi frowned and reached out to grab Sasuke's wrist. The two of them had a wonderful physical exchange. Haydn looked at the battle between the Uchiha brothers and scratched his head. He looked at the others and asked, What nonsense are they talking about? Why don't I understand? Did anyone understand? Just shut up. Kakuzu looked at his teammates with disgust. Diodera also looked at Haydn with disgust, but he still explained, When Itachi and Suzuki were fighting in the illusion, they seemed to have said something extraordinary. However, we were too quiet in the illusion created by Itachi, so Itachi exposed a flaw. Do you understand? Idiot. Bastard. I will kill you. All of you shut up. The quality of the audience in Akatsuki's organization was really not high. 
Suzuki and Itachi did not care about them. The two brothers also started to fight, and they began to release fire ninjutsu in this area. Katon, Gaki no Jutsu, Fire Release, Great Fireball Technique The two people's fireball technique instantly rose the temperature of this space. Akatsuki, who was in the audience, finally felt that this place was a little unsafe. After all, these two desperate fellows could not be bothered to reduce their ninjutsu power. Under the leadership of Uehara, the crowd began to go out of the hideout and re-entered the Sky VIP audience of the Ancient Dragon. This action was very wise. A moment later, Itachi was beaten out of the hideout. Soon, the entire hideout was on the verge of collapse from their clash of fire. Diodera looked at the fireball on the ground in surprise, is Suzuki actually so powerful? His attainments in fire ninjutsu actually surpassed that guy. He <laughs> he. Kisame smiled but did not answer. If Diodera personally went down to experience it, Itachi would definitely let Diodera know what it meant to have six seals in one second and what it meant to be the eldest son of the fire ninjutsu world. Amaterasu. A fierce shout sounded from the ground. The entire earth was instantly surrounded by black flames. This was precisely Itachi's Mangekyo Sharingan, Amaterasu. This kind of pitch black flame could burn everything. Unfortunately, Suzuki seemed to have been prepared for Amaterasu. He suddenly took out a scroll, closed his palm, and shouted in a low voice, Fgahin, fire sealing method. Countless black flames that were surging in the surroundings were absorbed by him with his seal. A hint of surprise appeared on White Zetsu's face, how is this possible? Suzuki has already prepared Amaterasu's breaking method. Black Zetsu said in a gloomy voice, even if it is a Mangekyo, it is essentially only fire and yin attribute chakra. Suzuki should have used this point. After all, Suzuki is also a genius of the Uchiha clan. If he had been prepared, it is indeed possible to develop a method to deal with Amaterasu. When Uehara saw Suzuki seal Amaterasu with a fire sealing method, he couldn't help but look at Kisame. What was going on? This technique should be Jiraiya's, right? In the next moment, someone revealed the truth. After Suzuki completed the seal on Amaterasu, a crazy smile appeared on his face, Itachi. Last year, when you found out that your fire ninjutsu was not as powerful as my fire ninjutsu, you secretly studied the seal. Originally, this move should be used to seal my fire ninjutsu right? You didn't expect that today I would learn to use it against you, right? I really didn't think about it. Itachi slowly shook his head and said in a low voice, Suzuki, you have indeed grown a lot in the past few years. It is really beyond my imagination. On the ancient dragon. Kisame shook his head slightly, revealing a meaningful smile on his face, when we met Jiraiya, one of Kanaha Sunan, Itachi-san's Amaterasu seemed to have been sealed by him Itachi-san researched the sealing technique himself, but he didn't expect that Suzuki would secretly learn it. Diodera laughed as he looked at the battle on the ground, does it backfire, Itachi only took care of his younger brother to practice, but he didn't expect that his technique was also secretly learned by Suzuki, a little guy who waits for revenge, right? Uehara was speechless. Originally, Uehara thought that this guy Itachi might release some water, but he didn't expect that he wasn't going easy on him anymore, but directly releasing four big oceans. Because Suzuki had always been by his side, so Itachi could secretly let Suzuki copy any ninjutsu. This guy Itachi actually developed a method to secretly teach Suzuki that target Amaterasu. Was he afraid that his younger brother would not be able to kill him? Uehara and Kisame could see it. The others only felt that this battle was full of twists and turns. Whenever Itachi had the upper hand, Suzuki would reverse the situation. Itachi used his own strength and strange eye techniques to suppress Suzuki, but Suzuki would always rely on techniques that target Itachi, to successfully turn the tables. Sasori could not help but sigh in a low voice, is Sasuke's will to take revenge so strong? He actually gathered Itachi's information so well. That's right. Kisame chuckled and revealed an extremely ugly smile, I've seen everything in the past few years. This little brat, Suzuki, has never relaxed in order to kill Itachi-san. The battle on the ground was about to end. Itachi's strongest Mangekyo Sharingan, Amaterasu and Tsukuyomi did not have any results, and his fire ninjutsu was also unable to compare with Suzuki, so his defeat was already set in stone. Suzuki stood at a high place, looking down at Itachi who already had no trump cards, and coldly said, Itachi, I have seen everything about you with this pair of Sharingan, this is your place of burial. Now, 
he wanted to bury the sinful elder brother in this place, and pay tribute to the clansmen he slaughtered. It began to rain in the sky. Suzuki looked up at the rain in the sky and let them wash his face. He slowly stretched out his palm to welcome the baptism of the rain. Itachi covered his lips and wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. He stood up and looked at Suzuki, his eyebrows slightly curved. Itachi, you don't have much chakra, do you? Suzuki looked down at Itachi and whispered, I have clearly calculated and have been practicing the battle between us for countless days and nights, but you have never put me in your eyes. Before you die, do you have any last words? Suzuki. The smile on Itachi's face became more and more intense. His voice was as gentle as ever, it's too early to say these things now. Do you know why I never cared about your revenge? What? Suzuki raised his eyebrows. Because in front of this ninjutsu, everything you work hard for is meaningless. Itachi stretched out his palm to touch his eyes, and said in a low voice, Mangekyo Sharingan is not as simple as you think. When you obtain Mangekyo Sharingan, you just need to work hard to guide out the eye power within it. When you guide the power of Mangekyo Sharingan, you will awaken an ultimate eye technique, which can turn invisible eye power into tangible things. And this tangible thing, our Uchiha clan has a very frightening name in the records of Mangekyo Sharingan, its name is... Suzanu. In the next moment, a red skeleton floated up from the body of Itachi, gradually forming a red giant and slowly enveloping Itachi's body. At the moment when everyone including Suzuki and Akatsuki looked at the appearance of Suzanu, they couldn't help but reveal a shocked expression. Itachi looked at Suzuki through Suzanu, and his face was still very calm. It is precisely because I awakened the ultimate eye technique of Mangekyo Sharingan, Suzanu, that is why I have never been on guard against you all these years. With just three Tomo Sharingan, how could you escape the sight of Mangekyo Sharingan? The corner of Itachi's mouth slightly hooked up, revealing a smile as if victory was within his grasp, even if you secretly learn countless ninjutsu from me, it doesn't matter, because in front of Suzanu, everything is meaningless. Suzuki fell into silence. His face began to drip with sweat along the rain. Suzuki looked at Itachi in the red Suzanu, and suddenly revealed a smile on his face, in fact, all these years, I have always thought about one thing. That is you will deliberately die under my hands. Suzuki slowly loosened his ninja blade, and continued with a light smile, so every time I secretly copy your ninjutsu, I will feel a little guilty, because I cannot judge what kind of brother I will kill at that time. Perhaps I may not even be able to do it, because victory may come too easily. Suzuki slowly closed his palm and calmly made his own hand seal. He continued softly, now, I won't have this burden anymore. You are still the arrogant Itachi that thinks everything is under your control. Suzuki raised his head again and looked up at the dancing lightning in the sky. He let the rain and sweat flow on his face, Itachi, this is also very good. Because in this case, when I kill you, I don't need to care. Thunder danced in the sky. In the next moment, a huge lightning beast jumped out from the clouds lair. Sasuke's finger suddenly pointed towards the red-colored Suzanu on the ground guiding the lightning beast in the sky to descend, then coldly shouted, Disappear along with the thunder, Itachi, carry your arrogance in the afterlife. Chapter 247, What Are You Playing? Refund On the body of the ancient dragon. After Suzanu appeared, the onlookers became silent one after another. Those who had doubts about Itachi also gradually dispelled their suspicions, and there were even some who had a certain level of conspiracy theory towards Itachi. Diodera touched his chin, and his complexion was somewhat ugly, Itachi is really sinister. This guy secretly gave the hope of revenge to Suzuki in the past few years, and now he has personally destroyed the hope of this little brat Suzuki. The outcome has not been decided yet. Sasori shook his head coldly. Diodera hesitated for a moment, and then said with some determination, in front of the legendary Suzanu, no one can defeat Itachi, right? Diodera, have you heard of Suzanu? N. Diodera slowly nodded, his complexion somewhat heavy, Onaki, that old guy, once mentioned that when he and second Psuchikage went to Kanaha to ask for an alliance, Madara's Suzanu destroyed all their pride. Although Diodera had always been proud, Diodera did not think that Onaki and second Psuchikage were weaker than him. Two ninjas who were good at dust release were easily defeated by Suzanu, how could Suzuki win in front of Suzanu? Sure enough. The Kirin lightning beast in the sky suddenly fell down. Red Suzanu raised its hand and raised a mirror, blocking the direct attack of Lightning Kirin, 
but the tyrannical lightning chakra was still wantonly spreading on the body of Suzanu, destroying the armor of Suzanu. However, no matter how crazily it attacked, the lightning Kirin was still unable to hurt Itachi who was inside Suzanu and could only disappear in the air with a trace of sadness. Cough. Itachi covered his mouth and spat out a mouthful of blood. The burden of using Suzanu was also very big. Suzuki looked at Suzanu in disbelief, blankly staring at the lightning Kirin being blocked by Suzanu, he couldn't help but mutter, How, how is this possible? How was this possible? The existence of Suzanu had completely refreshed Sasuke's knowledge. Even the audience in the ancient dragon in the sky was shocked by the power of Suzanu. Not many of them were confident to take Sasuke's lightning Kirin. Kakuzu said in a muffled voice, even if he has been enduring for several years, in the end, he still has not escaped the control of his elder brother. This little fellow Suzuke is really pitiful. The battle is not over yet. Kisame shook his head and whispered to himself, even if it is Suzanu, how long can Itachi-san hold on? He won't be able to hold on for long. Kisame really couldn't understand the condition of Itachi's body. Using Mangekyo Sharingan is a great toll on the body, his eye vision is also very little, his body is also seriously ill, and his chakra was almost exhausted. Everyone looked at the battle on the ground, only to see Suzuke furiously attacking Itachi, but was blocked by Suzanu. Ninja sword cut Suzanu. It was unknown what Suzuke was thinking. Only, Itachi slowly approached Suzuke and stretched out his finger. Just when he was about to dig out Sasuke's eyes, he saw Itachi's finger weakly stop on Sasuke's forehead. In the next moment, the huge Suzanu dissipated. Itachi's body fell to the ground in a sorry state. This. What was going on? Everyone in Akatsuki's organization revealed a look of surprise on their faces. Everyone subconsciously flew to the ground and stared at Itachi, who was lying on the ground. Itachi, who was on the ground, had no life left. In the last moment of his life, Itachi, who had used the Suzanu to turn the tables, had actually died here? Suzuki leaned against the ruined wall in a daze. Hey, little brat Suzuki, what did Itachi say to you before he died? Diodera immediately pouted. He shouted in dissatisfaction, how can this be the result? How can we accept this? The twists and turns in the middle were shocking enough. Whether it was Suzuki who cracked Tsukuyomi or Amaterasu, it was worth Diodera to wake up early. But it ended so strangely. Wasn't this too unbearable? Shouldn't the outcome be Itachi controlling Suzanu to smash Suzuki with a punch, showing off that the clan murderer Itachi was truly worthy of his name? Haydn coldly interrupted Diodera, and contemptuously shouted, Hey, Diodera! Do you think that you are watching a drama show, and you can call out a refund? Kisame softly explained, in fact, Itachi-san's eye power is exhausted, right? Mangekyo Sharingan requires a lot of eye power. This explanation was barely acceptable. At least everyone understood the power of Mangekyo Sharingan and knew some of the weaknesses of Mangekyo Sharingan. All right, let's go first. Pain glanced at the people around him and whispered, Itachi is a member of the organization. Then help him build a tombstone. Leave this matter to me. Kisame looked up at the heavy rain in the sky and said in a low voice, Everyone, leave first. This is the agreement between me and Itachi-san. If he dies, I will help him clean up his body. Let me help you. Kabuto pushed up his glasses. His voice was somewhat regretful, after all, Itachi and I are also ninjas from Kanaha. We should send him on his way. That's it. Uehara nodded and turned to look at Suzuki, Hey, Suzuki. Are you coming back with us or stay here? I will stay here. Suzuki shook his head. Kisame looked at the ruins and sighed, It will take a long time to build a big grave for Itachi-san. I understand. Uehara nodded and said softly, Then that's it. I'll have the ancient dragon send everyone back first before summoning it back to pick us up. All right. Tendo Pain nodded. Konan walked forward and extended her paper umbrella. She handed it to Uehara and said softly, then come back early. Uehara shook his head. After smiling at her, he suddenly took off his bamboo hat and put his bamboo hat on Konan's head. The ancient dragon roared down from the sky. Akatsuki's group stepped onto the ancient dragon and left. In the ruins of this fierce battle, only Suzuki, Kisame, Kabuto, and Uehara were left. Everyone seemed to be in a different mood. Hey, Kisame Senpai. Suzuki stared blankly at Itachi's body on the ground. He asked in a low voice, 
did Itachi deliberately lose to me? Do you know about this? What does he mean? No, in fact, you are too strong. Kisame grinned and slowly nodded, well, since you already know, do you need me to tell you the two paths that Itachi has arranged for you? What, does this mean? Because Itachi-san has been seriously ill for a long time. I have been asking him to find Uehara for treatment, but Itachi-san gave up the treatment early. Kisame bent down and slowly laid down Itachi's corpse. He said in a low voice, ever since I met him, I knew that he didn't want to live in this world anymore. He. Suzuki fell to the ground. Kisame shook his head and interrupted Suzuki. He explained softly, Itachi-san could not bear the pain of killing his clansmen, nor could he endure the torture from Kanaha. In the end, he chose to die alone. Kanaha. That's right. Kisame put his hand in Itachi's eyes and whispered, Do you want to know the truth about the extermination of your clan? The Uchiha clan is the number one clan in the world, so they suffered the fear of the higher UPS in Kanaha, who were led by Third Hokage. Kisame-san is wrong about this. Kabuto pushed his glasses and added with a chuckle, In fact, since the beginning of Second Hokage, the Uchiha clan has been feared by the higher UPS of Kanaha, but at that time, Uchiha was still useful. After saying that, Kabuto continued with a smile, after the end of the Third Ninja War, the ninja world became peaceful, and the Uchiha clan naturally became useless. No wonder Orochimaru-sama asked me to go to Danzo to ask for the Sharingan. Suzuki suddenly raised his head, Danzo. Shimura Danzo. Kabuto looked at Suzuki and continued in a soft voice, however, Danzo has already died. Otherwise, you might have seen how many of Uchiha's Sharingan he has seized. I don't know about this. Kisame shook his head, looked up at Suzuki and said, In short, just when Kanaha and Uchiha were at their most tense, Kanaha's higher UPS used one condition to instigate Itachi-san. Sasuke's heart skipped a beat. Kisame grinned and said with a smile, Looks like you guessed it too, right? That is your life or kill all the other Uchiha. Otherwise, do you think he would deliberately keep you? This is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Kisame spread out his palm and coldly said, Itachi-san has been threatening them to protect you with Kanaha's information. Do you still remember your betrayal to Kanaha? Do you know why Itachi-san let you join Akatsuki? Kisame looked at Suzuki and said in a deep voice, Because you are under Orochimaru. He is very worried about your safety. But only I know that when you appear in Akatsuki, it means that Itachi-san's death is approaching. I really want to kill you. Kisame grabbed Sasuke's shoulder and pressed him in front of Itachi. His face became a little ferocious, look at your brother. Everything he did was for you. Listen to me now. He arranged two roads for you before he died. Suzuki. The first one. Kisame glanced at Uehara next to him. Seeing this superior casually looking into the distance, he continued, continue to follow us and take revenge on Kanaha. In the whole world, only we are the strongest so you can join us. Suzuki looked at Kisame and asked coldly, Humph, who does he think he is? Does he think he can arrange for me? Shut up. Kisame grabbed Suzuki by the neck and said coldly, the second way is to return to Kanaha and become Kanaha ninja again. Don't worry, third Hokage is already dead. The higher UPS of Kanaha will definitely not make things difficult for you, little guy. They still need you to leave behind the Sharingan for Kanaha. Akatsuki has a lot of ninjas, and we will not care about a little brat like you. Uehara is Itachi-san's friend. As long as you do not reveal the information about Akatsuki, he will not let the leader pursue the matter of you betraying Akatsuki. Hehe. <laughs> Suzuki sneered, looking at Kisame with contempt, it seems that you have given me two choices, but you also told me that the higher UPS of Kanaha forced Itachi to kill my parents, so I can only choose to follow you. This is indeed our selfishness. Uehara shook his head, looked at Suzuki and said, Itachi-san thinks that you can choose freely. It is best to go back to Kanaha and continue to live a peaceful life. At that time, we will hide the truth of Uchiha's extermination. But we think that you should not go back to the village that forced Uchiha's entire clan to die and brothers to kill each other, so we told you the truth about Uchiha's extermination. But it didn't matter, because Itachi-san had already prepared a backup plan. Itachi-san believed that your friend Naruto would convince you to let go of your hatred. Naruto. The corners of Sasuke's eyes slightly froze. That's right. 
Uehara walked over and patted Suzuki on the shoulder. He said softly, Your brother Itachi, is a great person. I have to say, he is really good at judging people. Uehara looked at Itachi on the ground with a faint gaze. The corners of his mouth curled up, Itachi did not misjudge Naruto. He is indeed a very charismatic person. What you said does not have any evidence. Evidence. Uehara looked down at Itachi's body on the ground. He patted Suzuki on the shoulder and said in a low voice, We do not need any evidence, because we do not need you. A little brat who has caused Itachi-san to suffer for half his life. If not for Itachi-san asking us to wait for you to open your Mangekyo Sharingan and help you transplant his Mangekyo Sharingan so that you can obtain eternal eye power, do you think we would stay here? You also know about this. Sasuke's eyes suddenly softened. Because when Uehara talked about these things, he was very angry, looking as if he didn't need him. Instead, it made Suzuki somewhat believe. Moreover, Uehara also mentioned the secret of Mangekyo Sharingan. Obviously, this secret was not known by ordinary people. What do you think? Uehara looked at Suzuki and snappily said, Kanaha definitely won't let you get this power. You don't have any other friends in the world, and before you die, Itachi-san naturally has to arrange everything for you. After saying this, Uehara looked at a useless junior and coldly continued, When you return to Kanaha, don't show the power of the Mangekyo, do you understand what I mean? I understand, this might cause Kanaha to be afraid. Suzuki nodded, and suddenly reacted, loudly retorting, Who told you I want to return to Kanaha? I want to destroy Kanaha and avenge Itachi. Chapter 248, Suzuki why did my brother get such a good friend like Uehara Naraku? Suzuki was very determined. No, it should be said that Suzuki had been fooled. Sasuke's character was so easily interpreted by others. Once you arranged a peaceful life for him for his own good, the inherent pride of Uchiha's clan would make him unwilling and thus take another path. Therefore, the core reason why Uehara persuaded Suzuki was for his own good. A person who has been persuading Suzuki to keep him away from danger, no matter how you look at it, was much more trustworthy than those who persuaded Suzuki to let him collect Baijuyu or destroy Kanaha. This was Uehara's plan. Even Itachi would not imagine that there would be someone who would induce Suzuki like this. This method was really a little scary. Who would have thought that a person who said it was good for Suzuki was deliberately making use of Sasuke's rebellious mentality? This was because Suzuki was too proud and couldn't stand the slightest provocation. With just a little guidance, he would directly explode. After hearing Sasuke's words, Uehara blinked his eyes and softly advised, Suzuki, don't act on impulse Itachi-san has already arranged everything for you. He left behind his Mangekyo Sharingan for you just to let you have the power to protect yourself. I thought about it very clearly. Suzuki gritted his teeth and said with a grim face, I will not follow his will to live a mediocre life. I will shoulder the hatred between him and the entire Uchiha, I will destroy Kanaha to avenge them. No need to do this. Uehara patted Suzuki on the shoulder and continued to persuade him, in fact, Itachi-san has forgiven Kanaha in his heart. He thinks that Kanaha's higher UPS did keep their promise and let you grow up safely in Kanaha. Who is willing to play the ninja game with those guys? Sasuke's eyes were bloodshot, and he stared at Uehara, coldly interrupting Uehara, what I hate the most is those years in Kanaha. Itachi should have told me the truth, not let me spend the dark time in Kanaha. Now that I think about it, I hate those hypocrites. There's no need. Uehara sighed and comforted Suzuki, Kanaha is the strongest village in the world Itachi-san thinks that only them can protect you. I never need protection. Suzuki suddenly punched the wall, and a string of blood slowly flowed out of his eyes, what I need is power. The power that can support my revenge. The blood in Sasuke's eyes slowly flowed on his face. The three Tomo Sharingan crazily rotated gradually becoming a pair of strange Mangekyo Sharingan. At this moment, his anger reached its peak. Suzuki finally believed that he had found his future path, and also allowed him to open his Mangekyo Sharingan, this pair of cursed eyes. Uehara looked at Sasuke's eyes in surprise. There was still an unexpected harvest. He only chatted with Suzuki for a few words, and it let him open his Mangekyo. A trace of astonishment gradually appeared on Uehara's face, your eyes. Mangekyo Sharingan. Is this the fate of you brothers? What? Suzuki slowly stretched out his palm and subconsciously touched his eyes. However, he felt a handful of blood. 
his expression instantly changed. Mangekyo Sharingan. The next moment, Suzuki slowly clenched his fist, looked down at Itachi's body on the ground, and knelt down on one knee. Suzuki stroked his eyes, and promised word by word, I will bear your hatred together. Let Kanaha pay the price for our Uchiha clan. Uehara couldn't help but shake his head and sigh, Suzuki, what you have done is not in line with Itachi-san's expectations. He just hopes that you can live a peaceful life. Uehara. Suzuki interrupted Uehara in a deep voice and continued, Didn't Kisame-senpai tell me just now, Itachi also arranged the first path for me. That is to join you and let me inherit the position of Itachi in Akatsuki. This road will be very dangerous. Uehara frowned and seemed to want to make a final persuasion, Suzuki, if you go back to Kanaha or live in seclusion, you can live safely. Perhaps you will never encounter the fight between ninjas, and you will never see the cruelty of war again. These words were really true and earnest. Uehara was even moved by it. Beside him, Kisame had a complicated look in his eyes. If not for the fact that Kisame knew his boss, he would have believed that Uehara was Itachi's good friend. Even the kind that depended on life and death. If they were not good friends, why would Uehara advise Suzuki to stay away from danger? Even someone like Kisame who knew Uehara's identity almost believed him, let alone a rookie like Suzuki. Don't try to persuade me anymore. Suzuki slowly turned his head and stared at Uehara with his scarlet-colored Mangekyo Sharingan, Uehara, I know what I am doing. I also know what I should do. I don't need your nonsense. Hehe. <laughs> Uehara narrowed his eyes. He suddenly kicked Sasuke's neck to the ground. Just as Suzuki stood up with a face full of anger, Uehara punched him to the ground again. Just when Kisame and Kabuto were a little surprised, they didn't quite understand. Why did Uehara suddenly wave his fist when he was clearly luring Suzuki into a good situation? Uehara slowly wiped the blood off his fist and said coldly, What an annoying little brat. Can't you obediently listen to your brother's arrangements? Suzuki who was originally in a bad mood, suddenly calmed down. This 16-year-old Uchiha was not as angry as they imagined. He just looked at Uehara stubbornly, his face full of unwillingness to admit defeat. Uehara grabbed Suzuki by the collar, his eyes slightly cold, Suzuki, listen carefully. We are Itachi-san's friends, but it does not mean that we will care for you as much as he does. Uehara looked at Sasuke's expression and said softly, in fact, we really hate you. That's why I want you to get lost. Because Itachi-san once wanted to fulfill that great dream with us, but for you, he chose to give up his life. I know this. Suzuki raised his head and looked at Uehara stubbornly. He said in a deep voice, Don't worry, I will inherit everything from Itachi. His dream is also my dream. His hatred is also my hatred. His will is also my will. Obviously, Uehara had just beaten him up but Suzuki did not show any special anger. There was not even the slightest anger on his face. Suzuki had already determined that the reason why Uehara in front of him said that he hated him was that he killed Itachi. On this point, the two of them had the same idea. When he first learned the truth, Suzuki also hated his ignorance because his duel with Itachi had indirectly killed his brother. In this world, as long as Itachi wanted to do it, Suzuki decided to do it in his place. Itachi-san really left a big trouble. Uehara frowned and slowly released Sasuke's collar. He waved at Kabuto and whispered, Kabuto, take out Itachi-san's eyes. When Suzuke has completely mastered the Mangekyo Sharingan, replace Itachi-san's eyes for him. Yes. Kabuto quickly nodded. As for Kisame who was standing next to Kabuto, he did not know what expression he had at this time. Kisame had never imagined that Uehara would make Suzuke stand in their camp so quickly. How the hell did this happen? Suzuki even looks determined to do it. He can't figure it out. Especially after Suzuki was kicked and punched, it seemed that his will was firmer, and his face was relaxed. Uehara glanced at Suzuki and waved his hand to pour chakra and life energy into him. He softly said, If you really want to follow us and replace Itachi-san, then train hard. Humph, I understand. Suzuki coldly snorted. He lowered his head and looked at Kabuto slowly taking off Itachi's eyes. His eyes gradually became watery. Uehara glanced at Suzuki and comforted him, don't be too sad. In fact, in Itachi-san's eyes, you have always been his pride. We don't believe it, but he always likes to say that you have the power to surpass him. Is that so? 
there was a slight tremble in Sasuke's voice. Uehara patted Suzuki on the shoulder and sighed softly, in fact, from Zabuza and Manjutsun mouth, when Itachi-san found out that you became a ninja and completed a C-level mission, he smiled very happily. Why didn't he tell me the truth? Suzuki gritted his teeth and squatted down again. He helped Itachi tidy up his body, and there was a hint of indignation in his voice, if I had known the truth, I definitely would not hate him so much. It doesn't make sense. Uehara shook his head and replied softly, Itachi-san has always hoped that you can use your hatred against him to awaken Mangekyo Sharingan. This way, you will have the power to protect yourself, and he will not have to worry about anyone hurting you. After he finished speaking, Uehara lowered his head and sighed, I didn't expect that the hatred wouldn't allow you to awaken your Mangekyo Sharingan. In the end, it was his love that allowed you to awaken your Mangekyo. After saying this, Uehara was also somewhat moved. Itachi had racked his brains to make his younger brother use his hatred to awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan. However, he had never thought that his younger brother would awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan because he understood the hidden love of his older brother. Suzuki silently shed tears. The people present were all ninjas. It was not particularly troublesome for them to set up a tomb, so they quickly buried Itachi's body here. In order to avoid being found by others, Uehara even released water ninjutsu, drawing out the underground river and turning this place into a large lake. After doing all this, Uehara let out a sigh of relief and said, Suzuki, I heard that there is a lake near your clan Itachi-san should like it here, right? Yes. Suzuki nodded and wiped away his tears. He said softly, there was a lake near our clan. And I-san always liked to go there. Thank you very much. It's okay. Uehara shook his head and frowned at Suzuki. He whispered, remember to pretend to be patient in front of Akatsuki and the others. Don't lose Itachi-san's face. His upbringing and behavior have always been the most perfect among Akatsuki's members. Yes. Suzuki nodded in a low voice. Now, Suzuki was a little obedient. Suzuki almost regarded Uehara, a former friend of Itachi, as his elder. When Kabuto saw this scene, he lowered his head and pushed up his glasses. There was also some emotion on Kisame's face. To be honest, they never expected that in less than a day, Uehara's position in Sasuke's heart had changed dramatically. Thai really didn't dare to imagine. If Suzuki found out the truth one day, he would want to cut Uehara into pieces. I'm sorry, Itachi. Uehara looked at the lake in front of him, and a trace of nostalgia appeared on his face. We don't know how to choose to act according to your last words, but I believe that Sasuke's choice is the most suitable for him, isn't it? Uehara said as if he was Itachi's friend. Suzuki stood behind Uehara and comforted Uehara softly, Uehara-senpai, this is my choice. If Nisan wants to blame me in the underworld, let him blame me. Suzuki was still comforting Uehara. Kisame stood beside them and looked at all of this in disbelief. Was this world fake? What exactly was wrong? Kisame couldn't help but doubt his own memories. Between him and Uehara, who was really the teammate and was with Itachi day and night. Kabuto couldn't help but push his glasses up again. Let's go. After saying that, Uehara made a hand seal and said softly, Suzuki, it's a pity that the summoning contract of the giant dragon is broken. I will help you find a ninja beast flying that can fly in air so that you can visit Itachi-san often. Yes, Uehara-senpai. Suzuki hurriedly nodded. If it were to increase his strength, Suzuki would not be too grateful. However, if he found a flying ninja beast to make it convenient to visit Itachi's burial ground, Suzuki was very grateful to Uehara. This also proved that Itachi had indeed made a good friend. Suzuki was even a little envious and disgusted in his heart. Why was his brother able to make a friend like Uehara who could entrust his affairs to him, and he could only make friends with a guy like Naruto? To be honest, Suzuki was really a little envious. An ancient dragon descended from the sky and landed in front of them. Uehara, Suzuki, Kabuto, and Kisame stepped onto the ancient dragon and left the place where Itachi was buried. Under the lake, Obito dug up a grave and slowly placed his palm on the coffin. He placed the coffin into his Kamui space. Obito also entered the Kamui space and opened the coffin, revealing Itachi's body inside. What a pity! Obito looked at the body his face revealing a touch of helplessness, Itachi, even you did not see the truth of this world clearly. Chapter 249, Suzuki, Uehara-senpai, please don't drive me away. 
As a man behind the scene, he gave others the right to choose. Uehara was well versed in this principle, so when Uehara and Suzuki chatted, he would always give Suzuki the right to choose, so Suzuki directly listened to him. Of course, the most important thing was that he had to use favors to win Sasuke's heart. Moreover, he had to use Itachi's name. Oh right, there is one more thing. Uehara sat on the back of the ancient dragon and said softly, Itachi-san heard that Naruto had obtained a summoning contract from one of the three sacred place, so he specially entrusted me to help you receive a summoning contract from one of the three sacred place, Ryakai Cave. Ryakai Cave. Suzuki frowned. Obviously, he had never heard of the name of this place. But it didn't matter, because someone soon introduced it to him. Kabuto pushed his glasses and looked at Suzuki with a smile, the Kanaha son and summoned beast, are from the three sacred place. The three sacred have at least a thousand years of history in the ninja world. Under the nourishment of natural energy, there are many powerful ninja beasts there. The Kanaha Sunan. Suzuki was surprised. After all, in this era, the name Sunan was still famous. Suzuki had been in Akatsuki's organization for so many years, and he was very clear about Sunan's reputation. Moreover, Naruto's sensei seems to be one of them. That's right. Kabuto nodded and continued softly. Among them, the summoning contract of Kanaha's fifth Hokage Tsunade is from Shikotsu Forest Slug Sage. Jiraiya's summoning contract is from Mount Mayaboku's Toad Sage and Orochimaru's summoning contract is from Ryakai Cave's White Snake Sage. Yes. Uehara followed Kabuto's words and continued, although Orochimaru and Itachi-san are no match for each other, his strength is still not bad. Perhaps Itachi-san is worried that you will see that Naruto has a powerful summoned beast and feel wronged. He also asked us to help you find a sacred place's summoning contract. Who will fell wronged? Suzuki immediately turned his head and said, Humph, I don't care so much. My strength doesn't need any summoned beast at all. All right, all right, I won't say any more. Uehara also patted Sasuke's shoulder and comforted the young man. He said with a sad expression, Actually, I just want to tell you that he has always wanted to give you the best. He just doesn't want to see his little brother feel wronged. Anyway, according to the current strength of Suzuki who had opened Mangekyo Sharingan, in fact, it didn't matter whether he wanted summoned beast or not, he just took it out to do a favor. Since Suzuki didn't want it, then Uehara naturally waved his hand, only to see Kabuto once again put away the summoning contract. I got it. Suzuki shook his head and slowly closed his eyes. After a while, Suzuki opened his mouth to comfort Uehara. It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help, senpai. I have already received my most precious gift. Suzuki turned his head to look at the scenery in the distance and whispered, Uehara senpai, I hope to inherit Itachi's will and live in his place in this world. I want to see this world become what he dreams of. Sure. Uehara patted Suzuki on the shoulder and chuckled, then in two years, when you are 18, get ready to get married immediately. Itachi has long wanted to see the day you get married and become an adult. Senpai. Sasuke's face immediately darkened. This joke was really not funny at all. In Sasuke's opinion, his brother Itachi must have mentioned this to Uehara before. Otherwise, a ninja would never think of marriage. Let me tell you our story first. Uehara looked into the distance and began to tell the story of the past, back then, Itachi-san and I joined Akatsuki together. I was one year younger than him. At that time, my strength was insufficient and I was defeated. The image of a young man who was unconvinced with Itachi leaped out. He gradually became a junior who was sincerely convinced by Itachi and finally became a good friend of Itachi. They began to work hard for their dreams, but Uehara improved faster and faster. Itachi was concerned about his brother in the distance and hesitated step by step, so in the end, Itachi decided to entrust his dreams to Uehara alone to realize them. After Suzuki entered Akatsuki's organization, the two of them completely cut off contact. Itachi concentrated on taking care of his brother and no longer contacted Uehara. However, Uehara was worried that Itachi would be secretly assassinated by his brother, so he specially entrusted his other friend, Kisame, to take care of Itachi. However, the night before the duel, Itachi finally decided to open up his heart and explain all his arrangements to his best friend, Uehara, and entrusted everything to him. This story was really touching. Kisame was a little doubtful about life when he heard it. If he remembered correctly, Kisame should have been Itachi's teammate for eight years. 
why didn't he know that Itachi could still make friends? Could it be that Itachi did not trust him? This story made it hard for Kisame to tell if it were true or false. Uehara slowly stretched out his palm, as if he had caught a wisp of wind, says okay, the dream of Itachi and I was to completely overthrow this rotten world and kill all those people who are jealous of talented people. After saying that, Uehara suddenly turned his head and coldly said, My sensei, was once almost killed by Hanzo because he was worried that Painsama and Konan's talent would surpass his. Your brother Itachi was once forced to kill his entire clan by Kanaha's higher UPS to protect you because Kanaha's higher UPS were worried that the Uchiha clan would become stronger and stronger, and finally, an Uchiha Madara would appear. Why did the ninja world become like this? Because the highest level of the ninja world has become rotten, and they cannot tolerate the appearance of any genius, even if this genius just wants to protect his family. Madara possesses the Mangekyo Sharingan he was forced to run away just because his strength was too strong. The second Hokage Tobirama thought that the Uchiha clan was inherently evil, and used political means to humiliate and expel Madara. Obito was an idiot. In order to survive, he harmed his own sensei and his wife's family and later killed all his clansmen with Itachi-san. Uchiha Shisui was somewhat rational. In order to stop Uchiha from being targeted, Shisui-san chose to be a double-faced spy for Kanaha and Uchiha. In the end, he was discovered by the higher UPS of Kanaha and his Mangekyo Sharingan was dug out. Your father Fugaku-sama also opened his Mangekyo Sharingan, but your father never dared to show it in front of others. If not for the extermination of the clan, even Itachi-san wouldn't have discovered this secret. These words were too shocking. There could be some truth in them. Uehara had estimated that even Suzuki would not be able to find out the truth. Even if he just happened to know half of it, it would fit well with these things. Damn it! anyone who knew the truth was all dead. Even the dead were all in Uehara's hands. After Uehara finished talking about Fugaku, Suzuki looked at Uehara in disbelief, Father, also has Mangekyo Sharingan? Then why would he die? He is the Uchiha clan head. Yes, this is also the most painful thing in Itachi-san's heart. Uehara stroked his forehead, suppressing his emotions. He said in a low voice, Fugaku-sama thinks that Itachi-san can protect you so he chose to die. Otherwise, do you think that Itachi-san can defeat your father? Suzuki shook his head subconsciously. Fugaku was the Uchiha clan head. In Sasuke's impression, his father was the most powerful person in the entire Uchiha clan. It seemed that this was also very normal. Both of his sons could open their Mangekyo Sharingan, how could the father be a weakling? Fugaku-sama and Itachi-san, even your mother Mikato, should be betting their will and the future of the entire clan on you. Uehara looked at Suzuki and patted him on the shoulder with some sadness, Itachi-san told me about these things in the past when he was in his most painful time. I don't know if I should tell you because these things are too dark. No, you should tell me. Suzuki shook his head and clenched his fist. He said in a low voice, if Uehara-senpai didn't tell me, I wouldn't know how much hatred I should bear. I will inherit Itachi's will. No. I will do it more thoroughly than him. What I bear is the regret of my father, the wailing of all Uchiha before their death. Then let Kanaha feel what pain is. Sasuke's eyes gradually turned into a pair of Mangekyo Sharingan. His eye power was getting stronger and stronger, and he had not even used his own pupil skill yet. A purple skeleton was looming on his body. A black flame suddenly appeared in front of Suzuki. His face revealed a sinister smile, is this Itachi's eye technique, Amaterasu? Then let me use his eye technique to burn down that rotten Kanaha. It should be a transfer seal, right? Uehara was beside him, interrupting Sasuke's wild laughter, I remember that Itachi-san told me the night before the duel. Even if you didn't open your Mangekyo Sharingan, he would still seal Amaterasu's ability in your eyes, so that you can protect yourself. Sasuke's smile suddenly disappeared. He gritted his teeth and revealed a face full of pain and regret, that guy. Did he arrange everything for me again? Yes. Uehara patted him on the shoulder and said regretfully, that's why I hope that you won't let him down. In the future, find a quiet place to live a peaceful life. There won't be any more fighting and pain. Uehara-senpai. Suzuki glanced at Uehara with unprecedented determination. He suddenly lowered his head and said, from now on, don't chase me away. I have already made up my mind. Sigh. Uehara sighed faintly and turned to look at Kisame and Kabuto. He whispered, We are already working hard. 
why do you have to get involved in this muddy water? In fact, I just want you to understand Itachi's painstaking efforts and suffering. Then you can return to your hometown Kanaha or find another place to marry and have children quietly. That must be what Itachi wants to see the most now. Senpai. Suzuki stroked his eyes and said in a low voice, Even if I only have three Tomo Sharingan, I will not give up. Moreover, I have opened the manja queue. So I don't want to miss what you and attack will do. Let's go back to the organization base first. Uehara shook his head and did not answer. Instead, he spoke of another matter, you can consider your teammates. Whether it is Kisame, me, or Kabuto, they are all fine. Kabuto is someone I have roped in. Kisame and I are both friends of Itachi-san. Yes. Suzuki nodded and fell into a dilemma again. First of all, Kabuto must be eliminated. Kisame was Itachi's teammate for many years, and Suzuki also saw the relationship between them. He was really a little envious. Uehara was Itachi's long-hidden friend, and the relationship between them could be roughly analyzed by Suzuki. This was even more enviable. It seemed that it was good to choose between the two of them. This kind of thing was not urgent, and it could be decided when the next mission was carried out. In any case, the relationship between Uehara and Pain was very good, and Suzuki suddenly realized a problem. He was really living a more comfortable life in Akatsuki's organization now because there were his brother's friends here, and there were powerful teammates everywhere. After returning to Akatsuki's base, Uehara arranged for Suzuki to return to his room to rest first. The reason was that Suzuki had suffered too much shock this day, and his mood was also very sorrowful. He must really need to rest. Suzuki naturally chose to listen to his arrangements. Kisame finally could not hold back and ask, Uehara-sama, why did Suzuki choose to join us? Could it be that Itachi-san and Uehara-sama? He's already dead, who knows if it's true or not. Uehara glanced at Kisame and shook his head, of course, the reason why Suzuki joined us is because of love. With his personality, how could he give up his brother's dream after knowing about Itachi's sacrifice? After Uehara finished speaking, he handed a scroll to Kabuto, this is the Byakugan I got from Kirigakura's AO. You can do as you see fit. A Byakugan. Kabuto was slightly surprised. After a while, he nodded respectfully and said, I will definitely live up to Narakusama's expectation. All right. Uehara waved his hand and turned to fly in a Megakura's direction, the two of you, don't reveal any flaws in front of Suzuki. After Uehara finished speaking, he looked at Kisame again, especially you, Kisame. Remember to put on a face of hate for causing Itachi to die. However, because he is Itachi's younger brother, you have to take care of him, so your feelings towards him will be very complicated. Do you understand? Kisame nodded silently. However, after seeing Uehara leave, an ugly smile appeared on Kisame's face, ha, huh, really, Itachi-san, no matter if it is you or your younger brother, in the end, they still haven't escaped the false reality. Chapter 250, Can the Five Cage Summit Be Held Indiana the Country of Rain? Inside a Megakure. After Uehara returned, he ran straight to the tallest tower in the village. As expected, Nagato was tinkering his Shuridu, Azura Path. This person really liked to transform Shuridu, Azura Path. Oh, you are back. Nagato dropped the tools in his hand and looked up at Uehara who had entered the door. He coughed a few times and said, since the matter between the Uchiha brother has been resolved, then we will prepare to capture Gobi, Rokubai, and Nanabi. After seeing Itachi die today, Nagato also predicted that his life would not be long. He planned to take this opportunity to speed up the resurrection of Gedo Mazo. Capture three Baijuyu directly. Uehara raised his eyebrows and couldn't help but glance at Nagato, why are you in such a hurry all of a sudden? If that's the case, it will be very dangerous. Don't worry. Nagato waved his hand and said with a smile, Among them, Gobi is the most difficult. This time, I will take six paths of pain with me. No, you go and capture Rokubai. Uehara interrupted Nagato and said in a deep voice, Diadera, and I will go to capture Gobi. Coincidentally, Suzuki has also opened the same Mangekyo Sharingan as Itachi. It can be used. Hey! Nagato suddenly raised his head in surprise. Suzuki also opened his Mangekyo Sharingan. That's right. Uehara had a complicated expression on his face. He softly explained, Itachi hid very deeply. 
everything he did was to protect his younger brother. This was what Kisame told us in front of Itachi's grave. Uehara faintly sighed and said, but it is precisely because of this that Suzuki also opened his Mangekyo Sharingan, which also gave us a powerful combat strength. Just in time. Nagato nodded his head and said, if it is Mangekyo Sharingan, then it should be able to help a lot. Then you guys go capture Gobi, Kakuzu, and Haydn will capture Nanabi, I will go capture Rokibai. Nagato coughed a few more times before continuing, after capturing all of this, only the strongest Haksabi and Kyuabai will be left. I will think of a way to deal with these things. Uehara frowned and waved his hand at Nagato to use astral infusion twice, you just stay in the village and protect your body. It doesn't matter. Nagato shook his head and patted his palm with a smile. He explained, I also want to see the day when Gedo Mazo is resurrected. Uehara shook his head and said nothing. After a simple discussion with Nagato, Uehara left the tower. He walked on Omegakura's street, ignoring the pouring rain that fell on him. The baijuyu they caught were increasing, so he could not continue to delay. Uehara wiped the sweat off his face and looked back at Nagato's tower. He had to let Nagato and Konan leave Eye of the Moon Plan as soon as possible. Not only did he have to let Konan and the others escape, but he also had to be kicked out of the organization. Otherwise, it would be too late for the two of them to leave after the end of the Ninja World War. The Rinnegan had to be left behind for the time being. This was because this pair of Rinnegan had to revive Madara, and then revive the Kagaya, and then transplant it again to Nagato after the end of the war. Eh? It wasn't quite right either. The burden of the Rinnegan was too great. Uehara frowned, thinking about how to solve Nagato's problem. He might as well wait until he obtained the Yang power and create another pair of eyes for him. Forget it. Uehara raised his head and looked at a Megakura's pipeline that stretched out in all directions. He pinched his fingers and said, in short, let Nagato and Konan be eliminated as soon as possible. It's really troublesome. What should I do to solve it? Once Madara was resurrected, Uehara would not be able to completely grasp the situation. At that time, Akatsuki's organization would not be so easy to control. So before that, he had to kick Nagato and Konan out. Uehara looked at the progress of his main mission and raised his eyebrows. Just as he was about to return to his room, an umbrella fell on his head and helped him cover the heavy rain. What are you doing here in the rain? A young girl's voice entered Uehara's ears. When Uehara turned his head, he saw Ajisai, Swiran, and Fui standing behind him. Compared to Ajisai's lack of respect, Swiran and Fui clearly recognized their standing. The two of them bowed respectfully, Uehara-sama. Why are you guys here? Uehara glanced at the street and whispered, Is it your turn to patrol again? No, we just came back from a mission outside. Ajisai explained expressionlessly, Uehara, now we are going to report to Lady Angel. Do you want to go with us? I won't go. Uehara shook his head and was about to leave when he suddenly stopped and asked, Wait, what mission did you go on? If I remember correctly, the ninjas in the village are forbidden to go out, right? We are going to the border to contact the messenger of Kanaha. The messengers of Kanaha? Yes. What are they here for? They sent a new letter. Ajisai nodded and replied in a low voice, We were about to send this letter to Lady Angel. Why are you talking so much nonsense? Uehara's face was a little dark. He looked at the little girl and suppressed his anger, can't you finish what you just said in one go? You answer whatever I ask. Where is the letter? Leave it to me. I want to give it to Lady Angel. It's the same if you give it to me. Uehara could not help but reach out his finger to knock her forehead and said with dissatisfaction, in any case, if Kanaha has any invitations, in the end, I'll be the one to attend. Ajisai covered her forehead in a depressed mood slowly taking out a scroll and handing it to Uehara. This was also something that can't be helped. In the entire Omegakure, everyone knew that Uehara was actually Omegakure's hidden leader. Everyone had to obey his orders. Even Lady Angel would not stop him from doing anything. She even had to report everything that happened to Omegakure to Uehara. If I ask you to be an intelligence ninja, you will definitely be anxious to death. After Uehara took the scroll, he knocked on Ajisai's head and ordered coldly, raise the umbrella higher. I will check the scroll. Oh. Ajisai stood on her toes. She really couldn't understand why a person like Uehara would become the student of Lady Angel. After opening the scroll in his hand, 
Uehara took a look at the content and his face couldn't help but become a little excited. Uehara pondered for a moment, then snatched the umbrella, you guys can rest. I'll go deliver the letter. Ajisaya looked at her empty hand and then at the place where Uehara had disappeared. Her little face was full of doubt. What, what was going on? In Conan's office, there was a glass of wolfberry tea on the table. Conan sat in front of the desk and carefully reviewed every document. When Uehara came in with an umbrella, she could not help but smile, the rain is heavy today. Has Naraku finally learned how to hold an umbrella? Uh. Uehara shook his head speechlessly. He reached out and placed the scroll in his hand on Conan's desk. He spread out his palm and said, Sensei, a letter from Kanaha. Take a look at what is written on it. What's wrong? Conan slowly opened the scroll. After reading the contents, she slowly frowned. After a while, Conan also looked at Uehara with a puzzled expression, Kanaha's Hokage wants to visit Hanzo. That should be right. Uehara closed his palm. Conan was still puzzled. She looked at the scroll again and continued to ask, then, she also wants to hold a five-cage meeting to suppress Akatsuki. The meeting place is also the country of rain. It should be correct, right? Uehara rubbed his forehead. Why did Tsunade come to visit Hanzo? Did she forget that she was humiliated by Hanzo many years ago? Tsunade's attitude in the letter was quite firm, which made people feel a headache. Moreover, how could a Megakure allow other ninjas to enter? Wasn't this nonsense? As long as one person came in and as long as he asked the name of Uehara or Hanzo, his view of life would be almost 100% shocked. Conan sighed faintly and said in a low voice, Forget it, I'll prepare a rejection letter. I hope that woman can immediately dispel this idea. Uehara could not help but shake his head. Had he gone a little overboard in the past few years? Was the ninja world already crooked to such a degree? A five-cage meeting that targeted Akatsuki actually wanted to be held at the headquarters of Akatsuki. This was truly not afraid of death. When Konan was preparing to reply to Tsunade, Uehara asked intentionally, Sensei, have you thought about the future? What future? What will we be like in the future? Uehara pinched his fingers and asked softly, For example, after Gedo Mazo was resurrected and the world became peaceful, do you want to do something? The pen in Konan's hand stopped. A moment later, Conan picked up the pen and started writing again. She said softly, then. I should continue to watch you become the leader of a Megakure in this village and watch you replace us as the ruler of the whole world. Does Sensei not want to travel to the ninja world? Uehara looked at the beautiful handwriting under Conan's pen and could not help but remind her, I heard that she has been traveling in the world for many years, and she seems to have encountered many interesting things. Uehara was trying to strike at Conan's thoughts. Unfortunately, Conan did not even raise her head as she replied, I remember that the fifth Hokage of Kanaha seems to have a title of the legendary fat sheep. Do you think traveling is interesting? After saying that, Conan suddenly stopped and looked at Uehara calmly, Naraku, what are you trying to say to me? Do you think that I have been restraining you and making you tired of it? No. Uehara immediately denied it. He rubbed the space between his eyebrows and said, I just discussed with Nagato-sama for a while and thought that our plan was about to succeed. It seems that we should think about whether we should do something else in the future. Conan was silent for a while. She picked up the pen in her hand again and whispered, You can do whatever you want. I will always be with you. Uehara slowly clenched his hand. What if I don't want you to stay with me?